Yo hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto is neglected by his family and become a Sanju. Full story. If you guys enjoy this what if. So comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1. Kaiubi Attack on Faithful Parents. The loud roar echoed through the village as a huge fox with nine swishing tails. Its fur a dark bloodish red and its eyes, its powerful blood red pupils with black slits that can stare deep into your soul, glared down upon the mortals that were scampering and running. Its claws as sharp as any blade slashed and cut through buildings crushing any and all in its way. It's Kaiubi. Quickly warned the Hokage one of the ninjas screamed whilst running to the Hokage tower. The rest of the village had taken notice of the raging Biju approaching them as shinobi were readying themselves for the onslaught. A small part of their forces were caring for the civilians and sending them to the shelters. Minato was nowhere to be found as the forces were gathering only for the shinobi no kami here is in Saratobi to appear. Sandame sama the gates have been destroyed and the Kaiubi has entered the village perimeter. What are your orders? A random person asked. Everyone under Jonin must pull back to the shelters we need to make sure that the civilians stay safe. Here is an ordered. The Inambu shall attack the beast and stall it which will give us time so we can seal it again. Hi, they shouted. Now go start Hiruzen as the ninja scattered. Or. Go find Minato, the rest of you follow me. They charged as the other shinobi jumped up to the rooftops and skidded towards the Ninetales. Almost half of the village fell to the rampaging beast, corpses of villagers, and ninjas littered the streets as they passed them. Thousands were fired at the fox which was starting to annoy him. Arg. You filthy humans. Kaiubi roared as it slashed its claws towards the ground, crushing many shinobi under his mighty paws. Fire style. Great Firestorm Fugaki shouted as he and his clansmen all launched blazes of fire at the same time causing the flames to form a tsunami of raging fire as it roared itself to the fox. Athetic Ichiha Kurama laughed and with a swish of a tail the fire disappeared. He then unleashed his massive chakra sending those that attacked him flying a few feet. He was about to form a Bijidama when suddenly the Yuzumaki ceiling chains rose from the ground and began to bind him. He was pushed to the ground as he struggled greatly to break free. What? These chains. Could it be? Kashina. The fox roared in anger. Not really a little kid Kara Yuzumaki teased making the fox look down upon her. You. Kaiubi roared. I'm surprised you remember me kidling. Kara Yuzumaki is now a good foxy and sits there like a good boy, so can we seal you up again? How dare you treat me the mighty Kaiubi like a sniveling little child, he snarled letting out a roar. And you can forget about sealing me. No seal can hold me. Kara Yuzumaki. Saratobi summoned Enma as the Monkey King turned into the adamantine staff as he had it enlarged and struck the beast in the head. Quickly I stunned it for a short minute. Use your strongest on it. The shinobi nodded as they began to go through hand signs as they unleashed fire style, water style, earth style, even lightning style at the fox, causing a little damage. Hiruzen was about to use his when a flash of yellow appeared next to him. It was none other than Minato Namikas, the Yandame Hokage. Minato where have you been? Don't you know that we are being attacked by the Kaiubi? Hiruzen demanded. Your sister-in-law can barely hold on with their chakra chains. Yandame chuckled. I was with my wife, she was having our children. I'm finally a father, he said before getting serious. Until that masked man came in and ripped the fox out of my wife. Kara interrupted Minato. As much as I want to hear the rest of your story, we have more important matters at the moment. She screamed as her chakra chain suddenly failed as one of the fox's massive paws got free and swung at her as she was immediately crushed by him. Minato gasped as Hiruzen quickly reminded him that the Kaiubi is almost close to the center of the village and that the only hope that we have now is to seal it. The Yande knew that there was only one seal powerful enough to hold the Nine Tails, the Reaper Death Seal. You're right Hiruzen-sama, and I will be using the Reaper Death Seal to seal the Nine Tails into my children, but I'll separate the fox to ensure it can't break out. Minato said with a pained look on his face. I can't ask anyone else to sacrifice their child if I can't do the deed myself. Minato let me do the sealing. Hiruzen replied, shocking Minato. I have lived a long life and you're still young. The village needs you now. He said with a smile. The only thing I ask you is to keep your children safe and treat them all equal. On Hagakur Hospital, Minato flashed back to his wife who was with their children. With a heavy heart he told her that he was going to seal the nine tails into their children to save the village. As always Kashina forbade it as she didn't want her children to suffer the fate of being a Ashina chan I don't want to do this, but I have no choice, the village will fall if I don't seal the fox away. Minato said sadly but firmly. Please Kashina, it is for the best surely you will understand. Minato used me to seal the nine tails. You know the hardships faced. 
I wouldn't wish that upon my children. Kishina cried. Kishina, they need you in order to control the fox. Besides you'll be able to teach them things I can't, things only a mother would know. But they need their father. She sobbed. And the village needs their Hokage right now. Please Kishina, remember our family is Shinobi, the will of the village comes first. Kishina was about to retort, but sadly she herself couldn't help but agree. Kanoha was her home and like any ninja she must put aside personal feelings for the safety of the village. She let out a little cry as she held the children to her husband. Minato could only look down upon the beautiful children that they made. Menma, the eldest, had their father's spiky hair above Kishina's eyes. Naruto was a perfect clone of Kishina with red hair, but with blue eyes. The Yandame smiled sadly and hugged them close. Forgive my children that I must make you become, but I promise you that your mom will always protect you. I will make sure that you have the happiest childhood you could ever want with her. Minato cried as he flashed back to the battlefield. Battlefield. Village gates. Pirazin was going through the hand signs for the earth release. Mud swamp as the Kaiubi suddenly became stuck in the muddy depths restricting all of his movements. It looked to be trapped, but even he shouldn't underestimate the nine tails. It would soon be a matter of time before it got free again, the sounds of cracks in the earth only added to his fear. He soon gasped as the nine tails rose his head to the sky and opened his mouth as it was gathering energy for a Bijidama. Damn it if that thing finishes its attack the village is done for Hirazin said grimly. Suddenly a large poof of smoke appeared above the fox as Gambunta the toad boss landed on the fox, preventing it from launching its attack. I don't think so, Furball Gambunta said. Be damn you. Kaiubi roared. Now was the moment for Minato to begin the sealing as he was about to begin the hand signs when he was stopped by the third Hokage. Minato I said I would do the sealing, remember I am an old man and it's time for you to lead the young generation. Now hand me the children and I will seal the nine tails into them. But Minato stopped him as he refused to let his predecessor sacrifice himself if he couldn't do it himself. Minato sighed as he performed the hand signs at a fast rate. Finishing the last hand sign he shouted. Fuinjutsu. Shaiki Fujin. Suddenly the era got cold as the Shinigami appeared in all of her ethereal glory. Her appearance was ghost-like, her face hidden by a demon mask. She was dressed in whitish gray robes with a necklace in her left hand and a katana in her right hand. In front of her bound in ghostly whips was Minato's soul. Who dares summon me? The goddess demanded. Forgive me Shinigami-sama Minato stated as he spoke to the goddess. I wish to offer my soul as payment to seal the Kaiubi's chakra into Menma and the soul of the Kaiubi into my youngest son Naruto. The Shinigami smirked very well mortally. I will seal the beast within your children. The goddess thrusted her hand into Minato's back as it reached through the man's frail body and towards the nine tails. Garama gasped in fear as the ghostly hand made contact. No. No. I will not be sealed again new. No. The fox screamed as he was separated and pulled into Menma and Naruto. The eight trigram seal appeared on the baby's bellies as the sealing was complete. However the Shinigami noticed something strange about Naruto as she saw future events and it brought a smile, a dark evil smile upon her face. You are the one Naruto, I can tell you are a special boy and you can be the one that will save and change her for the better. She smiled gazing down upon the sleeping red-haired baby as she raised her arm up to the moon as an orb flew into her open palm. She then placed the orb within Naruto as Naruto's chakra color went from blue to white. Good luck little one I have sealed Kaguya's power within you. I know you use it wisely and change the world. The goddess then turned towards Yandame as she grinned a bit which frightened him. I won't be taking your soul mortal, what? Minato said shockingly. He couldn't believe that he was being spared. But he felt there was some kind of catch. I'll get your soul one day and I am a very patient woman. She laughed darkly, making Minato shiver. But don't make me regret sparing your life. This is a one-time deal, but don't take my decision as an act of mercy. She snarled as she vanished. Minato sighed a sigh of relief as he picked up his children and flashed back to his wife. The village was saved thanks to the noble sacrifice of Minato. The following day of the attack Minato announced to the village the noble sacrifice he performed to save the village. My people of Kanahagakur. Minato announced. Today our village suffered a major blow from the attack of the Kaiubi no Kitsune. We lost many loved ones who gave their lives to help us defeat it. Today we honor their sacrifice, especially my sister-in-law Kari Uzumaki. It was thanks to her bloodline and her fuinjutsu skills that we were able to contain it. So is it gone for good? A villager asked. Yes, I was able to summon the Shinigami herself to help me defeat the Kaiubi. But since the fox is pure chakra, I had no other option but to seal it away into my son. He and his wife then held up their two sons in the village. My eldest son Menmanamakas holds the chakra of the fox and will use it to protect the village. He praised, but somehow he forgot to mention Naruto. The village cheered for their Yandame and their saviors, well savior, as they view Menma as the hero who stripped the demon fox of its power. 
Minato and Kishina had trust in the village to treat their children with respect for their sacrifice. However nobody took notice of Naruto who was consumed by strange white chakra. Minato knew that his children were going to be happy and he was going to ensure that happened. Chapter 2. Fate intervenes Senjus reborn. The burial was held to honor those who lost their lives in their fight with the Kaiubi. Among them was Kari Uzumaki, the older sister of Kishina. She was one of the village's greatest seal masters, her skills in the art gave rise to future seal masters. Kishina was heartbroken when she heard her sister died to save the village. She vowed to raise her children to be like their aunt and teach them what it means to be a real Uzumaki. However that wasn't to be as Jiraiya had arrived at his office that afternoon telling him about a prophecy that talked about his children. A child will be born from the mighty tree, he will have powers of ancients long forgotten, the power of the divine beast he will save the world or become its destruction, if shrouded in darkness the child of prophecy will bring death to all in its path, if shrouded in love and light the child will bring the cycle of hatred to an end. He will bear the light of the moon and will use its power to bring peace. Upon hearing that Jureya told his student that he believed that it was Menma since he held the Nine Tails Chakra, along with the fact that the fox was a divine beast whose powers were of ancient descent. It was then decided that they will leave the village to train their eldest to control the fox's power, but it also meant that they had to leave their son Naruto behind. They called Lord Hiruzen to his office to discuss their plan. Hiruzen answered their call with Orochimaru at his side. Yes Minato? Hiruzen asked. You summoned me for something. Yes Hiruzen I have summoned you here to retake the mantle of Hokage for a while, why? The aged Hokage wondered. Why not have Orochimaru fill in for you? Orochimaru would be a good choice, but you have the experience. What aren't you telling us about Minato? Orochimaru asked. Letting out a sigh Minato revealed his plan to train Menma to harness the Kaiubi's chakra at their capital and the fire capital. When Orochimaru asked if they would also train Naruto since the soul of the Kaiubi was more tempting and manipulative than the chakra. Minato told them with a heavy heart that Naruto was going to be left behind. Minato you can't be serious about this? Exclaimed Hiruzen with wide eyes. I'm very serious. Hiruzen Minato responded seriously. But he's your son. You can't just dump him like he's a disposable toy, retorted Lord Third. We aren't doing anything of the sort, replied Kashina harshly. She thought that the third Hokage would understand their reasons for doing this. Doesn't seem like Orochimaru scoffed while holding Naruto in his arms. Menma needs training in order to gain control of Kaiubi's chakra. We are going to take him to our estate in the fire capital. We've already talked to the fire daimyo and he's already agreed. What about Naruto? Are you just going to leave him here on his own? Ask here is in referring to the young Redeed in his prized student's arms. We can't bring Naruto with us, it's too dangerous for him to come with us, Minato said, taking a step back from the former Hokage's glare. And how pray tell is his parents leaving him on his own not dangerous? Orochimaru growled. We we have to put all of our attention on Menma because of the demon chakra. Since Naruto has the soul of the Kaiubi, he won't need any special training Kashina stated. Plus with Kumo and I was still angry at them since the previous war, they'll be gunning for Minato and Kishina whenever they can. Said Jiraiya. With Naruto in the village he will be protected and safe from any assassins they sent. Plus no one will know of his heritage. Like hell he will the snake thought to himself. I know this village won't accept little Naruto-chan, since they fear what they don't understand. Hiruzen unleashed so much Kai that it was suffocating Minato, Kishina and Jiraiya. It disturbed Menma, but it didn't really affect Naruto for some strange reason. Where will he stay while you're gone? He demanded. Well, we can't have him living with any of the clans as that would draw suspicion towards him, and we'd prefer it if nobody but you, Kakashi, Sanadi, and Orochimaru know about this. Minato stated. So it would be best that he stays in an orphanage, Kishina said as she was sweating from Hiruzen's Kai that was drilling holes through their faces. Oh hell no. Orochimaru hissed as he let out killer intent, but it was masked over by the killer intent of the third wind as he felt the men's anger as he whimpered and started to cry. Orochimaru gasped as he realized that they were scaring little Naruto. Oh Naruto Uncle Snake is so sorry. We were just a little mad at your parents we're sorry. An orphanage do you want your little boy to grow up in an orphanage? Hiruzen growled not liking this one bit. It's perfectly safe, it won't draw any suspicion, and when you tell everyone that Naruto has the soul of the Kaiubi, he will be declared a hero among the populace. We'll train Menma, and until he turns 13 we will come back to be with Naruto. Minato said. Gureya nodded in agreement with his student, I'll drop in here and now to check up on Naruto. The Toad Sage couldn't stay in the village for long as he had to help Minato and Kishina train their eldest Menma, who he believed was the child of prophecy. Tsunade was going with them as she was the children's personal doctor to ensure that they won't get injured anytime soon, she was after all their grandmother. That's right Tsunade had a one-night stand with a man named Hans Namikas and ended up pregnant with Minato. She cared for her son like any mother would and she was going to be there to take care of her grandchildren. Well one of them. 
you've truly become a fool Minato to think that this plan of yours will work. I should have made the better decision and declared Orochimaru the fourth instead of you, Hiruzen said in distaste. Minato winced at those words as did the others, as they never thought that they would hear those kinds of words coming from Suratobi's mouth. Regardless of what you may think of us Hiruzen, we won't change our minds. We will take Menma to our estate in the fire capital and train him to control the Kaiubi's chakra, and nothing you say will change our minds. Kishina said in a firm and stubborn tone. Hiruzen and Arachimaru stood up as they glared their darkest glare at the group which scared them a little, but the group stood their ground. The third Hokage glare was directed towards Kishina as the red head felt that immense killer intent increased. But it wasn't as intense as the snake's killer intent. I can't believe that you Kishina would abandon one child for the other. This clearly shows me that you are playing favorites with your children. Arachimaru sneered. Kishina growled I am not playing favorites, you bag of scales. She ranted. Yes you are Kishina, you're leaving Naruto behind because he isn't a powered child. However this does prove one other thing he growled. Really? And what does it prove about Orochimaru? Kishina replied. You're a blood traitor. He shouted, shocking them, especially Kishina. A true Uzumaki does not abandon family for any reason especially for some prophecy told by an old toad. A true Uzumaki stands by their family, their whole family. And because you are choosing to favor Menma over Naruto this shows and proves you are nothing more than a blood traitor. He roared as he stopped to catch his breath. You're treading on thin ice snake, Kishina is doing this for both of her sons. Her duty is to the world. Swan shouted. Her duty is to be a mother. Arachimaru retorted glaring at Kishina. Your duty is to take care of both of your children. As I recall you swore to your sister that you would raise both of your children to become like her. To represent what a true Uzumaki is. Kishina stood there for a minute and was about to retort when Hiruzen interrupted her again. That out of all of you, at this moment you have all lost my respect, especially Kishina. I thought that after what Mito taught you about family you would take those to heart, but clearly you care more about the prophecy than your own son. Hiruzen stated. You clearly don't understand the severity of the situation. Minato said sternly. Exactly, you're getting upset over nothing, said Jiraiya. Hiruzen tried to hold his rage in before calling his Anbu. Weasel, you called Lord Third Weasel, bowing to him. Itachi, please escort this bunch from my office. I can't stand the sight of them. Also take them to the edge of the village gate as they are leaving for the fire capital Hiruzen sneered. Hi. Itachi shouted as he escorted Minato and his group out of the office. Here is inside as he watched from the window as the Namikazes and the remaining Sanin left. Unknown to them a certain deity watched the whole thing, and boy oh boy was she not happy. Kami's realm. Shinigami's domain. Shinigami roared as she shoved her stack of paperwork off her desk and then threw the desk into the wall, breaking it in half. She was really pissed and I mean pissed and that rarely ever happens. The reason being for her anger was a certain blonde-haired human that she spared. That bastard. She screamed, punching a hole in the wall. I being the generous goddess spared that blonde-haired monkey's life after sealing the nine tails into his children and he goes and abandons his youngest like he doesn't matter because he doesn't hold the fox's chakra ooh by the gods I'll kill him. She sat down in her chair and rubbed her head. Mortals were always so defiant when the gods granted them certain privileges like power or knowledge or sometimes rarely eternal life. She never really believed in the humankind that her sister Kami made. To her they were flesh bags or her little playthings, until a certain baby blonde seemed to worm his way into her cold and stone heart. The boy was special, but she couldn't understand why, but she didn't dwell on it. Right now she had to think of a way to get revenge on Minato Namikas. Having a migraine again sister. Yami asked as she and Kami entered her office, well her destroyed office, placed a cup of jasmine tea on her desk. It's that blonde bastard of Kanoha she then took hold of her cup of tea and took a few sips. The warm taste of jasmine tea seemed to calm her a little. As you know Kami I sealed the nine tails into Minato's children, of course I remember, you spared his life so he could raise his family. Kami chuckled as she poured herself some tea and took a seat next to her dead goddess sister. Most of his family, Shinigami, growled. Yami turned her head towards her with wide eyes as she took her seat, what do you mean by most of his family? What aren't you telling me? That bastard and his slut abandoned their youngest son in favor of his siblings because he doesn't have the Kaiubi's chakra. She panted as she looked at her shocked sister. Ami put her cup down as she was shocked out of her mind, her little sister was concerned about a human and not just any human child. She thought this must be some of her tricks, or as she did the hand signs to break the only thing that happened. Well well my little sister actually cares about a human I never thought I'd see the day Kami thought to herself as she laughed. The Shinigami noticed her sister's laughter and growled wondering why she was laughing at her. She then went wide-eyed and her sister must have found out that she was concerned about a certain human. She groaned knowing that she will never hear the end of this. Oh go ahead laugh it up, but rest assured I'm going to make sure that Minato and Kishina regret this for the rest of their lives, Shinigami said in a cold tone. 
Yami smirked, really, and how are you going to do that? Last time I checked we can't interfere with mortal affairs it's the law remember, screw the rules the death goddess shouted shocking her sisters. I owe it to that poor boy and I'm going to make sure that he has people that will raise him and will one day make Naruto so powerful Minato will be begging at his feet she laughed evilly as she rubbed her hands together. Ami's face palmed at her sister, her sister wasn't always one for following rules. She was a rebel hell she wouldn't even listen to most of the time. It's only when she threatened her would she fall into place, but now it seems that won't even work. However Yami couldn't help but want to see how this would play out, she wondered what she would do for this human child named Naruto Uzumaki. Okay sisei I let you do this how are you going to make this up to the boy? Yami asked. The Shinigami gave Yami a smirk as her sisters knew right then and there what she had in mind. Kami couldn't believe that was even going to consider that, it was absolutely insane. Shiny chan please you can't possibly consider what I think you're considering are you? Kami said the death goddess didn't reply, instead she disappeared in a swirl of crying and screaming tormented souls as she left Kami's realm and descended down to the mortal world. On a Hagakur, Hokage Tower, they left. They actually left and abandoned Naruto here, Orochimaru growled as his rage increased tenfold. Here is inside as he sat down in the Hokage seat, yes they left and they wanted him to live in an orphanage. Like hell he will. A voice shouted. Naruto isn't going to live in any orphanage. Startled, the men took their defensive positions to protect themselves and Naruto. They noticed a dark portal appear at the office door as a woman came out of it. Her appearance was dark but beautiful. Hiruzen demanded who she was. A dark chuckle made them quiver with fear as she looked up at them. I am here in good faith, Hiruzen she chuckled. Who are you? Orochimaru hissed, getting his snakes ready to strike her. I am the one who helped Minato seal away the Kaiubi. Shinigami they both gasped. Bingo and the reason I'm here is for the little one. Shinigami with all due respect, you can't take Naruto. He's only a baby here is in replied with a bit of desperation in his tone. Ha 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 ha, she laughed. I haven't laughed this much in centuries ha 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 ha. I'm not here to take Naruto. I'm here to make up for what his parents did. Please tell me you'll devour their souls, the snake begged. Ah ha ha maybe but no the goddess chuckled. What I am going to do is give Naruto a new set of parents. Ones that will show him good morals and raise him to be a proper shinobi. After all he is the prophecy child. What? The men shouted. Naruto is the chosen one. Yes he is. Now on to business, I am going to return two people from the dead and restore them to their youth. They will become Naruto's new parents and not only that they will change the way of the village and bring back the true will of fire. Who are these people you're going to resurrect? Hiruzen asked. Ashirama Senju and Mito Uzumaki. She answered. Hiruzen froze in shock, the Shinigami was going to bring back the first Hokage of the Hidden Leaf and the greatest seal mistress in Konoha back to life. Many thoughts were blowing through his mind like a wild storm. He was debating on whether or not this was the answer. One part of him told him to leave his sensei and his wife to rest in peace as they did their job. But the other part of him believed that having Hashirama back would set the village back on the right path, plus Hiruzen could finally retire. After all, Hashirama died young, so he was sure he could handle being Hokage again. Plus this would be a good upbringing for Naruto. I believe it's a good idea said Orochimaru, shocking his sensei. What are you saying Orochimaru? Hiruzen asked. What I mean is that Hashirama and Mito would be the perfect troll models for him. Especially since this will be a shocker when Swan and the others come back the smirks. Well? The Shinigami asked impatiently. What do you say? Hiruzen sighed, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with Orochimaru. Having them back would greatly benefit not only the village, but Naruto as well. But may I ask Shinigami-sama why are you doing this? I owe it to the boy she answered. Wow who knew you had a heart Orochimaru chuckled. Don't push it. She snarled. Well I still agree it's a good idea Hiruzen smiled. A wise choice now let's get started. She laughed as she clapped her hands together. Time to work some necromancy. She conjured up shadows as she gripped her scepter and a large pentagram appeared on the floor. The floor broke apart as many souls were wailing from the underworld. The skies opened up and Hiruzen could see a blinding white light. I call to you from the land you were torn, return to the world from where you were born. Arise Hashirama Senju and Mito Uzumaki. The office shook as the Hokage held onto something and tried to shield Naruto from the ritual and its horrors. The graves of Hashirama and Mito exploded as the ritual took full effect and conjured up their souls. When the light died down there they stood. Hashirama and Mito Senju Uzumaki in their youth. Oh uh, what's going on? Hashirama asked frantically. How are we back in Mito? he said looking at his wife. You're young again. Mito looked herself over and looked into a nearby mirror and noticed her youthful appearance. She then looked back at her husband. But I don't understand why are we back in the land of the living and in our youth. It's because of what Shinigami Hiruzen said as they looked at him. Hiruzen, you're still the Hokage. Hashirama chuckled. Unfortunately he sighed, smoking his pipe. 
Anyway, to answer your question, like my student said, the Shinigami herself brought you back. But why? Nito asked. Because of this special baby here he said as Orochimaru introduced them to Naruto. This is Naruto Uzumaki Namaka's Senju, son of Minato Senju Namaka's the Yandame Hokage and Kishina Uzumaki. Kishina? Well so they finally tied the knot Nito chuckled. Where are they? Well that's the reason you were resurrected. You might want to sit down for this. Hiruzen said, motioning them to take a seat. They took their seat as Hiruzen explained the entire situation to them from the Kaiubi attack to Minato and Kishina, abandoning their youngest son, so they could train their eldest child to control the Kaiubi's chakra. Upon finishing the story, Hiruzen got the response he was looking for. Ashirama was angry no scratch, pissed off at the disgraceful act committed by his great-grandson and granddaughter. But his anger wasn't even close to the rage Mito Senju was now radiating. Mito felt betrayed that Kishina would betray her teachings on family and what it meant to be in Yuzumaki. To abandon one's own child was a sin to the Yuzumaki clan, and those who committed this were greatly punished for it. Where are they now? Mito seethed. They are at the capital and won't be back till Naruto turns 13 years old. The snake replied. I see she said coldly. May I hold him? She asked softly. Arachimaru nodded and placed Naruto in her arms. Mito and Hashirama could see many of the Senju and Yuzumaki blood traits in him. From the Yuzumaki red hair to the Senju chakra reserve and body structure. He was most certainly a powerful child, but what caught them off guard was the white chakra he had. Being a sensor Mito could see that he was going to be a powerful shinobi in the future. The Shinigami wants you to raise him as your own. Hiruzen said. Will you do it? Well it's been a long time since we raised kids. I wouldn't mind raising one more Mito smiled. I agree with Hashirama added. Perfect Shinigami smiled, making everyone look at her. I've already switched Minato and Kashina's DNA with yours and Mito's. Congrats he's now biologically yours. Now if you'll excuse me I got some souls to torture and lots of paperwork to do. She then vanished through the floor. Well let me be the first to welcome you back Sensei Hiruzen smiled. And to take back the Hokage seat so I can retire. Ashirama chuckled as he agreed to take the seat back after he got settled in with his wife and new son. Hiruzen got the paperwork and filled it out. Mito and Hashirama renamed their son as Naruto Madara Uzumaki Senju, in honor of their old friend Madara Che. After signing the documents Hiruzen gave Hashirama the keys to the Senju compound. The Senju couple vanished from the office and took Naruto to his new home. The life of Naruto Senju begins. Chapter 3. Lord Shadame Returns. Ashirama and Mito arrived at the old Senju compound. It was just like they remembered it, a large complex with a main house, large gardens, training grounds, and beautiful forests. It brought back so many memories from the day Kanahagakur was formed to the day they died. Looks like we're going to make new memories Mito chuckled. Ashirama chuckled, kissing his wife's forehead. Let's get settled in. Heading into the compound, they reached the main house which was a four-story tall mansion with many rooms. It had a side building attached to the Senju clan dojo, where future Senjus were trained before they attended the academy. Going inside the main hall was as grand as the architecture, the Senju compound was an ancient cultural building since the Great Wars. Though it's gone through many renovations over the years it was still a sight to behold. They entered the living room which was small with couches and other pieces of furniture. They could take in the fresh new scents as Hashirama sat down in his favorite armchair that was still there after all these years. Mito darling, why don't you take Naruto up to his new bedroom, I'm sure the nursery is still there? Hashirama asked, leaning back into his chair. Uo Hashi, you always were a little lazy at home, but you were a fantastic husband. Mito chuckled while taking Naruto upstairs. Mito headed upstairs as she came to the nursery where her grandchildren Sanadi and Nawaki used to play and sleep when they were babies. She quickly lost her smile when she thought of Sanadi, who abandoned her youngest grandchild for her eldest one. She headed inside as the walls were painted to look like the forest, there were many child toys that she might have to replace with new and safer ones. She came to the crib that looked brand new, she guessed it must have been Minato's old crib. She looked down at her new child and smiled as the baby was sound asleep in her arms. Uo oh, Naruto you're going to love it here. Your father and I will make sure you grow up loved and strong, after all we stick together and we always put family first. Naruto yawned as Mito placed him in his crib and placed a blanket over him. She gave him a kiss on his forehead and smiled down at him. She then hummed a little tune as she began to sing him a lullaby. Luli, 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 Lile, Luli, 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 Lile. Lay down your head and I'll sing you a lullaby. Back to the years of Luli, Lile. And I'll sing you to sleep and I'll sing you tomorrow. Bless you with love for the road that you go. May you sail far to the far fields of fortune. With diamonds and pearls at your head and your feet. And may you need never to banish misfortune. May you find kindness in all that you meet. May there always be angels to watch over you. To guide you each step of the way. To guard you and keep you safe from all harm. Luli, Luli, Lile. May you bring love and may you bring happiness. Be loved in return to the
the end of your days. Now fall off to sleep, I'm not meaning to keep you. I'll just sit for a while and sing Luli, Lile. May there always be angels to watch over you, to guide you each step of the way, to guard you and keep you safe from all harm. Luli, Luli, Lile. Luli, Luli, Lile. Luli, Luli, Luli. Lile, Luli, 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 Lile, Luli, 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 Lile, Luli, 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 Lile, Luli, Lile. She smiled as Naruto snored quietly as he looked so serene when he's fast asleep. Nito leaned down gently to kiss his forehead again. I love you, my son, she whispered before leaving the nursery to join her husband in the living room. How is Naruto? Hashirama asked Nito. Naruto is sleeping soundly, my dear. Nito smiled. Wonderful, now that we've gotten settled in, it's time for me to greet Hiruzen to discuss the future of the village. According to the details supplied to him by his old student after they were resurrected, the civilian council had gotten out of hand. They meddled in the affairs of the shinobi which they had no say in. He should have listened to his brother and not given the civilian council so much leeway. Well that all stops now. Will you accompany me dear? Of course Hashirama just let me do one thing Mito said, creating a blood clone. You stay here and guard Naruto. She ordered a clone. Of course the clone replied. Ashirama took her hand as he took them to the Hokage's office. On the Hagakur village market district, since the attack of the Kaiubi yesterday, many of the shinobi and civilians that suffered the traumatic experience of the attack were slowly trying to move forward. They suffered many casualties and losses including loved ones. Reconstruction of the village was underway as the reparations of the northern and eastern district sector of the village that suffered the most damage was almost complete. Everyone moved on and licked the wounds except for a few. Among those few was Kakashi Haddock, Minato's only surviving student. Kakashi Haddock, the copycat ninja who copied over a thousand, a man who many called a hardcore strong-hearted ninja, was now drinking his anger and sake at the local bar. The man couldn't let go of the hate he felt when he discovered that his own sensei Minato Namikaze was abandoning his youngest son for his child. Not only that but Kashina who always spoke proudly on how family is important and always sticks together, would suddenly abandon her child for a prophecy, I mean she's in Yuzumaki for crying out loud. It made him sick to his stomach and didn't even get him started on the Sanin. But he was happy that Orochimaru didn't go with him, at least the snake had brains and a heart. Haddock San, the bartender asked. Don't you think you had enough? I'll tell you when I have enough Kakashi runs. Another one. The bartender immediately refilled his glass as Kakashi gouged it down in a single gulp. Kakashi's friends watched him in disappointment but sorrow. They knew that Kakashi took Minato's leaving and abandonment of his son hard. After all, Kakashi looked up to and admired his sensei, but now he wouldn't even speak of him. Hokage Tower. Hokage's office. In the Hokage's tower Hiruzen was stuck doing what all cage feared the most. Paperwork. That's right paperwork, a cage's worst nightmare. After the attack he's gone through pile after pile after pile. Curse you Minato you leave the village, but you don't give me the secret to defeat paperwork he groaned as he scanned through the papers. Many of the papers were from the civilian council that demanded lots of money to repair their homes and businesses that were destroyed in the attack. Here is inside as he leaned back into his chair and smoked his pipe, the civilian council had been a pain in ass ever since he took the mantle of Hokage. He still couldn't believe his sensei Hashirama gave them a say in shinobi affairs, which was a mistake as the civilians grew arrogant and began to abuse their authority. But he hoped when Hashirama retakes the mantle he will be able to set things straight. I'm getting too old for this the professor said, smoking his pipe as he went over the reports of the damage. Bear he yelled, a bear mask Anbu knelt before him. Hi Sandame Sama the Anbu stated. Give me the full situation report, the number of casualties of both civilians and shinobi. Here is an ordered. Okage Sama shinobi casualties have been estimated to 1000 shinobi, along with 150 Anbu dead, and the number is still rising. We haven't cleared all of the debris of the northern and eastern sector, so we aren't really sure. However the civilian casualties have reached 1,500 dead and many in critical condition. Bear finished. Very well thank you for the report Bear you are dismissed, leave the report here on my desk and return to your duties. Here is in commanded. With your leave Hokage-sama said Bear as he flickered away. Arg. Just when I'm finally ready to retire Kami herself decides to fuck it up and now I have to deal with more paperwork he groaned as rubbed his temples. Why does Kami hate me? After 10 minutes Hiruzen had finally finished up the remaining paperwork that was the death of him for years. He was glad to finally be rid of it, the only thing left to do now was to make his sensei the new Hokage and finally retire to live out the remainder of his years as he wants. He got up from his seat and cleaned off his desk and started to smoke his pipe when Hashirama appeared. Still smoking Hiruzen, those things can kill you, you know Hashirama chuckled. When you're as old as I am sensei, you realize that sometimes a smoke can make any stressful day a relief. He sighed, taking a puff. So I take it you're ready to retire for the day? Hashirama asked him. Yes sensei, he groaned. 
Now I can finally retire. Lord Third took off his hat and robes and presented them to Hashirama. Lord First took them with great pride like he did over 100 years ago. Placing the robes on he straightened and tightened the knots. He then placed a hat atop his head as Hiruzen welcomed him back as the Hokage. Mito also congratulated her husband. A knock at the door as an Anbu spoke from outside the office. Lord Third the council has requested your presence, the Anbu dear said. Hell them I'll be right there Hiruzen replied waiting till the Anbu left. Well sensei, it's time to reveal your existence to the council. Indeed, it's also time for the village to go through drastic changes. Hashirama started coldly. Lord Third and Lady Mito nodded as they left the office and followed Hashirama to the council chambers to discuss the future of the leaf and to knock some people down a peg. Council chambers, Hiruzen and company stood before the door that led to the council meeting. Lord Third had been notified that everyone else had already arrived. But as he stood before it he couldn't help but feel a slight unsettled, as if something big was going to conspire boy oh boy was he in for a surprise. He could already hear soft chatter and discussions going on. Praying to the gods that were listening he pushed open the door and swept into the room. Lord Third took his seat at the head of the table and then surveyed the council. The council was split into three parts, the Shinobi Council which consisted of the clan heads of the Hayuga, Aburam, Inuzuka, Akamichi, Nara, Kurama, Ichiha, Saratobi, and the Nara clan, minus the Senju, Yuzumaki, and Namika's seats that were still empty. But not for long. The civilian council that handles civilian and financial affairs like stocks and trades, and finally the elder council which consisted of the Hokage's advisors Hamura, Kaharu, and the old war hawk Danzo. I call this meeting to order, shouted Hiruzen. Okage-sama, where is Minato? Hiyashi asked. Shouldn't he be here? Following his battle with the Kaiubi Minato managed to defeat the beast with a SS rank Fuinjutsu called the Shaiki Fujin. With it he was able to summon the goddess of death herself and had sealed the nine tails away into his children Menma and Naruto. The Hokage explained. Menma holds the fox's chakra while Naruto contains the soul. The civilian council immediately called for the death of the youngest Namikas, for they believed he was the nine tails in human form. Hashirama and Mito, who were outside of the chambers, were furious but kept their cool. They didn't want to give themselves away just yet. Silence Hiruzen shouted. Okage-sama we must kill the demon. A civilian shouted. We must kill it while it's still weak in human form. I'll show you a demon Hashirama whispered getting his kunai ready till Mito stopped him. Mito gave Hashirama a look that said don't act rashly, wait for the right moment Hashirama groaned before putting away his kunai. Naruto is what keeps the demon from escaping and killing us all. Hiruzen shouted to the fat merchant civilian. Amura cleared his throat. May I suggest that by handing them over to the council, we can train them to control the power of the tailed beast. I will train them to be strong and loyal ninjas of the leaf. Hiruzen groaned the answer is no, besides Minato and Kashina left for the fire capital. Unfortunately they decided to only take Menma and left Naruto behind. What? The clan head screamed. Maybe they will train their son to kill the demon with the very power that they stripped from him. Another civilian shouted. Enough Mibuki Haruno screeched. This boy Naruto is as much a victim as we are. Everyone was shocked that Mibuki Haruno, the head of the civilian council, would defend the boy. Hiruzen was most shocked since her husband Seiko Haruno was a demon hater and was killed in the Kaiubi attack. Mibuki Haruno asked how you could defend the demon who killed your husband, a wealthy civilian asked. I'm not defending the demon, I'm defending the boy who imprisoned it. She harshly replied. Why would Minato, especially Kishina, leave their youngest pup and take their other pup with them? It doesn't make sense, Tsum said coldly. I never thought my teammate could do such a thing, Hiyashi shouted. Such a drag but I have to agree with Hokage-sama. It sounds to me that Minato preferred the kid with the fox's chakra. Am I right Shikaku asked. Leave it to Naira to figure things out quickly. Hiruzen sweat dropped, you hit the nail on the head Shikaku, Kishina stated that Menma needed to control Kaiubi's chakra and that Naruto just wasn't that important. The shinobi council was in an uproar at the complete disregard that their once beloved Yande and red hot habanero had towards their youngest son. Questions were soon asked about what would happen to the boy. Many of the clans offered to take him in. The first one to volunteer was Fugaku who secretly wanted a weapon to increase the power of the clan. Next was Hiyashi who was ashamed of his former best friend and thought of taking the boy in not for Minato or Kishina but to give the boy a caring loving home. Soon wanted to take care of the child as she can relate to him, since she herself comes from a clan that was once feared and demonized due to their wolf-like features and powerful techniques. Soon also was ashamed her blood sister Kashina would abandon one pup for the more powerful one. She thought the redhead was in Yuzumaki, a clan that was known to put family above all else, but clearly she was wrong. The Shikacho Ino trio couldn't take care of the child since they have their hands full with kids of their own plus, with the fact that Nara men would complain as always, and clearly they didn't want Naruto to be lazy. 
the Yamanaka were out of the question, since Yamanaka males were always busy with barely enough time to spend with their kids, leaving it to their wives, and Naruto needs to have a father that dedicates their lives to both their jobs and their kids equally. Finally the Akimachis tend to overfeed their kids, and I don't think they would want to fat Naruto. The Aburam was clearly out of the question since who would want bugs living in their bodies. Here is inside as he silenced them with a small amount of Kai. Now that I have your attention I understand that you all wish to take care of the boy, unfortunately that won't be happening. You see, the Shinigami who sealed the Kai Ubi away left us a little present. The Haru spoke up first, Hiruzen what are you talking about? I let our guests explain Hiruzen smiled as he motioned the couple inside. The council gasped as silence filled the room. Everyone could only stare and not even say a word. There standing before them was the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju and Mito Yuzumaki. The shinobi clan heads stood in awe and respect for one of the village's founders. However the advisors were not convinced and believed it to be a trick. Here is in what trickery is this? You dare defy our sensei memory by using the Ido Tensei to bring him back to the land of the living. Kaharu shouted. Silence your mouth, insolent pups. Hashirama shouted. This is not my brothers, the shinigami has brought my wife and I back to the land of the living. Why would the goddess of death bring you back? Shikakunara asked. Unless there was a good reason. Mito was the one who spoke up to answer the Nara, yes Lord Nara, you see the Shinigami is angered for Minato breaking his promise to her. After Minato abandoned Naruto here without a second thought, it was decided that we would return to the mortal plane and raise Naruto as our own. What? Everyone shouted. Indeed the Shinigami replaced Naruto's blood and DNA with my own and my wife's. Naruto is biologically ours now and we shall thrive where Minato had failed. I will also retake the mantle of Hokage. After all, I think we all agree it's time for Hiruzen to step down so he can enjoy his golden years. That is true, Sensei Hiruzen agreed until he let out a huge smile. This is a grand occasion, now Lord First can keep the demon in check and keep it weak. A civilian cheered. The demon will be bowing at our feet. The civilian's rejoicing was cut short when a spike of wood sprang from the floor and pierced through the man's neck killing him. Hokage-sama. A civilian council member shouted. The next person who calls my son a demon, their lives are next, Hashirama screamed angrily. Now since I'm Naruto's father and the eldest Senju male then by clan law I'm the clan head, and my wife shall be the Yuzumaki clan head, since she's the eldest Yuzumaki, considering Kashina broke her vow to the clan and hasn't been active in her duties as clan head. My husband is right and you all know it too, plus Minato never took the mantle of Senju clan head, since he's the Namika's clan head, so therefore by the law, the clan head position is passed to the eldest Senju Mito. Well sensei since you're going to retake the mantle of Hokage, which is wonderful. Let me be the first to welcome you back. This will keep our enemies off our back and we will be able to rebuild a bit faster. Said Danzo, getting a nod from Hashirama. If there is nothing else to discuss then I hereby dismiss this meeting. Here is instated. Wait. Kaharu said quickly. What shall we tell the village? Nothing. Danzo shouted, making everyone look at him. The village has started rebuilding itself and the people are trying to get over their grief. If you announce Naruto's status, he will become a target, an outlet for their rage and hatred for the fox. Anzo Hiruzen said surprisingly. This is a side of you I've never seen. I may be a cold shinobi Hiruzen, but I'm not heartless. Danzo said sternly. Therefore I ask that we keep Naruto's SSS rank secret so that the boy can at least have a normal life. The civilian council minus Mibuki went into an uproar again. They refused to do anything that would protect the demon. Danzo silenced them with a threat of execution if even one of them revealed the boy's status to anyone. This silenced them completely as they sank down into their seats. The first Hokage could only smile at how mature Danzo has gotten since his genin days. One more thing before I dismiss this meeting, the civilian council is hereby disbanded. I will discuss it with Mibuki Hirano after everyone leaves. The civilians wanted to retort, but a single glare from Mito kept them quiet. They didn't take their defeat well though, they swore to do everything they could to make the demon pay. When no one had anything else to talk about Lord First dismissed the council. Mibuki stayed behind as ordered as she gave a list of civilians that she knew wouldn't blame Naruto for something he couldn't control. Ashirama thanked her as she bowed her head and left the chambers. Well I better get back to Naruto it's time for his feeding, Nido smiled as she went to the Senju compound. Looks like we better go over the village rules and make some changes, it's time the village had a wake up call Hashirama told Hiruzen. Hiruzen nodded, yes I agree sensei, this will undo everything the previous civilian council had done. Hashirama and Hiruzen spent the afternoon going over the old and new laws that were made after Hashirama's death. Hiruzen was right about one thing, the village hidden in the leaves was in for a huge wake-up call. Chapter 4. Fall of the Yandame Rise of Hashirama. It's been a few months since the Kaiubi incident and the village had already managed to rebuild itself in record time. The memories however of that horrible night were still embedded in their pics. 
their former Hokage, Hiruzen put their fears to rest with words of encouragement that the leaf will never fall. Many believed it, but some have not. Hiruzen had also revealed to the village the gift Kami blessed them with, he revealed the return of the first Hokage Hashirama Senju. The village was in complete shock when the legendary god of shinobi made his presence known to them atop the Hokage Tower. Ashirama with words of wisdom from his days as Hokage and his speech of the will of fire gave rise to strengthen the hope of the people. The village cheered out his name as Hashirama retook the hat and robes from Hiruzen. After taking the robes Hashirama who nodded to his student turned to address the village and revealed that Minata left the village after the Nine Tails attack was over. Aura filled the audience as he told them how he just left the village to train his son Menma to control the Kaiubi's chakra while leaving the village to rebuild without its leader. Anger and harsh words spread as the villagers demanded the return of the Yandane for his desertion. Hashirama put them to rest and promised them that Minato would pay for his crimes. Kakashi approached the Shadame and asked if they could be allowed one piece of revenge no matter how small. Their Kakashi Haddock, Minato's prized student, what do you have in mind? Hashirama asked. Kakashi Haddock walked past him and stood before the Hokage Mountain and pointed to Minato's stone face. Minato deserted us, he abandoned his child because of a prophecy, he left us when we were still rebuilding. He believed a prophecy was more important than taking care of our village Kakashi scoffed. Kakashi thought of Kurenai and Might Guy. I suggest we take the stone face down. Kakashi said, shocking everyone. If Minato believed we were not good enough because of the prophecy then he doesn't deserve to be. Ashirama looked at Hiruzen, Hiruzen. Kakashi has a point, you once said, those who desert their comrades are trash, but those who desert the village are unforgivable. Minato chose to leave after the village was rebuilding itself. He made his choice. You have a point Hashirama said before looking at the village. Do as you see fit. The villagers cheered as chains were thrown and hooked into the stone face. The villagers grunted as they started to pull on the chains. The weight from the stone was strong, but their anger was stronger. Arg. They shouted as the stone in the mountain started to crack and slowly break. Didori. Kakashi said he plunged his lightning blade through the Hokage's stone head forehead. The strain from the chains and the chidori was too much as the stone broke apart as the villagers pulled one final time. The stone face broke from the mountain as it came crashing down. The stone face hit the ground as it broke apart upon impact as the villagers cheered. Hashirama was shocked but proud of the villagers' dedication and loyalty to the village. The following afternoon the village was being rebuilt with the thousands upon thousands of fresh wood Hashirama gave them with his mokuten. The money that the Senju and Yuzumaki clan had were then shared among the people to help them get back to their lives. 20% of their clan's fortunes were given to rebuild the village itself, while another 10% were given to the civilians for their stores, businesses, and homes that were destroyed. The village's reconstruction was going perfectly with the supplies Lord Shadame had given them. Meanwhile back in his office Hashirama was going through the paperwork, a Hokage's nightmare. But Hashirama chuckled as he knew the secret to defeat paperwork, and that was shadow clones. His assistant Mibuki Hiruno was helping with the minor things in the village, such as financial and other small problems. She was a great help to him. Okage Sama, his secretary, a middle aged woman, said, entering his office. Brava, what can I do for you? Pardon the interruption, Lord Hashirama, a letter arrived for you, sir. She said, handing him the letter. When he took it, he saw on the back the Namika's clan symbol. It was from Minato and Kishina. Gripping the letter in his hands, he tried to keep his anger in check before taking a deep breath. Thank you, Rava, that will be all. I, she said, leaving the office. Hashirama growled softly, still glaring at the letter. Should he open it? Or should he just cast it away like Minato cast away Naruto? Mibuki noticed how stressed the Hokage was and wondered if it had something to do with the letter. Approaching him she asked if he was alright. Oh well, yes Mibuki said I'm fine. Are you sure about Lord Hokage? You seemed really stressed. No, it's nothing I'm okay. Very well if you are sure she said before going back to her duties. Sighing in relief, Hashirama slowly began to open the envelope. He decided he should at least read what Minato had to say, no matter how bad the excuses he would make. Taking out the paper he unfolded the letter and began to read. Dear Hiruzen, Ashina and I have made it to the fire capital safely. We have settled in just fine in the royal district of the capital. It feels good to be back home where my ancestors lived. I'm looking forward to teaching Menma about his ancestors and all the techniques of the clan. Kishina has been going on about how Menma will take after her clan more than mine. But enough about that, how's Naruto doing? We haven't received any letter from you since we arrived. I can only guess you're still angry at us for leaving Naruto behind. But like I said here is in we need to train Menma to control the chakra and having the boys together would allow the soul to regain its stolen chakra. It's best they grow apart so they will both be safe. Trust me here is in this is for the best, you'll see. But putting that aside, how is my son, is he being spoiled by the villagers due to his new hero status? Oh Kishina wanted to write to you as well. 
Garrison, this is Kashina, still upset about my choice. See reason for once old man I'm doing this for both of my boys. I love them both, and having Naruto here will just endanger him if the soul is anywhere near its chakra. You can hate me all you want, old man, but I will not risk both my children's lives if Kaiubi regains its chakra. I hope you raise Naruto with good morals, because I won't have him becoming a spoiled brat when we come to reclaim him. I hope you didn't make Naruto believe we abandoned him for his brother, because if you did Hiruzen you're going to be a very sorry old man. Also I don't want Orochimaru influencing my baby with his newfound hatred for me and my husband. The prophecy is very important and Naruto will be trained when we come to him to support his brother. Menma will become the next head of the Senju and Uzumaki clans and Naruto at best will be a branch member. Naruto will be trained in minor ninjutsu and mostly tojutsu as a support ninja and will help his brother fulfill the prophecy. You'll see Hiruzen, it will all work out for everyone. Hiraya will be coming in a few days to check up on Naruto for us. Yours sincerely, Minato and Kishina Namikas. After finishing the letter a storm of emotions raged within the first Hokage. Hashirama was infuriated that the Yandame and his wife felt so little for their son. They believed him to be a weak support ninja to aid his elder brother in fulfilling a prophecy which he might add isn't even set in stone. After all prophecies constantly change and in Hashirama's opinion prophecies don't foretell a person's fate, to him a shinobi makes his or her own fate. He then tore up the letter in anger and tossed its scraps in the garbage. He then grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and began to write his own reply. He put every amount of emotion into his response and then had it sealed. Mabuki? He shouted. Yes sir, she replied. Take this letter and give it to the postal ninja division. I want this letter sent to the Yandame Hokage in the fire capital immediately. He said coldly. Mabuki feeling the coldest emitting from him nodded and rushed out of the office to have the letter delivered. After she left Hashirama vanished from his seat after finishing all of his paperwork, Uzumaki Senju compound. Hokage's monument. Mito Uzumaki was in the kitchen dressed in a long light green dress skirt and a blue t-shirt that tightened against her chest, showing some cleavage. She wore a pink apron that said insult my cooking, I'll kill you on it, as she hummed a little tune getting lunch ready for her family. She was cooking some delicious miso ramen with a side of bread and vegetables. She wanted her kids to be healthy and well nourished. Mito-san's voice rang out. Oh, Itachi Mito smiled, turning around to look at them. Itachi was helping her out with Naruto for the day, as the heir had taken care of her son, while she was doing the house chores and working at the hospital. Itachi walked towards her carrying Naruto in his arms. Naruto Uzumaki Senju, the pride of the clans, was a beautiful clone of his parents. His baby fat skin trimmed to a soft pale tan that resembled his mother's. His hair was blood red like his mother, and his eyes were a dark brown like his daddy. He was a mini male version of Mito. He was the shining light in not only her life, but also the villages. Is Hashirama coming home soon? Itachi asked. Yes he will be home soon, Mito replied. I thank you again Itachi for helping me these past few days. Glad to help Mito-sama, I think I might become Naruto's favorite babysitter. Mito got the lunch ready when her husband entered the room with a smile on his face. He greeted his wife with a kiss on the cheek as he smelled the ramen that was cooking. He also noticed her famous dumplings that she always made. He tried sneaking his hand over to grab one only for a ladle to smack his hand. He yelped rubbing his hand as his wife gave him a stern but happy smile. Ah, Hashirama we don't eat dumplings till after lunchtime. She said smiling. Hashirama grumbled, mmmm troublesome wife. So mean. Not even one? He asked. No Hashirama, no snacks before lunch, Mito yelled. Hashirama sulked in his seat as Mito sighed with a smile. Your hopeless Mito chuckled. Uzumaki women are so mean, he grumbled. I heard that Mito smirked. Hashirama sighed with a small laugh, well how's my favorite family? We are doing fine said Mito. Itachi was a good help as well. Oh yes Itachi Ichiha, a prodigy similar to Madara. I heard you completed your mission in record time yesterday. Hashirama praised. Well when I reached the border, my team was greeted with hostility from Iowa. Apparently they heard about you coming back from someone from the leaf and attacked us. Luckily we killed about 200 out of 250 Iowa ninja, thanks to my Sharingan and Kakashi's Yadori. Hashirama sighed and let out a groan at the info. Conflict no matter what the era. After lunch Hashirama we are going to the festival. Mito reminded him. Now let's sit down and eat I don't want all of my hard work on this meal spoiled okay. Hi he said as everyone began to eat. Who Itachi care to join us? Who oh thank you Lord Hokage. After the delicious lunch, all the dishes were clean thanks to Itachi and his shadow clones. Soon Itachi left to greet his family, while Mito and Hashirama got dressed to get ready for the spirit festival to honor the shinobi who lost their lives for the village. Hashirama dressed himself in a black kimono with red satin. While Mito dressed in a royal kimono with white satin tied around the waist. She wore her gold headpiece as two ceiling tags hung from the buns in hair. 
Naruto was dressed in baby clothes well dressed like a little fox. Alright let's get going the festival won't start without us present Hashirama smiled. They left the compound and met with their fellow friends that awaited them at the complex gates. They bowed their heads to their clan heads as they greeted them. The entire family soon left to join in the festivities. On the Hagakur Central Sector, the festival was in full swing as the village square was decorated with lots of lights, lanterns, and lots of masks. Lots of food was prepared and the game stands were put up for the children. The people dressed in appropriate clothing for the celebration. Hashirama and his family arrived as the people greeted them with warm smiles and good greetings. Welcome Hokage-sama, a civilian said. My lord and lady an elderly woman, started bowing her head. He smiled, hello my friends, I trust things are well he asked, getting a nod from the festival committee which was made up of 130 civilians and 300 shinobi and retired shinobi. The young woman walked up to the family presenting him with a plate of fresh dango which he accepted. It was so delicious as he gave her a thumbs up on it making her happy. Lord Hashirama's voice rang out. The family smiled as they noticed it was Makoto Ichiha and her family. Fugaku greeted them with a firm nod which they returned. The Ichiha clan head and Hashirama were not friends but remained civil to each other. Fugaku was still all about having Naruto as a weapon, but after fighting Mito Uzumaki who gave him such a tongue lashing. She gave him such a beating Fugaku turned over a new leaf, although he was still the cold clan head we all know and love. Bakoto greeted the family as she gave them each a hug, including the little red head who always brought a smile to her family. She was the friend of the family, but to Naruto Makoto was more like an aunt or second mother figure. Ever since she found out about Kashina abandoning Naruto like he was nothing she lost all respect for the redhead. In fact the day after she found out what Kashina did she burned and ripped up every picture that she had of them together. She even threw away all the gifts that Kashina bought her over the years they were friends. She never wanted anything to do with her and soon found a new friend in Nido. Good to see you, Nido said as she presented the rose to her. Bakoto smiled as she knelt down and took the rose, oh thank you I love it, she sniffed the rose before she put it in her hair. You look lovely, Kasan, the rose that brings out your beauty, Itachi laughed. Naruto picked out the rose for you Mito chuckled. Makoto laughed as she rubbed his head, Ruo thank you Naruto. Ashirama smiled, how are you doing, Lady Makoto, Lord Fugaku? I thought Ichihas don't like happy, bright festivals or parties. He joked about getting a bonk on the head from his wife. Forgive my husband, he tends to make jokes at the worst times. Mito laughed. The Ichiha and the Uzumaki Senju families met up with their fellow clans, while their children set out to meet with their friends and play lots of games. Soon Hiruzen and his wife had met up with Hashirama. He greeted the couple with a bow of respect which the couple had returned. Welcome Lord Hiruzen and Lady Bawako. It is good to see you, they said. The honor is ours, Lord Hashirama Bawako said respectfully. I trust you are looking forward to the festival with your family. Hiruzen laughed while enjoying a glass of sake. Mito nodded, yes indeed thank you. Enough chatter we have a festival to enjoy Hashirama said as everyone headed to join their friends in the festivities. Higher capital. Namika's compound. Hashina had placed Menma to bed as she had headed downstairs to have some tea with Minato and the others. After the stressful afternoon she had taken care of her bundle of joy. Menma was exactly like her when she was a baby. She was greeted by Tsunade who made her favorite tea, Uo, the sweet scent of jasmine tea. She took notice of Minato and Jureya who were covered in scratches and slight bruises, meaning they were out training. Oh well boys will be boys. Here you are, Kashina Tsunade smiled, setting the tea in front of her. Thank you Tsunade sensei. Kashina smiled, taking a seat and taking a sip from her tea. Sounds like you had quite the afternoon with Menma. Tsunade laughed. Yeah he was a handful, but I can handle it. He's more like me every day. Yeah I remember all the sleepless nights I had Minato jokes. That's why I'm the mother darling, I'm the more mature parent. Kashina smirked. Hey speaking of babies, have you heard of Saratobi sensei? Jiraiya asked. No sensei Minato sighed, shaking his head. I believe he's still holding a grudge against us. The group groaned, Hiruzen was still being a sour puss about them leaving. He just couldn't understand the situation and how important the prophecy was. They haven't heard from him in a few months and they haven't received any updates on Naruto either. Tsunade betted it was Orochimaru that prevented any letters from reaching them. Minato I have a strange feeling that Naruto might come to hate us. Kishina cried. Minato placed his arm around his wife's shoulder to comfort her. It's alright darling if he does hate us then we will do everything in our power to get him to forgive us. Trust me I am sure that our son will not hate us. Minato is right Kashina, once we explain the situation then Naruto will understand, besides he's probably enjoying his life as the hero who kept the village safe from the Nine Tails. Jiraiya stated firmly and jokingly. Suddenly there was a raven upon their windowsill with a scroll attached to its leg. It was an Achiha raven due to the Sharingan eyes. It was used by the Hokage to send private messages. 
Everyone wondered why Hiruzen would send them a letter now of all times, since he didn't want anything to do with them. Kishina placed her hand on his shoulder to calm him. Minato took all deep breaths as he unrolled the scroll and began to read. Dear Minato and Kishina, you got some nerve to think so little about your son. Naruto is more than just a support ninja. Naruto is an innocent soul, and I won't tolerate you tainting that light. Also I'm not Hiruzen I'm the new Hokage who replaced your sorry ass. I've also placed Naruto under mine and my wife's care. We will take care of him since you're too lazy to take care of both of your kids. And you Kishina, well my wife is in Yuzumaki, and unlike you she knows what it means to be in Yuzumaki. Yutsunadi, I am ashamed of you, to think you'd sink this low, you disgust me, you better hope I don't get my hands on you. Naruto is no longer yours, he's my son now. I'll be the father you refuse to be Minato. See you in 13 years Yandame, because believe me Minato you won't be getting a warm welcome. Sincerely, Nod. The new Hokage. Silence filled the group with the information. First off they were shocked that Hiruzen replaced Minato so quickly. To think the old man was angry enough to go that far to get back at them. Another thing that horrified them was that Naruto was adopted by the new Hokage and his wife, who just happened to be an Yuzumaki woman. Tsunade was pissed that the new Hokage would dare threaten her with bodily harm, new Hokage or not, she would make sure she pounded his face in. The bastard didn't even sign his name. That bastard Hiruzen, how dare he give away my son to someone else. We told him to leave Naruto in an orphanage so he would be safe. But now Naruto's new parents are threatening us and keeping us from seeing him again. Kishina growled as her hair split into nine strands. He's my baby, Naruto is my baby, only I can be his mother. No one can love him like I do. Minato on the other hand was confused with the threat the new Hokage made against him. Something about not getting a warm welcome when he comes back. Whatever this guy is, Hiruzen must have revealed the prophecy and their plan to the new Hokage. This was a bad prophecy, and Naruto's heritage was supposed to be a secret until they came back. Ureya was the same way, this whole plan they put together was to be kept secret, but now that Hiruzen had blabbed it to the new Hokage, they would have to rethink of a solution to ensure everything they worked for wouldn't unravel. Sensei really is out to get us, Jiraiya sighed. To think he went this far. No joke Sanadi growled, taking a gulp of her sake. I bet he made Arachimaru the new Hokage. I agree with Minato chuckling. Only he would use threats like this. I say we go back there and pound that snake into paste Kashina snarled, flipping the table over. No Kashina we got the prophecy to think about. We must make sure Menma is ready to defeat the great evil and bring peace to the nations. Minato reminded her. Kashina sighed fine, but I didn't like it. But when we get back to the village, I get to be the first one to beat the snake. Of course Kushi-chan Minato smiled. Now let's just enjoy our lunch. Chapter 5. Parental love at its fullest. Ashurama smiled as he watched his son cuddle up Shira in his arms and giggling happily as he chased her around crawling and giggling. The tiger cub loved playing with the senju air. Mito was watching and loved how happy her son was. After a while she stood up walking towards her little bundle of joy and crouched down and opened her arms as she urged for him to come to her. Naruto immediately forgot all about the tiger cub and began to crawl happily to his mommy. She opened her arms again and he started crawling to her. She stepped back a few steps giggling as Naruto sat down puffing his cheeks, making him look all the more adorable. Kakashi sat to the side as he watched the mother-son duo playing. He saw Lady Mito teasing the boy and laughed as he saw Naruto puffing his cheeks at her teasing. He saw that he never cried, no matter how much she teased him the most that she could get out of him was puffing off his cheeks. Opening her arms again and saw Naruto put his hands to the ground and stood up with shaking legs as he took a step towards her and her eyes widened. Hashirama smiled as he got to his feet and got out the camera as he saw Naruto take his first step. Mito's eyes watered as she saw him take his first step and she saw him take another and saw he was watching her sadly and was confused but urged for him to come to her. Come on Naruto-chan just a bit more. Come to Kachan. She said through a sob. Naruto took five steps and stumbled as she grabbed her in his arms before he fell down and saw him gazing at her curiously. He put his little hand on her cheek and wiped the tear away. Oh god Neri-chan you walk so far on your first time. Oh my boy I love you so much. She whispered and he snuggled in her arms making her smile. She gazed into his eyes that always drew her to him as she kissed him on the nose as he scrunched his face a bit and she giggled. Oh you're Kachan's adorable little boy now, aren't you Neri-chan, aren't you? She cooed and kissed him as he giggled. Mama happy Naruto cooked. Mito gasped you Naruto you said your first word. Mommy love you. Mito squealed as she hugged him tightly. Woo oh Naruto I'm so proud of you. Woo oh I'm so so proud. She cried. Ashirama sweat dropped geezer dramatically much Mito chan. Shut up Ashirama Mito shouted, making her husband hold up his hands in defense. Oh you hurt me home. He laughed. Besides, I got a little present for Naruto. Shizun helped me pick it out. 
he asked and pulled out a small wrapped bundle and handed it to her as she saw a little nine-tailed fox pajamas with some stuffed animals. Ooh Naruto look Mito said showing Naruto his presence. Naruto cooed and reached into the box and pulled out a big tiger plush. He giggled happily and cuddled it. Mito smiled as she picked him up and headed to the porch for a drink with her husband. They had hot chocolate and enjoyed the serene silence until an Anbu appeared. Lord Hashirama, Jiraiya was spotted outside of the main gate. He's demanding to see the Hokage and to check up on Naruto. The Kashi came with me and Hashirama snarled while standing up. It's time we greet Jiraiya, but I can't reveal myself yet so. Hashirama turned into a young man in his late twenties with short brown hair and blue eyes. He wore a traditional black silk kimono with a white sash across his waist. Hi Hokage-sama Kakashi said following him. Mido clutched her baby to her chest protectively as she growled at the mention of Jiraiya. There was no way that she was going to allow that toad sage anywhere near her baby. Anoha Village Gates Jiraiya arrived at the village gates after a few days walk from the fire capital. He was on orders from his student to find out the identity of the new Hokage who had taken Naruto from him and Kishina. The news of Naruto being given to another family put a huge dent into the prophecy. According to the Toads a few days after living in the fire capital, the Toads foresaw an event that would turn the tide of the world. The Toad Sage told them that if the Chosen One loses their other half, he will fall into darkness. They believed that if Menma loses Naruto to another family, then Menma would lose his other half of himself and fall to darkness. But what he didn't know was that the prophecy actually meant Kaguya and Naruto since Kaguya became half of Naruto. Reaching the village gates he was greeted by the two Chunins. Halt who goes there? Jiraiya of the I have come to see the new Hokage and to check up on Naruto. Naruto-sama is fine, Jiraiya. Naruto-sama. Wow the brat must really be enjoying his hero status if this is how the village spoils him. I'll take it from here gentlemen, a voice called out. Jiraiya and the guards turned to see the Hokage dressed in his robes with Kakashi at his side. Lord Hokage saluted. At ease Hashirama smiled. Hashirama took one look at Jiraiya and tried to keep his anger in check. He was face to face with a man who drove a wedge within the Namika's family. The man who agreed that Naruto should be left behind so his more powerful brother would be trained to control the fox's chakra. So your new Hokage Jiraiya asked bluntly. And you're the gallant mighty Jiraiya Hashirama asked. I see you in awe at my mighty reputation. Jiraiya boasted. You mean as a perverted hermit who peeks on women in bathhouses. And who writes that filthy smut which I might add is insulting to women. Hashirama pointed out coldly. Jiraiya felt like a sword was running through his heart. This man clearly didn't see the mighty shinobi that was the mighty toad sage. I'll have you know I'm the teacher of the fourth Hokage and the child of prophecy Menmanamikas. The sage praised. You mean the bastard who abandoned our village when we were still weak after the Kaiubi attack. They shouted. Lenado had urgent business to take care of and he left Hiruzen Sensei to take over until the business was finished. Jiraiya takes offense to the insult to his old student. The rebuilding of our village was supposed to be Minato's business. Hashirama snarled back. That blonde bastard was a coward. He fled instead of helping us in case another village attacked us. Minato saved your sorry asses from the Ninetales, something none of you could ever accomplish in your entire lives, Jiraiya retorted. Minato sensei was a coward and then abandoned one of his children because of a prophecy told by you and the old toad sage. Kakashi spoke out in a cold tone making Jiraiya flinch. Jiraiya gasped. Kakashi, that's your sensei you're talking about, the man who took you in and raised you like his own son. That man is no longer my sensei Kakashi shouted. The day he abandoned his youngest son and the village was the day he abandoned me. Uo and the bastard can take this back. Kakashi tossed a three-pronged kunai Minato gave him for graduation to the ground in front of Jiraiya and stomped it into the dirt. Kakashi Jiraiya said softly. Now what brings you back to the village? They asked. I have come here to check up on Naruto for Minato and Kishina. Jiraiya replied. I am the boy's godfather after all. You are not going anywhere near my son, you filthy toad. Hashirama hissed. Your son? Jiraiya asked. Oh that's right you're the one who adopted the boy. Well duh I made that clear in my letter or is your eyesight as bad as your luck with dating a woman? Hashirama seethed burning Jiraiya. The toad sage couldn't believe that he just got burned by the Hokage's insult. That man had a lot of nerve to talk to the great Jiraiya that way. I don't care who you are, but no one speaks to one of them that way. As I can tell you are a first time Hokage and your chakra level says you're at least level. I'm on a whole different level. Your arrogance speaks for itself. Kakashi scoffed. Here's what's going to happen, you're going to turn around and go back to the fire capital. Then you'll go back to your old student and his wife and tell them that if any of them try anything against me and my wife or take away Naruto. I will ensure that they are dealt with the harshest punishment known to man, along with a special session with Ibiki and Anko when they have a bad day. After Ibiki and Anko are demons when they work on a bad day. Hashirama shouted with fury in his dark cold ice tone. 
Who do you think you are? Jiraiya shouted. They were going to attack before Hashirama stopped them and glared at the arrogant Toad Sage. Not wanting to reveal his true former name just yet he decided to give him a fake name to use. My name is Meru Senju Hashirama. Senju, you're a Senju. Yes I am, why did you think the Senjus died out? Besides Sanadi and her family yes I did. Well now you know and now you can go to Jiraiya. Kakashi escorted him out. Hi Lord Senju Kakashi said before facing Jiraiya. Alright you old toad come on. Kakashi, you can't blame your sensei for what happened, Jiraiya pleaded. Please see reason. We all saw reason and we have renounced Minato as our. Well what? What nonsense are you talking about? Jiraiya demanded. Take a look at the Hokage monument Kakashi said pointing towards the mountain. Bazing at the Hokage's mountain he gasped as he noticed that Minato's stone face wasn't there. What happened to his student stone face on the Hokage's monument? Well, well what happened to Minato's face on the Hokage's mountain? Jiraiya stuttered. The villagers tore it down. What? Why would they do that? What did Minato do to deserve this? He abandoned us and his son in our weakened state. Kakashi hissed. Now I'll escort you to the fire capital, but after that you're on your own. Jiraiya wasn't given another second to speak, as the two Chunins joined Kakashi in escorting him to the fire capital. Hashirama sighed as he wiped his forehead. Damn that was close. It's times like this I wish Madara was still here. Hashirama groaned as he left to go to the office to deal with the council, mostly the civilians. Ever since Hashirama replaced the old civilian council the former members were using some of their former, they still had to make demands to make things better for the civilian portion of the village. Plus Hamura and Kaharu weren't making it any easier. Thankfully Danzo managed to keep his old teammates in line. As Hashirama walked down the street he passed Danzo. Make sure Jiraiya and his students don't plot anything behind my back. Have Root follow them and if they prove a threat to my village or my son kills them. Hashirama whispered. You don't even have to ask me twice, Sensei Danzo replied as the two men continued on their way. Back with Kakashi and the Chunins they escorted Jiraiya as far as they were allowed. Jiraiya told him he can get to the Namika's compound in the fire capital from where they were. They just nodded and turned to head home. This was bad Uo so very bad not only for the prophecy, but also for Minato and his family. Since the reveal of Minato's stone face torn off the mountain and the villagers doubt about their greatest Hokage. He needed to talk to Minato and somehow win back the praise of the people. Without a second more he dashed off towards the capital. Namika's clan compound. Minato and Kashina were in their clan training ground as Kushin was training with her sensei Tsunade. The two women were fighting using their clans to jutsu styles, the whirlpool storm style, and the senja spirit tiger style. Arg yelled at Tsunade as Kashina landed a good kick to her midsection. You're still as strong as always, Kashina smiled as he panted. Thanks, sensei. I can see that despite your old age you're still as strong and hardcore as always. Minato was watching them harness their skills as he was going over training regiments for his son Menma when he reached the age of four. However his mind was drifting off towards his other son Naruto, the boy he left behind. Ever since he received that letter from the new Hokage, Minato had lost some of his confidence since losing his position of Hokage and his youngest at the same time was a low blow to his pride. Now that Naruto was now legally with new parents, he won't be able to help Menma like he was destined to do. This put their plans in a rut, the plan was to come back and bring Naruto back into the family and then make him the head of the Namika's side branch. It was similar to the Hyuga side branch, but unlike them they don't have a cage bird seal. Suddenly a medium-side toad dropped down in the training grounds as Jiraiya dropped down from the back of the toad. Minato jumped up and rushed to greet his sensei. Jiraiya sensei welcome back, how was your trip to Konoha? Did you speak with the new Hokage and got to check up on Naruto? Yes, I met Hokage and I found out that he's a senju like yourself and Tsunade. Another senju? Swan gasped. Are you sure? Yes he might be lying, but Kakashi confirmed it by calling him Lord Senju. How is Kakashi doing? Minato asked about his student. Kakashi believes you abandoned the village and he hates you for it. What? Minato and Kashina shouted. Yeah he wanted you to have this, Jiraiya said, giving Minato his three-pronged kunai. Minato took the kunai in his shaking hands. His student hated him now. Was everyone he knew going to hate him now for trying to save the world from total destruction? Also Minato, that's not the worst of it, Jiraiya sighed. What's the worst of it then you old pervert? Swan asked. The villagers tore down Minato's stone face from the Hokage's monument. The group's expression was filled with shock, horror, sadness, and betrayal. The villagers that Minato saved from the Nine Tails tore down his stone face off the monument, which meant they renounced him. Minato felt betrayed by his own village, Kashina on the other hand was furious that the villagers would treat them like this after they saved them from the Kaiubi. Tsunade didn't know what to think, but she strongly believed Orochimaru had a hand in this. Who bets it was Orochimaru who convinced them to tear down Minato's face? Tsunade seethed. I do Kashina hissed. I am beginning to believe it as well. 
since Orochimaru hated me ever since he lost the Hokage election years ago. Talk about being a sore loser. Minato grumbled. Looks like we will have to win back the hearts of the people when we come back. We can also get the daimyo involved, but I have a feeling we shouldn't, since Hiruzen and the new Hokage would persuade the daimyo to join their side. Then what do you do? Kashina asked. We wait. Minato smiled. After 13 years they will all calm down, and we can fix the situation when we come home. Because no matter how bad it is I won't abandon my village. Spoken like a true shinobi Minato Jureya praised. I raised you with good morals. Indeed you did sense Minato chuckled. Indeed you did. Chapter 6. Meeting Kaguya. Kanoha. Five years later, it was a bright morning in Kanoha as the birds were singing and the sun was shining upon the Senju compound. Mito Senju was sleeping peacefully next to her husband as she felt a light tap on her cheek. She opened her eyes and saw her ball of sunshine wide awake and gazing at her brightly. He kissed her softly making her smile as she wrapped her arms around him and rubbed his back. Morning Kas and Naruto smiled holding his big tiger plushie. Morning little tiger Mito yawned as she sat up and yawned. The day is the day I finally get to train to be a ninja, he said, jumping up and down in excitement. So Neri-chan is excited about his training now isn't he? She asked softly and he nodded in her neck making her smile. She sat up and put him on her lap as she brushed his hair softly. So Ka-chan, what will you teach me today? He asked and she smiled. Well Naruto, your father, I am going to try and unlock your chakra. She said and he nodded beaming happily. That's the life energy that we used to do isn't it Ka-chan? He asked and she giggled and nodded. Hi, you're a smart boy Sachi. Today I'll tell you what chakra is and how to unlock and use it a bit. Mito smiled. But first your father needs to wake up first. She said looking over at her sleeping husband. Ashirama snored loudly as Naruto jumped off his mom's lap and crawled on top of his dad and poked his cheek. Tusan he whispered. Tusan, wake up, it's time to wake up. Ashirama grumbled as he put his pillow over his head, groaning. Naruto crawled closer as he pushed his little head under the pillow. Dusan Naruto said as Hashirama woke up. Mito laughed as Hashirama pulled off his pillow and sat up. Rubbing his eyes he noticed his six-year-old son sitting on his lap. Chuckling he picked him up and gave him a hug. Talk about a good wake-up call he chuckled. Sorry daddy, but mommy said you must never oversleep especially if you're the Hokage Naruto chuckled. You are more like your mother every day said Hashirama. Mito laughed as she dressed in her clothes and picked Naruto up and went towards the kitchen and prepared breakfast for them. Saying their thanks they dug in as Naruto loved his mother's cooking. Mito was a great cook much better than her husband. The last time Hashirama cooked it wasn't exactly good, edible but not that good. So Naruto, do you have any plans after your training today? Mito asked. I'm going to visit Sasuke, he and I are going to hang out today. Naruto answered. Have you spoken with Makoto first? Yes Kas and I spoke with Auntie Makoto yesterday, and she said yes. Well as long as she says it's okay that's fine, but Fugaku-san doesn't seem to like me that much. Mito put down her fork as her son brought up Fugaku. What did that Ichiha theme do now? She knew that Fugaku had to pull up his ass knowing his arrogance and his superiority complex should be considered a bloodline since he's a master at having a godlike complex. What did that Torag do now? Mito asked. When I went to see Sasuke to hang out with him, Fugaku said that Sasuke was busy and didn't have time for Senju scum. He then kicked me out of the compound and slammed the door in my face. Mito slammed her hands on the table rattling the silverware. Hashirama took notice of his wife's expression. He noticed her mouth was curling into a snarl. He knew Fugaku was a taboo in her house and any mention of him was enough to piss her off. Did he hurt you? Mito said with a soft growl. Naruto gulped seeing his mom this angry. He held his tiger plush in front of his face to hide himself from his mom's angry look. He only pushed me mommy, he said. The sound of a chair being knocked over was heard as Hashirama called out to his wife who was heading towards the door. Mito ignored her husband's shouts for her to come back. The angry Uzumaki matriarch slammed the door shut and was now on her vengeful way to the compound. Mommy is scared, and Naruto shivered. Yes she is Sachi. Let this be a lesson to you and me, never anger your mom. He then took him to the old Senju grounds and sat under a tree as his son sat down cross-legged beside him. Alright son now I'll explain the theory of chakra, listen to everything carefully and ask me whatever you don't understand alright? He asked. Yes father he nodded giving his dad his full attention. Alright Naruto, chakra is the primary source of energy used by shinobi to enhance their skills. It consists of two halves. Spiritual and physical energy alright? Naruto pointed out. Exactly, mmmmmm for a six year old you're quite smart. Hashirama complimented. Spiritual energy consists of our yin chakra, which is the power of the mind and of one's essence. It is developed through amassing knowledge over the years and can be increased through studying, concentrating and meditating, and builds up with experience. 
He explained pausing to see if Naruto understood everything and got a nod in return. Physical energy is the Yang Chakra, which is the power of one's body and the physical essence. It is developed through intense training of the body and can be increased with the increase in one's stamina and other physical traits. Then when the two energies are together chakra is formed. Naruto cheered. Right now they can be used separately too, but the skill and control required to use even one of them separately is beyond what most shinobi can use. I understand dad. Alright then now we will try and unlock your chakra Naruto. He said as Naruto grinned foxily in excitement making him smile. Relax your body and close your eyes. Keep your focus on yourself and nothing else and try to find a warm pull near your tummy alright. Naruto nodded as his father told him and sat like that for half an hour meditating. He tried to connect into his spiritual and physical energy. He knew not many could unlock it on their first try, but Naruto wouldn't give up. He opened his eyes and looked up as Hashirama patted his head. It's alright Naruchan, rarely anyone gets their chakra unlocked on their first try, try it again alright. He said and Naruto smiled back. Oh I gotta head to the office. We can continue the lesson later when I get back or when your mom gets back. Okay two sen I'll stay here and continue to try and unlock my chakra. Alright don't strain yourself and I'll send for Shizun to look after you and then take you to the Achehas to see Sasuke. He kissed his forehead and left for the Hokage's office. Naruto took a small breath and closed his eyes and focused on his inner spirit. The chakra within his body was moving within his chakra network as the white chakra was trying to break through his chakra paths and chakra gates. His blue chakra, or the physical part of his chakra, was fighting against the white chakra which was full of spiritual energy. Wow, talk about an inner spiritual war. However the white chakra broke through the chakra gates and flooded his system, engulfing his body. This chakra feels sentient. Its power feels celestial, Naruto thought. Naruto's mindscape. Unknown to him Naruto was taken within his mindscape. The redhead gasped as he opened his eyes to reveal a dark area with darkness that went for miles. He called out for anyone, but his voice echoed for miles. No one responded as he continued to walk forward into the darkness before him. He felt like he was walking for hours when he was stopped by a bright light. The light shined from above as it revealed a strong oak tree. This was strange to Naruto and approached it with caution. Approaching it, he laid a hand on it as he felt powerful chakra from it. This power it's the same as I felt before Naruto gasped. Where am I? From atop the tree he saw a shining star descending from the sky. Naruto gazed upon it as it landed a few feet away from him. Holding his hand on his forehead to cut down the glare of the light he tried to make it out. The light died down taking the form of a woman in her late thirties. She had long white hair that went down to her feet, her flawless skin was soft as silk, and her eyes white pale white similar to the Hayuga's bloodline. One thing for sure she was beautiful. The woman stepped forward and approached the tree only to find him standing before it. Approaching the boy she knelt down and cupped his head in her hands. Ogoromo? Hamura? She asked. No Indra or Shura. Was this woman confusing him with someone else? Your chakra is the same as my son's, but you are not my son she said confusing him. My name is Naruto Senju Uzumaki, he introduced himself. Uzumaki. Senju. The descendants of Ashura. Pardon me, my lady. I didn't mean to intrude, I somehow ended up here and I have no idea where this is. Naruto apologized. You are in your own mind. She answered. This is your mindscape. How did I end up here? It seems your chakra or something else called you here. But how are you here? Are you part of my mindscape? I have no idea how I am here, but if I were to guess I must have been sealed inside of you, huh? Why would a beautiful lady like you be sealed inside of me? Beautiful? She blushed. This child is something else. Madam are you okay? Naruto asked. Kaguya, huh? My name is Kaguya Utsutsuki. I'm the mother of all chakra. Naruto gasped in shock. He had the mother of chakra itself sealed inside of him. Normally anyone would be prideful and want to use this power to show their superiority over the rest of the shinobi. But Naruto was different, his father used to say, the prideful are powerful, but their arrogance becomes their downfall. Basically speaking no matter how powerful you are, the outcome depends on how you use it. Naruto went down to his knees in respect. Aguya, I am honored to be in your presence. Naruto praised her. Children stand up, do not bow. Well I appreciate the respect you shouldn't treat me like royalty. Said Kaguya. But my parents said those of great importance must be shown the proper respect. You certainly were raised right, Kaguya chuckled. That's because he was raised right by actual parents, and a boy spoke out making them look around. Who's there? Naruto called out. Look behind the tree. Naruto and Kaguya walked towards the darkness behind the tree and soon came to a giant gate. The gate was made of solid chakra steel-like bars with a giant circular seal on the center of the gate, with a kanji tag for seal on it. Naruto wondered where this door even came from. Red chakra formed eyes and a mouth spooking Naruto a bit. Who are you? Naruto asked frighteningly. My jailer has finally come to greet me after six long years. The voice chuckled. Jailer? 
Wait, you're sealed inside of me too. Correct, I'm the Kyubi no Kitsune, the most powerful of the tailed beast Kyubi smirked. Wait, you mean the Kyubi? The mighty nine-tailed fox that can cause massive tsunamis with a swat of its tails and can level mountains. Naruto shouted excitedly. Kyubi sweat dropped at the brat's excitement and the praise that went with it. Was this brat actually praising him for his power and strength, usually humans despise the tail beasts. But this brat was just looking at him with stars in his eyes. You're something else. Normally people would cower in fear of me or try to use me as a weapon. It's terrible to treat a sentient being in such a manner, Naruto shouted, shocking Kaiubi and Kaguya. But how are you inside of me? We were told that you were sealed into the fourth Hokage's kid. Well first I was forced to attack the village after I was ripped out of Kashina Yuzumaki, my previous. I was placed under by that bastard Ichia. I couldn't control myself and almost brought the village to its destruction until the Yandame interfered. Minato Namikas used the Reaper Death Seal to split me in half. My chakra into his eldest Memma and his youngest son, you. Wah? Wow. What did you say? Naruto gasped. Minato and Kashina are your birth parents. But they abandoned you to train your brother Menma to control my chakra. Naruto backed away as he clutched his head at what he was told. No, it couldn't be true his mommy and daddy were Hashirama and Mido. He cried as he looked at the fox. You're lying. My parents are Hashirama and Mido, not the fourth and his wife. He cried. Kit. I was sealed inside of you, I heard the entire thing when I was inside of you. Kaiubi roared. It can't be true Naruto sobbed till he felt Kaguya's arms around him pulling him into a hug. It can't be true, it's a true little one. That bastard and bitch abandoned you as if you meant nothing to them. But thankfully Shinigami took pity on you and gave you a new family. What do you mean? Naruto wanted answers. Kaiubi spent the next hour explaining the whole situation from the ceiling to his abandonment at the hands of his old parents. Taking all that the Kaiubi told him, Naruto felt hatred for his old parents. But now he didn't care anymore, he had new parents, thanks to the death god he carried Mido and Hashirama's blood. They were his real parents, the Yandame, and his wife could go fuck themselves. He thanked the fox for telling him the truth. Thank you for telling me the truth. Naruto thanked the fox. You deserve the truth Kit Kaiubi said with sympathy. And you deserve more, Naruto said he asked Kaguya to take him up to the seal tag. Kaguya floated up to the seal tag as Naruto tore the paper off. Kaiubi gasped, wondering what he was up to. Naruto asked Kaguya how he could undo the seal, since he hasn't begun viewing jutsu training. Kaguya explained as best she found for him to understand. The boy reached out and gripped his belly and turned the seal as the mechanical seal was beginning to unwind. The gates then swung open as the fox took his first step out. Why would you free me? I attacked your village, I killed many of your fellow ninja, and I'm one of the reasons your parents abandoned you. Kaiubi wanted to know why Naruto would free him. Naruto smiled up at him. It's simple Kaiubi-san, you were forced to attack Devoid of your own free will. My so-called birth parents made their choice. I got Hashirama Tusan and Mido Kachan. I don't need the Namikazes in my life. I have never met a human like you, Naruto. I have a feeling we will be good friends. There is nothing I would like more than that. And don't worry I'll find a way to get your chakra back. That's my ninja way believe it Naruto promised giving his classic foxy grin. Well you better get back, I sense a human's presence coming towards you. Kaguya said. Will I ever see you two again? Naruto asked. Anytime you wish to see us, just focus your chakra and come into your mindscape. We'll be here when you come back. Kaguya smiled before kissing his forehead making Naruto blush. The boy smiled with a goofy grin before fading away. Kaguya, unknown to Naruto, left him a little gift. Real world. Send you training grounds. Naruto soon found himself staring into the face of Shizun and Mido smiling down at him. Laughing at the reading, he greeted his mom and aunt Shizun. Well hello there sleepyhead Mido smiled. Enjoy your nap. Mom, I have so much to tell you. I unlocked my chakra and I met the most amazing people in the world. Looking confused, Naruto told them about how he met Kaguya and the Kaiubi. Mido was shocked the Kaiubi told Naruto about his former parents but was happy that he considered her and Hashirama his real parents. She was also shocked when Naruto told her about Kaguya Utsutsuki, the mother of all chakra. With his newfound power Naruto could be the second coming of Kaguya herself. Hachan were you really Kaiubi's first? Yes Naruto I was. Mom, can I let him out? I don't want Kaiubi to be sealed anymore. He's a living sentient being like we are. Who oh Naruto I wish we could, but if a tailed beast is removed from their container, the container dies. Mido answered him grimly. Then I'll find a safer way someday. I promised Kaiubi I would help him regain his powers and let him free. Why would you promise him that? Shizun asked. Because he's my friend, Naruto smiled. Shizun and Mido were shocked beyond belief. Did Naruto just say he and Kaiubi were friends? Wow this boy brings new surprises into their lives each and every day. Well now that you're here. Can we go to the compound now? 
I want to see Sasuke. Ahahaha <laughs> okay let's go Mido smiled as Shizune put Naruto on her back. Naruto loved piggyback rides from his parents, especially from Shizune. Shizune and Mido left the Senju compound with Naruto and headed towards the Ichiha compound. Ichiha compound. Sasuke was panting on the docks as he was once again trying to impress his father with a grand fireball jutsu. But like always the fireball only came out in the form of a small ball of fire. Fugaku sighed in agitation at his youngest son's failure once again in the Ichiha's prized fire technique. Satsuki, Sasuke's twin sister, managed to do it at the age of five, and Itachi did it at the age of six. But his youngest son failed time and time again. Once again you failed Sasuke and wasted my time. Fugaku sighed. If you keep failing like this you'll never be like your twin sister and older brother. Sasuke froze at the mention of his prodigy twin sister and older brother. Every single day of his life since he unlocked his chakra, he was always being compared to his siblings, as if his skills weren't good enough. Seeing that Sasuke wasn't going to respond, Fugaku turned to leave to see how Satsuki was doing. When you learn to master the grand fireball jutsu come find me. Fugaku said coldly. Besides I got to check up on Satsuki, she's going to show me her skills with the fire style phoenix flower. You could learn a lot from her. He finished before leaving. Sasuke grit his teeth and clenched his fists as blood seeped from his fingernails digging into the skin. He had it with being compared to his arrogant twin sister. He screamed as he punched the ground making the ground shake. Itachi felt the shake when walking by the house and turned to look at Sasuke. The young Ichiha went through hand signs and gathered his chakra, he gathered his emotions, his rage, his hatred and unleashed the grand fireball, only they were the wrong hand signs, and he actually unleashed the fire style great devastation move while setting the entire lake ablaze. Itachi was shocked that his brother managed to gather so much chakra to perform Madara's signature move of all things. Rushing over Itachi caught Sasuke before he collapsed. Uu Sasuke's foolish little brother Itachi sighed as he took his brother into the house to tend to him. Unknown to either Ichiha, a figure was watching from the shadows, and he was impressed with young Sasuke's ability to use his move. The man in the shadows was none other than the legendary Madara Ichiha. Chapter 7. Enter Madara Ichiha. The Ichiha compound being overpacked was an understatement. If anyone didn't know better, they would assume the entire village had come for the party. Plus members from every main clan had made it to the gathering. Included in those were Hashirama Senju and his wife and son. It was the birthday of Sasuke and Satsuki Achiha, except the party was mostly focused on Satsuki, the prodigy twin. Yugaku, still being the arrogant Torang who believed power over hard work was beaming with pride at his daughter, his favorite. He quickly noticed that many important figures arrived at the party, hell even the fire daimyo even came. This party will show the most important people in the country what my pride and joy Satsuki can offer them. This will bring the name to far greater heights than this small cesspool of a village Fugaku thought boastfully. The guests all arrived as Makoto greeted them. Mido Senju greeted her with a warm smile, and Naruto gave her a lily from his little garden at home. The Achiha matriarch accepted the flower with gratitude and gave Naruto a small kiss on the cheek. Thank you, Naruto Makoto said. They're welcome auntie, is Sasuke here? Oh why yes he's in the training ground on the east side of our house. But he's been a little down in the dumps today. What? Why would Sasuke miss his own party? Naruto asked. It's strange that a child wouldn't attend his own birthday party, Hashirama stated getting confused. Well fuck I made the party focus more on his daughter than both of them. You know how he is, Mikoto said in irritation. Sasuke kinda outgrown birthday parties and he asked that we stop celebrating it if all Fugaku cares about is Satsuki. Speaking of Fugaku, where is he? Mido asked sweetly. I need to talk to him for a little bit. Knowing what Mido had planned, she pointed to her husband who was speaking with Daimyo. Thanking Makoto with a nod, she walked off to talk to Fugaku about a certain incident a few days ago. Fugaku was chatting arrogantly, spouting off about the might of the clan and the skills of his two eldest children. He went into full detail about Itachi mostly, but then went into detail of his daughter's prodigal skills. I can assure you Daimyo-sama, Satsuki and Itachi are the best of their generation. Fugaku spoke pridefully. I know Itachi and his skills well, especially with his shinobi record. Daimyo chuckled. But Satsuki, well I'll have to wait and see, Fugaku. Mido shouted, getting everyone's attention. What is Mido-chan? Fugaku asked. His only response was a punch across the face shocking and horrifying everyone. Fugaku fumbled back before he was grabbed by the hair and his face was slammed repeatedly into the hardwood table. His face was becoming bruised and swelled up from the impact. She then kicked him into the wall before her hands wrapped around his neck. If you ever lay a hand on my son again, I'll make sure when I'm done with you, the only way anyone will find your remains will be with a microscope. She seethed. Fugaku gagged and struggled to breathe as he tried to pry her hands off. Itachi soon came to his father's rescue telling Mido that it wasn't worth it. His humiliation in front of everyone was punishable enough. 
Nido glared at the patriarch but released her grip, dropping him to the floor as he tried to gasp for air. You're lucky I appreciate and respect Itachi. Nido snarled before walking away. Itachi sighed you'll be the death of this clan father. If your influence spreads to the rest of the clan, then I fear for its future. The Chiha compound training ground, the sound of a kunai flying through the air could be heard as the kunai pierced into the trunk of a tree, missing the target paper attached to it. Sasuke groaned in frustration that he missed again, but still he wouldn't give up. Grabbing a few more shuriken and kunai, he took a deep red breath before tossing and flinging them towards the target. He managed to get eight tenths this time which brought a smile to his face. Happy birthday Sasuke Naruto called out happily. Unlike most guests, he chose to go and talk to the forgotten Ichiha first. Right behind him followed Kiba. Happy birthday Sasuke, I see you practicing your kunai and shuriken throwing. Keep it up and you'll be as good as Itachi. Kiba said, giving Sasuke a thumbs up. Thanks guys and it's good to see you, especially Senju Sasuke. Naruto chuckled, giving his goofy grin that everyone seems to like. Your mom told us you were out here training instead of partying. I mean it is your birthday. Sasuke sighed, why bother going to a party when all people care about is my prodigy older twin sister. Besides, parties aren't really my thing. What? Kiba asked, confused. But you always liked parties dude. Yeah I know but like I said it's always about my sister Itachi. It's never about me. Sasuke replied by picking up his kunai and shuriken. Look, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Tell mom that it'll be okay, I just need time to myself. Well if you think that's best Sasuke we respect your wishes said Kiba. Naruto nodded his head in agreement. Kiba is right, we we'll let you get back to practicing. After they left, Sasuke headed into the middle of the training ground and plopped down under a tree with a prime view of the clouds above him. A shadow was watching from the roof of the compound. Masking his chakras so no one could detect him, he jumped off the roof and landed in front of Sasuke. Sasuke, noticing the figure, jumped up and got into the interceptor to jutsu style. Calm yourself young. I am not here to fight you or to harm you. The man spoke calmly, showing no hostility in his voice. Who are you then? And how did you get here? Sasuke asked demanding answers. I am merely a ghost of the Achiha clan. He said sternly but strongly. I am an old relic of the clan from the time of the clan wars. I was known as the most powerful Achiha and Sharingan master since Hashirama's time. Sasuke lowered his defense slightly as he looked at the man before him. There was only one Achiha that was strong enough to rival Hashirama and was given the title of Sharingan master. But this man couldn't possibly be him, Madara Achiha died when he fought Hashirama in the Valley of End. Are you claiming to be Madara Achiha? Sasuke scoffed. Everyone knows Madara died by Hashirama's hand. You actually believed what those Senju worshippers wrote in the history books. Fool Hashirama spared my life and sentenced me to exile for at least 25 years. He concocted a fable telling everyone that he killed me in the Valley of End, which apparently the villagers believed. You honestly expect me to believe you? Sasuke yelled. If you really are Madara Echeha, then you would be old and wrinkly by now. Madara laughed in a cold-like way, you got a smart mouth and bravery I'll give you that. You remind me of when I was your age. You think you scare me, huh Mido Senju is scarier than you could ever be. Sasuke taunted. Mido? How would you know that? Madara asked. She and Hashirama-sama were brought back to life by the Shinigami. Hashirama? Is it alive? Madara gasped. Yes and they are attending my twin's birthday party right now, your twin. Wouldn't that make it your birthday? Yeah, but the only ones who care are Itachi-san, Kachan, and my two best friends Naruto Senju and Kiba and Yuzuka. Naruto there are still Senjus left around. Yeah as Sasuke said before shaking his head. Wait what am I telling you for? You're an intruder and you must be dealt with. Perhaps you would like proof to prove that I am who I say I am. Any Ichiha can masquerade as Madara Sasuke scoffed again. Perhaps this will convince you. Madara said activating his eternal Manjiku Sharingan. Staring into three legendary eyes of the legendary shinobi was more than enough proof since Madara himself was the only one in history to awaken the eternal Manjiku Sharingan, aside from Indra, their ancestor. Dropping his weapon, the young Ichiha got to his knees and showed Madara the utmost respect. Apologizes Madara-sama for my disrespect. Sasuke pleaded. You don't need to kneel a child. Although I appreciate the respect, the only people I allow to bow before me are my enemies who cower at my feet. Though of course Madara Sama Sasuke shivered at the man's coldness. Now then Sasuke right. I have heard quite a deal about you from me, and I have grown ashamed at what kind of man your father had become. It sickens me that he prides himself on power alone and the strength that comes with hard work and relying on your comrades. Father just. Sasuke stuttered trying to get the words to come out. He. Madara shouted. The clan has truly fallen if this is what the future generation will be like. We Ichiha are similar to the Yuzumaki clan. We put family first above all else. Apparently from what you told me most of the clan and your father don't value you as they do your sister. 
Ladara sensed a chakra signature coming towards them. Enjoy the party, I have a plan that will set you free from what your father has planned for you. The elder Ichiha stood banished in a shunshin as Itsuki came rushing out. Sasuke turned to see his sister coming towards him, he didn't have time to deal with her superiority complex. Sasuke Baka, everyone is here. It's time to open our presents. Behind her stood her two friends and two civilians waiting impatiently. Satsuki had an annoyed look on her face, no doubt mad at her and Ikki for taking up so much time. The Chiha compound west area. Sasuke sighed and walked with them. When they arrived at the west side of the house where the party was in full swing, Sasuke stood with Naruto and Kiba. He saw his family walk out and he rushed over struggling to catch up to them in the waves of people. He forced his way to the front, he heard a few calls of happy birthdays to his sister and many compliments. He however got none. It definitely bothered him, but he'd gotten pretty used to it. He noted that his father, mother, sister, and big brother stood in front next to the table. On it were many large boxes. No doubt for the Satsuki. He hadn't gotten any presents from the clan minus his mother, brother, Naruto, Kiba, and Lord and Lady Senju. But often his father got him at least one gift, even though it was a last-minute gift. Everyone quiets down. Higaku said to calm the crowd. We're all gathered here today to celebrate the fifth birthday of my twins. For the first presents, I'd like to give Satsuki these. He said while pushing the presents forward. As Satsuki opened them, a big smile appeared on her face. Oh, so cool. Satsuki yelled out. She first pulled out a new set of equipment which were mostly kunai and other stuff. She reached out and pulled out a brand new ceiling kit. No doubt one that cost a fortune. Her father spared no expense on his daughter. All ceiling is an expensive art, your mother and I saved up and decided to buy these for you. Mikoto remarked. With a little help from Mito-chan. Tsutsuki spent a while marveling at the gifts before everyone dispersed, leaving Sasuke alone again. It seemed they really only wanted to gather the crowd's attention for the big surprise presents. Before he could move to find more people, he felt a large hand grab his head and ruffle his hair. You didn't think I forgot about you. He turned around to see his mom grinning down at him. Here you go sweetie. He tossed a large parcel to Sasuke. Getting excited he opened the parcel to reveal a long katana shine to Amir Sheen. The handle was carved into a dragon head shape with emeralds for the eyes. The sword belonged to Izuna Cheha, Madara's brother. Originally Fugaku was going to give it to his son Itachi, but his eldest turned it down. Then he wanted Satsuki to have it, but Mikoto being the descendant of Izuna, had full authority over the possession of the sword and declared it would go to Sasuke. Thank you Kasan. Sasuke thanked her. I'll take good care of Izuna Jiji's sword. He was then greeted by a few people along the way. He saw the Senju family and Naruto. Hashirama gave him a scroll containing Madara's basic fire-based level Zeta Air rank. He took the scroll and thanked the Hokage many times. Hashirama chuckled, telling him it was no problem. Next was Naruto who gave Sasuke a raven pendant with the kanji for hope on it. This pendant will remind you that no matter what there is always hope Naruto smiled. Thank you, Naruto Sasuke replied. Yugaku sensed his youngest looking at him before the boy looked away from him. He could see that his youngest was good friends with the Senju clan and the Hokage himself. This could work to his advantage, especially since Naruto is the heir to the Senju and Uzumaki clan. He could probably have an alliance with Hashirama, perhaps even a marriage contract. Hey tu san Sasuke called out hesitantly. I was wondering when we could talk about my training. Yugaku sighed at this. Might as well make it as fast as possible. His son asked him many times in the past, so it was best to let him know how important his sister's training was. Sasuke, I've decided to push back your training till your graduation. Your sister had just started working on the Meteor Fireball Jutsu, which is a powerful and dangerous technique. She's also close to controlling it. I'm sure you remember the incident a week ago. So to prevent it from happening again she needs constant supervision, which the elders will be teaching her. And with me being busy with clan matters and village politics getting tense and I can't even help your sister, let alone you. Fugaku felt all the reasons were justified. Besides, it wasn't like Sasuke would actually wait till graduation. He figured that if he gave his son a date a long way off, he could surprise him by starting it earlier than he promised. Fugaku didn't even have time to gauge Sasuke's reaction, which was one of devastation, before a voice rang out in the room and it filled with a familiar smell of killer intent. I'll train him if you or the clan can't find the damn time to train him. Stepping into the room was Madara Che. Unbeknownst to Fugaku, Sasuke was praising Kami at the chance to train, if he couldn't with his father, then Madara himself was the next best thing. Madara. Hashirama said, making everyone gasp. The Ichiha clan was in shocked silence, especially Fugaku who was sweating in the presence of the greatest Ichiha to ever live. Madara stood there in all his glory dressed in his clan war's armor. His appearance looked as if he hadn't aged a day. His attitude and expression was still as cold as his heart. 
It's been a long time Hashirama, so you're finally back from exile. Exile? Nito asked. I thought you killed him. No, that was a lie Hashirama fed the village to spare me the embarrassment. Said Madara. Hashirama spared my life and exiled me from the land of fire to live out my days for 25 years. Now here I am and I come home to see my clan at its lowest. Our clan has been in the best shape for years. Figaku argued. In your eyes maybe, but your treatment of family proves otherwise. Madara shouted, shutting him up. The clan is a clan based off of our sister clan the Yuzumaki. We put family first, that means equality and everything. Not that I am happy to see you Madara. But what brings you here? Hashirama asked again. I came across Asuke and he told me about the state of the clan and how his childhood went. I'm very ashamed of my clan right now. So ashamed I can't believe I'm even related to them Madara sneered, shaming the clan and its members. Now as for what I said before I've come to take Sasuke on as my apprentice. Asps were hurt among them. Being a student or apprentice of Madara Ichiha was an honor in itself. Many from the clan tried many times in the past begging Madara to teach them, but none impressed him enough. But here the youngest heir of the clan head got the attention of him which made many in the clan jealous especially Satsuki who was seething. Madara-sama surely my daughter who is a prodigy would be a better choice. Fugaku asked him. Skill alone isn't enough in the field of shinobi. A true shinobi understands and accepts camaraderie. They hold on to what it means to be human. A shinobi puts his comrades, family, and village first. But a shinobi puts his family first above all else no matter what. You raised your daughter to believe that power alone and having the Sharingan makes them superior, that logic there makes me sick. Madara gritted his teeth. But Sasuke can barely even perform the fireball. Fugaku stated harshly. I'm telling you he wouldn't be worth your time Madara-sama. I'll be the judge of that Madara hissed. I chose Sasuke because he reminds me of myself. Plus he has a close friendship with Hashirama's kid. He doesn't despise the Senju clan like the clan does now. Sasuke has potential and I look forward to bringing that to the end of the story. Now go back to doing what you do best, pampering your spoiled daughter. Yugaku, not saying anything else, backed off and headed back to socialize with the higher class of people. Sasuke thanked Madara for standing up for him. Madara told him that it was no problem at all. You don't need to thank me, Sasuke. Madara said. Your father and the clan needed a wake-up call. Madara said to Hashirama. Madara noticed Hashirama walking towards him. He noticed that the Senju was getting pretty tense at his reveal. They reached out his hand to him offering him a handshake. He reached out and took the Hokage's hand only to receive the punch to his stomach. Madara grunted before Hashirama hugged him close. You teen bastard. You don't know how much I missed you. Hashirama cried. Madara sweat dropped and groaned cut off the waterworks you send you crybaby and why did you punch me? That was for not returning back when I was first alive and not coming to me when you entered the village today. Hashirama shouted. Madara sighed and face palmed. I knew you would react like this. Which is why I didn't reveal myself to you before. The second reason I didn't come back in the past was because you were dead and Tabarama was the second Hokage. Plus with the history between him and me, I doubt he would have wanted to see me. But all that matters is you're here now and we have much to catch up on, Hashirama smiled. Indeed we do and I look forward to your tea meetings like we used to. Madara smirked. So how's Hokage life treating you? Now that you've been brought back to life. Well I hope you like long stories because this one you're going to love. Ooh, oh I can hardly wait to hear it. After the party was over and everyone dispersed, Sasuke took his gifts to his bedroom and was looking forward to training with Madara Cha. Across from his room was Satsuki who was seething in jealousy and hate that Madara chose her lame, stupid, and talentless brother over her. She swore she would prove to Madara that she would be a worthy student of his caliber. Meanwhile at the Hokage's office Madara, Hashirama, and Mito all met for tea, and Hashirama started his explanation of what happened and why he and his wife were brought back to life. After his explanation Madara's facial expression showed a look of rage and anger. Madara crushed his teacup not minding the bleeding and glass that cut into his hand. When will they be back to the village? Madara enraged. You'll see them soon enough as the cage summit is coming up next week. I would like you to join me and Mito at the summit. I'll be glad to tag along, but I promise I won't leave Minato and Kishina unscathed, especially your granddaughter. I wouldn't expect you to, Hashirama sighed. Chapter 8. Training and Judgment of the Yuzumaki Clan. Mommy. Daddy. A hyper five-year-old blonde-haired boy with blue eyes shouted, bouncing up and down on her feet happily. Did you see that? I did the tree climbing exercise. We saw Menma. It was really great. Kishina praised and kissed her son on the forehead. Indeed Menma-sama his co-sensei smiled. You've managed to complete the tree climbing and water walking exercise in record time. You might become level by the time you start the academy in Kanohe next year. The woman was beautiful. 
She had a slender, a little muscular feminine build, soft skin, brown eyes, golden blonde hair with strands that framed both sides of her face. She wore a black sheer lace tank top and short red shorts. She had a dark Rex band on her left wrist and black standard shinobi sandals on her feet. Her name was Minako Namikaze, Minato's cousin. Menma gave a big smile to his aunt and said, thanks auntie, I'll become stronger and one day become as powerful as dad. He suddenly felt a hand on top of his head. The boy looked up and smiled at the person whose hand was ruffling his hair. It was a tall man who had fair skin, bright blue eyes, and spiky blonde hair. He was in a standard battle uniform with two bands each on both of his sleeves, a flak jacket, sandals but no forehead protector. He had a long-sleeved long crimson red coat with an amicus symbol on the back over his normal outfit. This man was Hiroku Namikaze, his great-grandfather on his father's side, as well as the general of the Fire Daimyo's army. I'm proud of you, my little Flash Hiroku said, smiling brightly. Soon you'll be a baddest ninja like your old granddad. Sorry to say this grandpa and not to insult you. But you are getting along in years. Have you ever thought of retiring? Minato jokes. Hiroku took it with a scoff. Honest to youngsters these days he thought. You would think his grandson would see that despite the old man's age, he was still the greatest general of the modern day in a fire country. The old general began to give his prideful grandson a few words about respect which Minato apologized immediately. He chuckled, holding up his hands as his grandpa kept going with his rambling. Ishina rolled her eyes at this but said nothing. She loved the old man for all he had done for them after they left the village and arrived at the capital. Hiroku understood the entire situation and did everything he could to ensure the prophecy came to fruition. He also agreed with them when he was told they left Naruto back in the village. In her eyes Hiroku was more understanding of the situation than Hiruzen. He also agreed that he would be the one to teach Naruto the skills needed to lead the Namika's clan side branch, since the last one, Minato's uncle, died yesterday. The plan was foolproof as Kashina thought it would allow Naruto to feel part of something greater. He would be able to help his brother save the world, but also become the new guardian of the clan. Now to some they would just claim that Naruto will be like his Ashihai Uga and become nothing more than a servant. But to her it was having Naruto show loyalty to his family. Not to mention Minako had a daughter just around Naruto's age, and it was agreed that Naruto and Minako's daughter Miku would marry since Miku and Naruto would rule the side branch together. She also managed to set up an arranged marriage for Naruto with Mila, the niece of the leader of Natashiko. Naruto wouldn't have to worry about finding love. He would have everything he could ever want once he's free from the new Hokage's influence. Anyway hearing enough of their bickering she silenced both men. Alright you two enough of your bickering. Kishina shouted, making them look at her. We need to start training Menma in the family shinobi arts. Yes, what am I going to learn? Menma asked excitedly. Sealing, dad's Hiroshin or grandpa's signature lighting style. Ah had chip off the old block Hiroku chuckled. He's just like his grandpa. He better not end up smoking and drinking like you. Kishina groaned. I'm also gonna be the next Hokage. The boy pumped his fist in the air smiling brightly. I'm going to challenge that new Hokage and take that hat in honor of Namikaze. And I'll make them pay for taking Naruto from us. Ishina grinned while pointing a finger at her husband and grandfather-in-law. See, boys. Menma is going to be like his mother. Moving on to her son she knelt down in front of him and put hands on his shoulders. To be Hokage was my dream. I was going to prove to the leaf that even an outsider can accomplish anything. However my dream was taken from me by your father. She shot a glare at her husband, making the current Hokage nervous. But I'm sure you'll achieve that dream for me. You'll teach that poser Hokage not to mess with his betters, Sanadi said arrogantly. You're the prophecy child Menma, and it's your duty to ensure the world lives through the disaster that is yet to come. Said Jiraiya. Minato agreed and joined the three-way hug between his wife and son. Jiraiya and Sanadi joined in. Smiling, they held the prophecy child close. They looked like a good example for a perfect and happy family. They seemed to push the image of a sad red-haired boy to the back of their minds. Holding on to the memory of the boy they left behind was too harmful to their psyche and their lifestyle right now, and Menma needed their full attention. Mama, do you think Naruto will like me? Menma asked. Oh Menma honey don't think like that. Of course your little brother will like you. Kishina smiled. It's going to be your job to look out for him once we get back to the village. Remember he won't be as strong as you, so go easy on him when he begins his training. He might be jealous and angry at first, but he will soon come to love you. Your mother is the right son. Minato smiled. Naruto will come to understand the situation once we explain it to him. What if my brother won't listen and outright hates us? Menma asked. Then we will do what we can to lessen that hate and try to be there for him as best we can Kishina answered. You're right I'm the child of prophecy the boy boasted. And I'm an amicus, Senju, and an Yuzumaki. Naruto will come crawling back to us when he witnesses his amazing shinobi skill. I'll show my brother where he belongs. 
Menma was an arrogant little brat, boasting about his clan and his status. He thinks that his status will get him far in life. Well he will one day come to realize that status and name alone won't be enough on the battlefield. In fact it's people like him who end up getting killed first in battle. The arrogant always meet their end earlier in their lives. As for Naruto, Menma has no idea exactly what kind of power his little brother had. Especially with the power the Shinigami bestowed upon Naruto. Menma and his family would soon learn what happens when you irritate a goddess who spared your life. Ooh oh yes they will learn. All right, now that you got the hand of some of the basic exercises. I think it's time we move on with calling upon the fox's chakra. Jiraiya said, getting an excited reaction from his godson. I'll also be here to contain you with my chains if you lose control, Kishina warned him. Acha okay I'm ready for this Menma grinned. Back in Konoha, Naruto was meditating trying to learn proper chakra control as instructed by his father and uncle Madara. Sasuke was sitting beside him doing the same thing though he was a bit of a faster learner than Naruto was. However Naruto having godlike chakra made it tougher for him to have full control over it. I mean when you have the king of the tailed beasts and the mother of all chakra sealed inside of you, then taming that kind of raw power will require a lot of time, effort, and above all control. Alright that's enough mediation for now. Let's move on to your skills in battle. Madara said coldly. Hashirama told me that you Naruto hold two beings of holy sentience within you. So I want you to try and unlock some of the energy in battle. How uncle? Naruto asked. To bring out such energy you need to focus on the chakra itself and fluctuate it throughout your body like normal chakra. He explained. You can also unlock this power through rage, when you're about to die, or in desperation. Madara, still a boy, Hashirama scolded him. Unlocking a power such as this at an early age could kill him. I suggest a spar. Very well Hashirama, Sasuke. Hi Madara-sensei. Sasuke said quickly. You will test Naruto's skills. Hi Sasuke replied as he faced Naruto. Both boys gave the sign of camaraderie and got into the tojutsu stance. They charged each other as Sasuke roundhouse kicked Naruto only for the red head to block it with his left elbow. Naruto grabbed hold of Sasuke's leg and prepared himself to toss Sasuke overhead. The boy grunted as the boy sent him flying overhead. Sasuke managed to land on his feet as he skidded back a few inches. The two boys delivered kick after kick, punch after punch, etc etc. They were equal in speed and strength, but Naruto was getting the upper hand which made Sasuke a little angry. The two suddenly felt each other's punches as they skidded back from each other panting. Naruto settled back into the Senju fighting stance as Sasuke took back to his fighting stance. Giving them the signal Sasuke made the first move. He ran toward Naruto to punch him, but he simply moved away from him and slammed Sasuke against the ground. Sasuke quickly pushed himself on all fours and kicked his left leg behind him. A huff told him he had hit the target. He jumped to his feet and noticed that his friend had already recovered from his attack. Naruto then attacked him, throwing some fast punches that Sasuke either blocked or dodged. He never stopped. Sasuke blocked his buddy's hard punches and sent three back and a knee to his gut that forced him to his knees. Using this opportunity, he kicked him in the side, sending Naruto rolling a few feet from his previous spot. Not. Bad. Naruto panted. You're. Not. Bad. Sasuke replied panting heavily. Well done, both of you. I've seen some improvement. Sasuke you're getting better with the tojutsu style, but you still leave yourself wide open at times. You underestimate your opponent too much. Naruto you really are good with the senju fighting style. But like Sasuke you underestimated him. Sorry, the boys apologized. It's fine, like I said there is room for improvement. Madara sighed. Now let's take a break from lunch, and after that I was 500 push-ups, 300 sit-ups, and about 20 laps around the village. What? The boys shouted you're a slave driver. Hey, the world of shinobi isn't all fun and games Madara scolded. The bastard emo is right, Naruto Kurama said in Naruto's head. The shinobi world is a dangerous place. The path of a shinobi is serious, you have to make sure that you're prepared for what lies ahead. And we shall always be there to back you up when you need us the most. Said Kaguya. Thanks guys, Naruto said to himself. The boys groaned as their bodies ached. The elder Ichiha was the roughest and cold-souled person on earth. Hell, even Arachimaru or Anko was this rough when they trained the boys a few days ago. But they were glad to get a break since they trained at 8am in the morning. Settling down with Hashirama and Madara they started to eat their lunch. Hey Tusan, where is Kasan? Naruto asked. Oh your mother had to deal with something. It's nothing you should worry yourself about. Hashirama chuckled. Mido-chan I hope you know what you're doing. But Mido Yuzumaki Senju. Mido was drawing a large seal upon the floor of the Senju clan dojo. It was an old seal that was collecting dust in the Yuzumaki Senju library until Mido herself came upon it. According to the Yuzumaki records it was a summoning seal, but unlike the summing techniques for summoning animals. This one was for summoning the Yuzumaki clan ancestors. 
Every single clan head since the founding of the clan would be summoned before her. Carefully drawing the symbols not wanting to screw up. Nido was anxious to speak to her ancestors about a serious matter that involved the sacred oath of the Uzumaki. Upon finishing it Nido knelt in the center of the seal itself and cut her palm. The blade cut a straight line across her hand as she gripped her fist and let the blood seep out and drop onto the center circle between her legs. Nido Uzumaki Senju humbly asks for the sacred wisdom of the Uzumaki that came before me. I seek their help about a serious crime regarding the sacred oath of the Uzumaki clan. I call upon the former clan heads and the founder herself. Before her stood twelve Uzumakis, five men and seven women. Many of the men were old due to their longevity, but only two were young around the age of at least thirty years old. The women on the hand were quite young due to them dying young in their lifetime. However only two of the seven women were old around the age Mido herself was when she first died. The founder herself was a woman of the age of 23, she had short red hair and a feminine slender figure. She wore clan war armor with twin swords strapped over her back. This woman was Anita Uzumaki and founder of the Uzumaki clan. The ancestors appeared in spirit form. Nido we the ancestors of the clan hear your summons and appear before you. Anita proclaimed. You say that a crime was committed against the clan? An elderly man asked. Yes, Nido said grimly. As you know Shinigami-sama brought back myself and Hashirama to the land of the living. We can see that since you've regained your youth. One of the younger male Yuzumaki spirits replied. I am here to bring forth the crimes Kashina Yuzumaki and Sanadi Senju have. Nido said in a harsh tone. Kashina has abandoned her youngest son in favor of a prophecy. What? The spirits reacted. What proof do you have? One of the young female Yuzumaki spirits asked. This is a very serious allegation. Mido explained that the Shinigami told her and Hashirama. Along with what Hiruzen told them. To say the spirits weren't happy was an understatement. No, they were more than just unhappy, they were furious. Each former clan head showed their disgust and disappointment. But the founder herself showed a whole different level of anger. I see truth in your words, and we the spirits of the clan shall decide the fate of the criminals. Anita sneered. That's all I ask, Nido said calmly. After a few minutes the spirits were deliberating over what the punishment should be. After all, the punishment must match the severity of the crime. After much consideration they finally agreed on a punishment. It was decided that Kashina and Tsunade would suffer the only punishment that would make even the toughest Yuzumaki break. The spirits and I have decided to punish Kashina and Swan with punishment number 13. Mido gasped since punishment number 13 was only for those that truly have broken the sacred oath that every Uzumaki takes when they turn seven years old. But it was up to the spirits and the founder of the Uzumaki to decide the person's fate. Kashina and Sanadi are henceforth stripped of their Uzumaki name. Their Uzumaki blood will become dormant and their reproductive organs shall and will forever become barren. They shall no longer be allowed to bring new life into the world. Anita shouted. May Kami hear our declaration and carry out the will of the ancestors. Somewhere in the fire capital Kashina and Sanadi without their knowledge would be feeling quite a strange feeling in their lower bodies and their chakra reserves. Kashina especially will feel the most different since not only will she not be able to reproduce, but her chakra chains will be taken from her as well. The punishment was carried out and Mido thanked her ancestors for what they've done. One of the male Uzumaki spirits told Mido that because of their removal from the Uzumaki clan, clan head status soon fell upon her shoulders. Her son Naruto would also inherit the title of Lord Uzumaki when he reaches the status of or when he turns 16. Nido bowed her head in thanks as the ancestors felt their time in the mortal world fading. They wished her luck as the seal lost his powers and the Uzumaki spirits returned to the afterlife. Getting up and dusting herself she decided to head out to check on her son and his training. She hoped that Madara didn't train him too hard. Because knowing Madara from her youth she knew what a slave driver he was. Chapter 9. Namika's clan Mido strikes back. The Namika's clan gathered in the main building of the compound. The chamber was a round shape room with each clan member seated according to their ranking within the clan. Unlike the Uzumaki clan the Namika's settle clan matters differently. Each part of the clan, such as the civilian, shinobi, and elders sectors, deal with matters based on their rank, but the clan head has the final say in any matter they decide. The chamber itself was now filled with exactly 350 Namika's. The center table in the room with three seats was for the clan head, the clan head's wife, and clan heir. The doors opened to reveal Manu Namikas, the clan head of the Namikas with Minato and Kashina following him behind. The clan stood up in respect as proper protocol. Manu was Minato's uncle on his father's side as the short blonde-haired man took his seat with Minato on his left and Kashina on his right. My fellow clansmen today are here to discuss a few things that need to come to light. However I have something to do first. For the first clan matter I must address. I have decided to step down as clan head of the Namikas. Manu said, getting a reaction from the clan. Manu you led our clan to greatness these past 30 years. One of them yelled. 
We can't lose you another shouted. He raised his hands to silence them. My fellow friends and shinobi. I have led the clan for a good three decades, but now it's time for someone new to take over. Therefore I name Minato Namikas as my successor. The clan including Minato himself was shocked in disbelief. The Namikazes knew about Minato's exploits in the Third Great War and his victory over the Ninetales Kaiubi. At first they believed that Minato was still too young, but apparently that changed when he started gaining the favor of the Fire Daimyo. Minato was nervous but at the same time excited. He believed that with his status as Lord Namikaz, he would have some political power needed to get his son back. Kashina was also the same way. She congratulated her husband as Minato took his place in the center. My fellow clansmen, my wife and I are honored. Minato said. As the new head of the Namikas clan I promise you that I will do everything in my power to ensure the dignity and honor and preservation of the clan. The clan roared in applause as they praised Minato. Now like my uncle said there is a matter that I must bring to the clan. It involves my son Namikas Uzumaki Naruto. Whispers and murmurs came from the clan. They've never met this Naruto kid, but they have heard he was the youngest child of Minato. They only wondered why their new clan head would bring him up. As you all know, Kaiubi attacked Konoha. The clansmen all nodded and acknowledged the incident. Well after the Kaiubi attack my wife and I sealed and split the fox into our two sons Menma and Naruto. Menma received the chakra and Naruto received the soul. Well after the attack the toads came to us about a prophecy regarding one of my sons. We believed it was Menma due to him being the Kaiubi, and so we decided for the safety of our children, we would take Menma with us and leave Naruto to be protected in the village. Minato-sama wouldn't have been safer for your youngest to be raised along with Menma. We could have had the aid branch look after him. Since the youngest of the pair of twins always goes to the side branch. Said one of the Namika civilians. We had considered that, but the village needed time to rebuild. So by leaving Naruto there and having his status announced our village would be safe. Kishina answered the civilian. So why are you bringing this up to us? One of the elders asked. The reason being is that Naruto has been adopted into another clan. Minato said grimly. Which clan would that be? The Senju and Yuzumaki clan. Minato said. But Minato is part of the Senju clan aren't you? Since Lady Tsunade is your mother. A woman asked. Yes but I was born from a one night stand not through legal marriage, meaning I'm an illegitimate child. But you're still a Senju. Another Namikaze argued. Yes but apparently the Senju clan lordship was given to the new Hokage of the Leaf, which apparently is a Senju as well. The same Senju who adopted my son. This man robbed Kishina and myself of our youngest child. What were your plans for the child? An elderly woman asked. Naruto was to be trained to become head of the Namikaze side branch. Be taught the minor ninjutsu required by clan law to protect the main branch. He will also be taught few ninjutsu by Kishina since he's in Yuzumaki. Once fully trained he will be married to Minako's daughter Miku. Why the Namika's side branch wouldn't Naruto be the Yuzumaki heir? The elderly woman asked again. Since Menma is the Namika's heir. Kishina and I originally were going to name Naruto the Yuzumaki heir. But we decided Menma needed more protection. So we named Menma the Yuzumaki heir as well. So basically you're leaving Naruto with nothing more than enslavement. She said acidly. Watch your tongue, old woman. Manu seed. The side branch does not question the main branch. I ask you to leave the boy alone. The woman shot back. The woman is Namika's Kushi, one of the oldest but respected members of the clan. I may be a side branch elder, but I speak for the entirety of the clan that the poor deserve better than what we endure which is almost similar to the high Ugas. You're exaggerating, Kushi Bach and Minato said to his grandmother. It's the law of the clan any main branch member who has twins one of them must be sent to the side branch. Manu said with finality in his tone. With all due respect Kushi Sama Kishina said with a bit of respect combined with anger in her voice. Naruto is my child and we decided this will be good for Naruto. He will be able to help Menma fulfill the prophecy and after that he can do what he wishes. But for now Naruto is obligated to follow what Minato and I have set for him. Well it seems Kami Sam's thought is different by giving Naruto a different path. You know as well as I do Kashina that going against Kami doesn't end well with anyone. One of the elders seated right across from her table scoffed. Please Kushi your superstition. Kushi narrowed her eyes and replied with a sharp tone, don't assume anything about me. You know that tempting Kami is dangerous. Or do I need to remind everyone of our clan's home destruction in the first shinobi war? That reminder still haunts the oldest members of the clan, as they remembered how the Namika's clan fell at the hands of the Yuzumaki clan, after the clan head at the time attempted to take the princess of Yuzu by force, due to his lust for her. The princess was raped and killed, and the Yuzumaki clan retaliated, and they and the Senju clan raided the land of wind and destroyed the small village, wiping out most of the clan. They went from over 460 Namika's members to a measly 50 members, 10 men and 40 women. They managed to rebuild their numbers though, and they got their revenge when they heard Yuzushi Agakur fell. 
The Namikas growled before answering back don't bring that up. You know that memory was a blemish on the clan's prestige. Fushi replied just as strongly that's precisely my point. Naruto was given a second chance for a better life. So I say we leave him alone. Minato slammed his hand on the table, surprising everyone. Silence. He yelled. I have. Decided on what must be done with Naruto. His stern gaze looked at everyone in the room as they all stayed silent. Fushi waited as part of her knows that whatever decision the clan head makes cannot be challenged. She also knows that Manu absolutely despises disobedience within the clan and will stop at nothing to improve the clan's reputation. She sincerely hoped that Minato would give his little boy a chance. Naruto. She'll be brought back into the clan. Minato decided. Also due to his heritage from my wife and my mother, he will most likely inherit the Mokuten or even the Chakra Chains, since Menma has too much Chakra to activate them due to his condition. So I declare to put Naruto into the Kra to integrate the Mokuten bloodline into the Namika's clan. The applause went around the room, although Haruka sighed wearily and visibly looked her age. I was afraid this would be the verdict. I can only hope the Kami will intervene. Uo she didn't ever realize how right she was. Unknown to her Kami or should I say the Uzumaki clan heads and founders already took care of the punishment. He will no longer be allowed to carry the Senju name, since he will be a full Namikaze. Kishina added. Gushi mentally scoffed, typically. I was hoping the clan would change their ways. But it seems that was all it was wishful thinking. Everyone nodded and left the room one by one. After everyone left only Kushi, Kishina, Minato and many were left inside. Is there reason for you to stay with your mother? Manu asked curiously. Kushi stared at them all, making them all nervous. Just because she was old didn't mean she was powerless, both diplomatically and in combat. While she would be able to defeat Manu and Kishina, Minato was another matter. She could still damage them both physically and by reputation. However instead of answering she simply stood up and slowly walked away making the final three visibly relaxed. I've never thought that I would see the clan my ancestors worked so hard to create fall to this level. To think that you would only take back your son for only enslavement and breeding material. The Namika's clan I once knew is dead. I'm ashamed of what's left. Minato and Kashina didn't show it, but they flinched inside. I'm sorry grandma, but it was necessary, it will all work out you'll see. Minato tried to apologize. So am I, she said, confusing them. To think you were my grandchild Minato. The little boy who would promise me to make me proud of him. You're not that boy. No more I hereby disown you as my grandchild. My son, your father, bless his soul, would be ashamed of you Minato. Her declaration made Minato and his uncle flinch as they felt a slight pang of hurt in their chest. Their expression didn't show it, but the pain they felt inside from her words couldn't be hidden. Once outside Kushi moved to the gardens and watched a fish swim in a pond. They were all gliding along the water creating a dance that was peaceful in the old woman's mind. How the mighty have fallen she said to herself. Suddenly a feeling was blowing in the wind as a shadowy figure dropped from the roof of the compound. This man was a tall man with short brown hair dressed in anbu gear. Except this anbu gear was far different, the uniform the figure wore bore the emblem of root on it. Kushi felt the chakra signature and turned around. I had a feeling you would be here, Kushi said quietly so as not to attract any attention. Any information from the Namika's clan? The man asked. Yes the clan has agreed on making the child Naruto a breeding mare for the Mokuten. They want Naruto to be trained to become the side branch clan head and learn minor ninjutsu and some few ninjutsu. The clan sees Naruto as a way to more prestige and power. That's all they see of him as even his parents do. Kushi seed. Your info is bountiful. You've done well, Kushi. Your husband Danzo will be most pleased. The root agent smirked. Thus promise me one thing she asked. If Hashirama send you, yes I know Danzo, send me a private letter telling me everything does anything. Please ask him to spare the younger generation of the clan if he decides to kill off the clan. I'll pass on the message Kushi-sama he said vanishing from the spot. Danzo dear I hope you know what you're doing Kush thought to himself. On Hagakur, deep underground of the village in the root headquarters lots of activity was going on. First Hiruzen was overseeing the re-education of the root shinobi forces. Their education re-educated them to become more human with emotion and other things. Their skills were still unquestionable in the shinobi arts. Hashirama was meeting with Danzo as they were discussing Root's new place within the village. Danzo Root will become Kanoha's special underground private Anbu division. Any shady missions will be given to them since I found out they are the best in their field. Hashirama said. That will be fine, Sensei Danzo agreed. But what about village loyalty? We have to ensure our shinobi stay loyal to the village. That tongue seal of yours will be allowed since it prevents them from speaking or spilling secrets. However I want it moderated so that only the person who placed the seal on can remove it. Agreed Hokage-sama. Soon right on time a root agent arrived and knelt before Danzo and Hashirama. Lord Danzo, Hashirama, we have returned from the mission with success. The agent said. 
Any information you obtained from my wife Kushi? Danzo asked. I, he replied. What did she find out? Hashirama asked. Anbu revealed everything from what Kushi told him. Apparently the clan was going to bring Naruto back to breed the Mokuten and have him marry his own cousin and rule the side branch and be trained as required by clan law. Meaning Naruto was just what Minato wanted. A support ninja with mediocre skill. Danzo was outraged at his grandson, yes that's right Danzo is Minato's paternal grandfather. I think his grandson would sink this low. True Minato was never told he was his grandfather. But he made sure he would be there for him growing up. Now the old warhawk couldn't bear to even call Minato his grandson. Hashirama was a whole different matter. Hashirama was infuriated that the Yandane truly felt so little for his former son. Time for waiting was over, the time for action was now. He asked for one of the root Anbu to bring Mito to the underground. It was time for planned genocide to be enacted. The Anbu nodded and vanished. A few minutes later he arrived with Mito. They explained the whole thing, and Mito accepted the mission that her husband had given her. Mito, you know what to do, Hashirama said coldly. Yes Hokage-sama I know full well what I must do. Mito said calmly. To exterminate the Namika's clan. You leave immediately and if Minato or any of his family see you. Make sure to leave an impact. I she said. But now go, Naruto's future hangs in the balance. Hashirama commanded. Mito nodded and vanished by Shunshin heading out to complete her mission. She got her gear from her compound and headed towards the village gates. They did it, they actually did it. The Namika's clan awoke a monster within Mito. They woke an overprotective mother dragon. Prepare yourself for the Namika's clan. Here comes Mito Senju Uzumaki. Namika's clan compound. A sound of silence filled the complex as everyone was either resting or walking through the streets. Sounds and laughter were heard as they had no idea that death was coming for them. Minato and Kashina were in their house with Menma, Jiraiya, and Swand. They were sharing laughs and memories as they had a delicious lunch. Nothing could ever ruin this night, right? Luo, they were wrong. Mito soon stood atop the entrance arch of the Namika's compound, she was dressed in her battle kimono instead of Anbu gear. Her expression of coldness and hatred was well hidden as she slowly drew her blade from the scabbard on her back. Mito snuck through the shadows as she entered the compound. Entering the first house she cut down the man and woman quickly before they could scream. For the children she flung two kunai hitting them both through the neck, giving them a merciful death. She moved quickly from house to house until she was located and an amicus woman screamed, getting everyone's attention until she was beheaded. Many screamed again as bodies were on the ground, covered in their blood. The people ran in multiple directions. Mito sped through the street slicing the backs and fronts of all those that stood in her way, she killed a couple of civilians that wasn't aware of what was going on, but she paid it no mind, as a former Kinoichi she was used to killing those that weren't supposed to witness something that was not supposed to be witnessed, and massacring the Namika's clan was not supposed to be witnessed. Noticing some were running to warm Minato and Kishina she jumped and threw some kunai and shuriken at other ninjas and civilians in the street. After cutting down the last adult in the clan, she dodged a kunai that was tossed at her. She caught the sight of Minato with Swant, Jiraiya, and Kishina at his side. Who are you? And why have you killed the Namika's clan? Minato demanded. My name is of no importance. Only for the safety of Naruto, the Namika's clan must be killed. She said in a cold tone. Kanoha ordered this. Kishina gasped. I don't believe Minato gasped. Believe that Minato, we received word of your plans for my son from a spy within your clan. Spy? Jiraiya asked. Mikushi said coming out of the shadows. Rama. You sold us out, Minato cried. Why? This clan had fallen from grace a long time ago. I couldn't bear to see that anymore. So yes I sold the clan out and for good reason. Well said Mito laughed. Wait, you said your son, so you're the wife of the new Hokage. Show yourself then show yourself Yuzumaki. Kishina demanded. The moonlight shined through the clouds as the woman stepped forward. Kishina and Swan gasped at who she saw. No way Kishina gasped, covering her mouth. Grandma Mito. Swan cried. Chapter 10. Massacre Aftermath and Hardcore Training. Last time on Naruto Senju of the Hidden Leaf. Who are you? And why have you killed the Namika's clan? Minato demanded. My name is of no importance. Only for the safety of Naruto, the Namika's clan must be killed. She said in a cold tone. Hanoha ordered this. Kishima gasped. I don't believe Minato gasped. Believe it Minato, we received word of your plans for my son from a spy within your clan. Spy? Jiraiya asked. Mikushi said coming out of the shadows. Rama. You sold us out, Minato cried. Why? This clan had fallen from grace a long time ago. I couldn't bear to see that anymore. So yes I sold the clan out and for good reason. Well said Mito laughed. Wait, you said your son, so you're the wife of the new Hokage. Show yourself then show yourself Yuzumaki. Kishina demanded. The moonlight shined through the clouds as the woman stepped forward. Kishina and Swan gasped at who she saw. 
No way Kashina gasped, covering her mouth. Gramamito. Swan cried. Ending previous chapter, words couldn't even describe what Sanadi and Kashina were feeling right now. Standing before them were the legendary Kinoichi Nido Yuzumaki Senju herself. But how could it be? She was supposed to be dead after she transferred to Kaiubi and Kashina. But here she was in front of them with the blood of the Namika's clan spattered over her body. How can this be? You can't be here, you're dead. You died when you sealed Kaiubi into me Kashina shouted. I can assure you Kashina this is not an illusion. I'm living flesh and blood and I've come here to personally deal with you myself. Nito replied harshly, making Kashina flinch. This must be the reanimation, someone must be controlling you, Tsunade said quickly. No one is controlling me, Swand. I'm here on my own free will. Then why are you here? And why kill my clan? You had no right to come here and spill the blood of my clan, Minato shouted, gritting his teeth. Nito snorted at Minato's tough guy demanding attitude. If there was one thing people know it's not to demand of her anything. She sheathed her sword back into its scabbard and stared them down, as if she wasn't even phased by them. The reason I am here is because of the Shinigami. Nito replied to Minato's question. Shinigami? What does the Death Goddess have to do with this? Minato asked, sweating heavily. She found out you abandoned Naruto for a prophecy from the toads about a child who would bring the cycle of hatred to an end. Apparently she became furious and was considering taking your soul. Nito smirked, taking in the smell of their fear. Minato and Jiraiya began to sweat. They didn't realize that they pissed off the Death Goddess. Then it hit them straight in the balls, the Death Goddess interfered with their plans for Naruto. She was the reason Naruto was taken from them. She did this. Minato gasped, getting everyone else's attention. The Death Goddess took Naruto from us. Why would she do that if we didn't do anything wrong? Kishina cried. You abandoned your own blood. You chose Menma over Naruto. I taught you better than that, Kishina Mito shouted, raising her voice. From a very young age I taught and branded in your head the sacred oath of the clan and what it means to truly be in Yuzumaki. Mito sama I am Yuzumaki. I did this to protect him. Kishina shouted until Mito slapped her across the face. You threw him away like he was nothing. Mito screamed at her. You saw him as an unimportant boy because he wasn't the child mentioned in your little prophecy. No Kishina said only to be interrupted. You didn't do it to protect him. You did it because you believed Menma was more important. You didn't want to take Naruto with you because he was just a distraction to you. Stop it, Kishina cried. You threw away an innocent little baby that you carried for nine months. You went along with that bastard without giving a second thought about Naruto. Shut up I love my son Kishina screamed. If you loved him you would have taken him with you. If you loved him you would be there for his first words, first steps, first injury. If you loved him you should have been the mother you were supposed to be. Nito shouted louder, making Kishina drop to her knees. Shut up. Shut up. Kishina cried louder, gripping her head. You became such a failure that the death goddess herself decided to give Naruto to a real Yuzumaki, someone who would be the mother that you failed to be. Kishina cried into her hands until her eyes ran red. Minato quickly rushed to his wife's side and pulled her into a hug. He glared up at Mito as he leaked killer intent towards her only for the woman to shake it off. Swan stepped forward to confront her now resurrected grandmother, only for Mito to point her kunai at her face. You Swan are the one I'm most ashamed of. Mito said, turning her head to face her granddaughter. I stood by my family Bachan. I did what you taught me when I was young, and that was to stand by my family. Tsunade said. You didn't even convince Minato to take Naruto with him. You let it happen. You failed as a grandmother, as a senju, and Yuzumaki. Mito scoffed. I didn't fail at anything. I really wanted to take Naruto with us. But after Jiraiya and Minato explained the whole thing. I thought it might have been a good idea. A good idea. Mito said, her eyes twitching. A good idea to abandon a child, make them think you were dead. Suddenly coming back 13 years later as if nothing happened. Did you even think about how Naruto would react to this? Did you even think about the dangers this plan of yours would have on the poor boy's mental state? Please botch and I know you're angry because of Naruto. But killing off the Namika's clan isn't the answer. Swan tried to reason with her. You think Naruto is the reason for all this? Mito seethed. Is that what you think? You killed off the clan because of him. Said Jiraiya. And I did this to protect him from what you had planned for him. Naruto is a sweet little boy, not some breeding stallion for a clan whose sole purpose is to breed the Mokuten. No, I did it because I'm Naruto's mother. And as his mother I would do everything I can to protect him. What would grandpa say if he saw you right now Tsunade angrily shouted. Hashirama would side with me on this one. Mito said, walking towards Tsunade. Hashirama knows what it means to be a parent. You know why. I'll tell you why. He never bent over to fate like you all did. Prophecies are loads of crap, we don't follow the words of something that is years if not centuries old. You may be a fat bitch, but I'm not. I'll have you arrested with clan genocide. 
Minato said standing up with his wife holding on to him. I'll have the fire daimyo in your head. My clan was close to the daimyo, not to mention they were his private Anbu division. You think you can threaten me? Mito chuckled. I don't want to do this to my village. But since they ordered the execution of my clan then I will make sure justice is served. Minato promised her. So you're saying that you and your clan wanted to not only take Naruto away from Konoha. But also put Naruto under a breeding program, since Naruto will have a high chance of inheriting the Mokuten. A clan who would strip the freedom of a little boy for what? To be branded and controlled. To be a slave to some main branch. Uo oh, I'm sure your daimyo would love to hear about that since Kushi here was present in your meeting. I can't believe you would sell us out. I thought the clan meant something to you. Minato shook his head in disbelief. A long time ago, Kushi answered sadly. But from what I have seen in my years so far. I'm ashamed of it. I leave you all with a warning Mito threatened. Stay away from Naruto. He's mine now. Cross my path again and you'll be joining the number of bodies that lay scattered around the compound. Ashina charged towards Mito before anyone could stop her in a saddened rage, I'll kill you. Mito allowed Kishina to get close before delivering a punch to the woman's stomach. Kishina grunted, coughing out saliva as she clutched her belly and fell back to her knees. She looked up at Mito who was glaring down at her. The Yuzumaki matriarch unleashed so much killer intent that it scared Kishina. She couldn't move a muscle because of it. Minato charged in to help his wife with a Rasengan ready in his hand. Mito vanished from her position and delivered a kick to his back, sending him into a crater in the ground. Minato. Jiraiya yelled as he charged in. Fire style. Oil burning. Oil surrounded Mito as the set it ablaze. Mito jumped into the air and unleashed a tidal wave of water which extinguished the flames. She went toe-to-toe -to -toe with both. She blocked and managed to subdue Jiraiya with Fuinjutsu, but her granddaughter was on a whole different level. She was impressed with her granddaughter's medicine. Tsunade managed to grab Mito and send her flying across the ground with a super punch. Mito grunted as she dug her feet into the ground. She looked up and saw Tsuan bringing down another punch. The Yuzumaki dodged as she managed to cut Tsunade's side, making her bleed out a bit. Tsunade clutched her wounded side as she felt a sword to her neck. Mito raised her sword to deliver a decapitated blow only for her to sheath her blade. You're not worth killing she said before knocking her out with a single chakra infused punch. Mito turned back to Kashina who was shivering in fear from Mito's killer intent. The matriarch knelt down before cutting Kashina's cheek, a kanji for traitor. She then used her chakra to burn it into her skin, making Kashina scream. I branded the traitor sealing mark into your skin. I won't forget it until I kill you. You'll be all I'll think about Mito said motioning to Kushi. Kushi came up behind Kashina and bashed her cane over her head, knocking the Namika's matriarch out. Kashina's vision became blurry as she fell to the ground. Minato grunted as he tried to stand up. How dare they attack his wife. He got out his Horatian kunai and tossed them in many directions. Mito went on the defensive as Minato vanished from sight. Mito drew her sword and began blocking his attacks from all directions. She received a few blows until she went through hand signs and placed a seal on Minato's back when she appeared behind him. The seal paralyzed him as he fell to the ground. Dureya was about to attack when Minato told him to stay back. It was his fight and he was going to avenge his fallen clan members no matter what. He tried to get up when he noticed Mito was walking away with Kushi. Stop Minato shouted, but they didn't even listen and kept walking. By the time Minato managed to stand up he saw the two of them vanish through a seal on the ground. He asked Jiraiya to inspect the seal and confirmed it was a reverse summon seal. The seal immediately burned off the ground as black flames engulfed it. Whoever made this seal must have been a powerful seal master. Bam they got away Minato growled, tightening his fist grip. I'll make you pay bitch hear me. I'll make you pay. He assisted his wife and mother and managed to get them into the main compound building to rest. Menma was informed of the whole situation and like his father vowed to make the Yuzumaki woman pay. Afterwards Minato asked Jureya what the casualties were. Only 20 Namikazes are left Minato, 3 adults, and the remainder are children under the age of 4. Including Minako and her daughter. Jureya said. It's strange that Mito left some of the clan alive. I bet Kushi asked for Mito to spare the younger generation. Minato thought. The only question is what to do now. We could go to the daimyo, but with Kushi turned traitor and Kanoha having the info of the clan meeting there isn't much we can do. I think all this happened because of one kid Jiraiya chuckled. The gods must really hate you. I know that but we can still benefit from this, Minato said. How so? The toad sage asked. Since Kanoha had killed off my clan. I can demand compensation from the men demand the return of Naruto. If they try to refuse, the daimyo can ensure they follow through or the village will suffer. Plus the next Hokage will have to put the village first like all Hokages do. If he wants to prevent the village from losing either funding or other privileges, then they will have no choice but to comply. That's genius Minato. I see I trained you well Jiraiya praised. I'm a Namaka sensei. 
and one of the greatest shinobis in the world. Minato boasted. On Hagakur, Badara was overseeing Sasuke's training as he was practicing the hand signs for the Phoenix Flower. The boy was a quick learner, but he kept using too much chakra in his attacks. He instructed Sasuke to use chakra in portions instead of one big clump in one single attack. Itachi was overseeing the training, and he was really proud at how Sasuke turned out. At first Itachi was worried that Sasuke was going to become like their father. But it seems that honor went to Satsuki who was training under the elders. Again Sasuke Madara said as Sasuke went through hand signs. Higher style phoenix flower. Sasuke shouted using a small bit of chakra required as he spit out many small fireballs at the dummy. Madara smiled in satisfaction as he saw how precise and powerful it was. Sasuke believed in improvement and not relying too heavily on powerful techniques. The Achiha air panted as he checked his progress and saw he made some pretty good improvement. Madara clapped and gave a real smile. A smile that showed he was proud of his student. But now let's move on to Tajutsu. Come at me with everything you got Madara smirked. Sasuke charged Madara and chucked kunai and shuriken at him which he deflected instantly. The Achiha soon swung his leg to his chest only for Madara to block it and push him back. Again Madara shouted as Sasuke charged again, this time planning his attacks carefully. Sasuke continued to throw every punch and kick he could at the only to be blocked at every turn. He jumped back and three more shuriken and did the hand signs for the multiple shuriken clones. He also threw smoke bombs which made Madara cough. Sasuke delivered a kick to his back, sending him to the ground. Madara managed to stay on his feet as Sasuke punched him across the face. Sasuke smirked, but that soon to be frowned when Madara grabbed him by the foot and pinned him down. I'm impressed by Sasuke. You continue to surprise me each and every day since I met you. Madara praised him. Keep this up and you'll be like me one of these days. Sasuke smiled as he basked in the praise of his hero and mentor. Meanwhile we find our cute little blonde in his mindscape training with Kaguya. They were engaged in a battle as Kaguya had him on the ropes. Naruto managed to land a kick, but it had no effect. Kaguya sent a roundhouse kick to Naruto's midsection, sending him a few feet away. Naruto was covered in bruises as he tried to stand up. He charged her again and ran hand signs for the water bullet. Kaguya smacked them away with her hands and blocked Naruto's punch. She then punched him back as he hit the ground with a poof. Shadow clone. She said as she saw two Naruto's in back of her. They each fired a water bullet as they hit their mark only for them to be pierced by wood. They crumbled away as they were revealed to be clones too. She then heard a vibration from under her as the real Naruto sprang up from the ground and delivered a punch to her chin, sending her into the air. She grunted in pain as she floated in the air looking down at her pupil with a smirk. That's enough for now, Naruto-chan Kaguya said. Your tojutsu is average, your ninjutsu is at least C-rank. You're showing great promise. Thanks to Kaguya and Naruto bowing. Can we check my affinity now? Naruto you already know you have every affinity. Kaguya reminded him. Let's move on shall we? I can see you've been using the shadow clones to help you a lot in other fields. Hi since shadow clones can help you learn things a bit quicker. Naruto answered. Alright then since you've been doing so well. I'm going to teach one of my special moves. It's called Shira Tensei. Kaguya smiled. Kaguya faced a training dummy as she made a swish moment with her hand, sending a blast of mighty wind, turning the dummy into splinters. Naruto was in awe of that. He couldn't wait to try that move himself. The goddess then asked Naruto to come over. The boy obeyed as she instructed him to gather his chakra and draw it into his hand and unleash it in one swish of the wrist. Betting the idea Naruto gathered as much chakra as he could as he made a swipe movement with his hand. Shinra Tensei shouted as he sent a bit of powerful wind obliterating the forest landscape, revealing a very unhappy Kaiubi who was trying to take a nice quiet bath in the river. Ooh sorry Kurama. He apologized. All I asked was for some peace and quiet for a few minutes Kurama groaned. And you mess it up by blowing up the forest. Ooh don't be such a sour puss Kurama Kaguya sighed. You keep acting like that and you'll be as arrogant and cold as Madara. I'm nothing like those red-eyed bastards Kurama roared. He's Kurama you don't have to throw a temper tantrum, Naruto groaned, cleaning out his ears. You want to see what real anger looks like Kurama growled. Thanks but no thanks Kurama Naruto chuckled. I know better than to piss off the king of the demons. Kurama smirked with a hum, you got that right brat. Now since you have no control over your god chakra yet. I think it's time for some survival training from me. And believe me I'm not going to make this easy for you. I wouldn't expect you to Naruto laughed. Good because the next few days are going to be hell for you, Kurama laughed sinisterly. Chapter 11. Bond between sensei and student. True to his word Kurama placed Naruto through training that would not only increase his stamina, chakra reserves, and strength. But it also trained his mental state as well. For the past week Naruto had to do 300 sit-ups, 500 pull-ups, 400 push-ups, and ran around the whole village 20 times with weight seals on his body every morning. 
Sometimes Naruto wondered who was worse at Kurama's training or training with Madara himself. Of course unlike Madara Kurama allowed him two hour breaks twice a day. Kaguya or as Naruto calls her Kaguya-chan or Moonlight as her nickname trained him to purify his godlike chakra so that it would safely enter his own chakra network. Ok Naruto in order for my chakra to enter your own network, your own chakra must purify it. Kaguya explained. Ok but Kaguya-sama isn't your chakra the same as everything else? Naruto asked. You are the mother of chakra after all. Chakra comes in many different forms from Naruto. Take the tailed beasts for instance, their chakra is wild and untamed. It's a form of nature chakra. Yet it feels godlike due to them being born from my own chakra. But at the same time it's dangerous since nature can't be tamed. Now human chakra is more different, it's more spiritual energy than nature. Now my chakra is godlike and purified, thus making it white. Do you understand now? Akinda do Kaguya Sama Naruto replied. Alright now let's try letting some of your god chakra pour into your own chakra pools. Naruto nodded as he took a deep breath as he opened his chakra pathways. The white chakra was pooled in Naruto's heart, since the heart represents the very essence of the person. The white chakra slowly bit by bit poured into the pathways. His own blue chakra sensing the foreign chakra tried to fight against it. Suddenly the two chakra clashed, and it brought forth pain never before imagined. Naruto screamed but still kept his concentration trying to purify the chakra. Kaguya told him not to force the purification and to let it flow. Naruto's body felt like a war zone between two chakra natures, mortal and godlike power. It hurt so damn bad Naruto grunted. It seems your body is at war with itself. You must try to let your chakra allow the godlike one to merge with it. The more your body resists it the more it will hurt. Naruto dealt with the pain for a solid 45 minutes until the pain stopped. The excruciating pain finally ended as his body felt calmer and warmer. The chakra he got from Kaguya started to flow freely through his network. Kaguya looked at Naruto as she noticed white chakra started to leak out and engulf him. Naruto opened his eyes as his once blue eyes turned a good solid white. The moon goddess smiled, the chakra was taking effect. The boy was starting to show tiny traits of her own clan. His human chakra was starting to purify his godlike chakra. How do you feel? She asked. Strange. I feel like a new person. Naruto answered. The chakra feels warm, pure, and powerful. Just make sure you don't become consumed by it like I did Kagri warned him. Don't worry about moonlight. I swear to you I won't become a power-hungry demon. Um, no offense. Naruto chuckled. Kagri sighed. Well we trained enough for today. Why don't you hang out with your friends for a while? Really? Naruto whined. Because I was hoping we could spend the day together. You and me. I'm not sure the world is ready for me yet, Kaguya said nervously. I mean I once tried to eliminate mankind. Naruto moved closer to her and held her face in his hands, making her look at him. You're not that person anymore. Kaguya wanted to believe him truly. But mankind fears what they don't understand, and she knows that mankind both fears and respects her. But they mostly fear her. Naruto begged her to at least spend one day with him outside of his mindscape. After much consideration and begging from our unpredictable but cute little Redeed. She finally agreed and asked for temporary control of his body. Naruto asking why was told she would need to control his body which will allow her to summon herself. Agreeing to the request, Kaguya took over the boy's body and channeled the chakra that the boy had to such a level, it would be enough to summon her. Summoning Kaguya Naruto shouted, going through hand signs. A puff of smoke appeared as Kaguya stood in her mortal form. The same form she was in before she became the rabbit goddess. She stood at a height of 5 feet and 10 inches tall. She had snow white hair and pale white eyes. Her lips were luscious red and her skin was soft and fair. She wore a high collared heim kimono which had tama running down the center and edges of the gown and adorned with intricate gold and purple lines. She did not have her rabbit ears but she looked as beautiful as any celestial goddess. Naruto shook his head after he came back too, and he looked in awe at Kaguya and all her beauty. Em Moonlight is that you? Naruto stuttered. Yes Naruto-chan it's me she laughed. You said you wanted to spend time together. Well now you get to. Naruto got to his feet as he took her hand and headed out of the forest and towards the village. He couldn't wait to introduce her to everyone. He was sure they were going to like her. Kanahagakur. Market District. Kaguya walked with her student to the village market when she noticed some looks from the people around them. However she noticed that they were directed at Naruto, and many of them were wondering who his new friend was. Many of the men were jealous that a kid was friends with a beautiful woman like her. Whereas the women were jealous of the sheer beauty she had. They would kill to have a body like hers. She did her best to ignore them because she didn't want to ruin the moment for Naruto. She smiled seeing how happy he looked at the moment. He wanted to make sure that their day was the best one she ever had. She sensed that the villagers greeted her student with respect. Ever since the renouncement of the Yandame, Naruto's father Hashirama announced Naruto as the savior of the village for containing the Kaiubi. 
He told the village that Naruto will be able to befriend the Nine Tails, and together they would protect the village for generations to come. About 98% of the villagers praised him for it, but 2% hated the boy for holding the beast that killed their loved ones. Kagri wondered how Naruto could still be happy and outgoing, knowing a small part of the village lives to kill him. It was a mystery to her. Hey Kagriya-sensei. He asked her. Ha oh, yes Naruto. She asked. I'm going to take you shopping. A pretty lady like yourself needs some new clothes, jewelry, and other women's stuff. He chuckled. Kagriya smiled down at him before responding. Ooh oh Naruto you don't have to go and do that. She told him. I appreciate the gesture. But you don't have to spoil me. I know he replied before looking ahead while they walked. But you did so much for me and this is your first time out in the fresh air in centuries. You deserve it. I want to repay you for all your gifts and your friendship. She looked back down at him in response. All right Naruto if you insist. Naruto smiled as he took her hand and led her to the greatest clothing store in the district. More people would continue to stare at them, or more accurately at Naruto. Some of the villagers near the store just sneered at the boy. You could see the look of distaste and disgust upon their face as they noticed the demon boy as they called him coming towards the store. They were also angered that a pretty woman like that would associate with his kind. Hey demon what do you think you're doing showing your face at my grandmother's store the man yelled. I thought I told you to never show your face here again. Naruto winced at the tone of the man but stood his ground. Kaguya however wasn't liking this man's attitude towards her student. Excuse me sir, but I would advise you not to speak to my student in such a manner. Kaguya said in a cold tone. I demand you apologize. What? Apologize? The man scoffed. Lady don't you know who this brat is? He's the Kyubi incarnate. The demon who destroyed our village all those years ago. You honestly expect me to believe that this boy is a 700 foot fox with nine tails. A demon with the power to create tsunamis and level mountains with a swipe of its tails. Kaguya scoffed. The Yandane defeated the beast by sealing it into a human form to make it weak. And we the proud citizens of Konoha will see to it that the demon knows its place in this village. The man's companion boasted proudly. Agria narrowed her eyes as she waved her arm to the side and blew the two men through the glass window of the store. The people inside screamed as the men came crashing through. The two guys coughed as they got back to their feet. Kagria stepped into the store only this time she wasn't going to show any mercy to these men. She held out her left hand as the men levitated into the air. The two of them screamed in fear as they soon felt the air around them getting drier. They began to cough as they felt the oxygen level going down. Gasping for air they flayed around and struggled trying to escape. Kagria grasped her hand into a fist, making it more painful for them as the boastful villagers felt their bones break. They couldn't even scream due to the suffocation. She felt a tug on her dress as she looked down at Naruto. Kagria stopping there is not worth it. Let them go, Naruto begged Kagria. You told me never let others get under your skin. Don't let them get under yours. Kagria sighed before she released them from her. The men dropped to the ground as they coughed feeling fresh air returning to them. One of the men looked up at Kagria. You're just like him he said angrily but fearfully. You're a demon like he is. You're his demon whore. The man took out his kunai and charged towards them. From the looks of it he was going after the boy. Going into overprotective mode her eyes went wide as a blast of invisible chakra pushed him back a little. You will not harm the boy she shouted. Don't back down, the man shouted. Right said his companion. The man growled as he and his friend charged the two of them again. Only this time Kagri released her chakra again and the two men exploded into a pile of blood and bones. Naruto was shocked at what happened as was everyone else. The villagers were scared at how powerful this woman was. She looked at Naruto and apologized for her actions. Naruto couldn't blame her for this one, the men attacked and pushed her buttons too far. It was their own fault. It's okay Kaguya sensei it wasn't your fault. Naruto sighed. Though killing them was more of a mercy than punishment. Kaguya and Naruto continued into the store where the owner greeted them. Kaguya apologized to the old woman for her behavior, but the old lady told her it was no problem. You have nothing to worry about my dear. My grandson wasn't the brightest man in the world and his father's prejudice didn't help either. The old woman sighed. I can even tell the difference between a kunai and a scroll. Thank you madam you're so kind Kaguya thanked her. No problem now let's get you into some new clothes. Apparently that kimono you're wearing might need to be cleaned to get all those blood stains out. She chuckled. Kaguya was given many new clothes to try on. There were so many to choose from especially in the time and age. She finally settled on a nice spring green dress. Naruto thought she was even more beautiful. He purchased her lots of fine jewelry. He got her some makeup, but he believed her beauty alone didn't need makeup as it was pure already. Kaguya had her hair and a long ponytail with a sapphire and diamond barat in her hair. Kaguya still thought all of this was unnecessary, but Naruto still spoiled her with his allowance. After paying for the clothes and jewelry, Naruto took Kaguya to his favorite restaurant Ichiraku Ramen. 
he told her that it was the food of the gods. But Kagri would be the judge of that. They headed to the restaurant and Naruto was greeted by A.M. and her father Tuchi. Hey Naruto, A.M. smiled. The usual like always. Hey A.M. Nichan and not today. I would like a Mizo Raymond please. A large bowl to split with my sensei here. How oh, so we finally get to meet the sensei that Naruto's been talking about Tuchi smiled at. My name is Tuchi and that's my daughter A.M. My name is Kaguya. The goddess introduced herself. Nice to meet you both. The Raymond came out 10 minutes later as A.M. gave them their chopsticks. Naruto and Kaguya thanked her and dug into their lunch. It was tasty, Kaguya had to admit. She hadn't really tasted anything so good before. What do you think of Kaguya sensei? Naruto asked. It's delicious Naruto, she smiled back. Hehehe <laughs> see I told you. Food of the gods Naruto laughed digging and more. Hey Naruto. Kiba shouted as he came in with his friends. Oh hey Kiba, hey guys what's up? Naruto asked. We were coming to get you. We wanted to know if you'd like to head out to the Akamichi barbecue with us. Hinata asked. I'd love to thank you guys, but I'm busy hanging out with Sensei today. Maybe another time. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, chuckling. Sensei? Shikamaru asked. He means me, Kaguya said, getting everyone's attention. Whoa who's the babe? Kiba smiled. This is Kaguya, she's a friend of mine. She's been training me for a while now. Pleasure to meet you all. Hello my name is Hinata Hayuga. I'm Kiba Inuzuka and my buddy Akamaru Kiba grinned and Akamaru barked. What a drag I'm Shikamaru Nara and that's my buddy Choji Akamichi. I'm Shino Aburam, my bug sense your chakra level. You're on god level aren't you? My bugs fear you. I'm Tenten and that's Rock Lee and Niji Hayuga. I'm Satsuki Achiha and that's Asuke. Pleasure to meet all of you. Kaguya greeted her. Suddenly a couple of Anbu appeared as they approached the woman. Naruto noticed they were Kakashi and Itachi greeted them. Itachi and Kakashi and what brings you here? We are here to bring your friend here to the Hokage regarding the incident at the clothing store in the market district. Who oh that, sensei was just protecting me from a few prejudiced villagers who tried to kill me, Naruto said, defending his sensei. It's fine Naruto I can handle this, Kaguya said getting up. Alright gentlemen shall we? Itachi and Kakashi escorted the woman and Naruto to the Hokage's office. Naruto went along so he could explain to his parents the situation. Hanahagakur. Hokage's office. Ashirama sat in his office chatting with Mido and Kush Namikas about the details of the Namikas massacre. Kushi went into full detail of the clan meeting and the fate that awaited young Naruto when his biological parents came back to claim him. Madara was also there listening to the story. He had to hand it to Mido. He never thought she was even capable of something like this. Are you sure that's what you heard? You're not leaving anything out? Hashirama asked commandingly. Yes Sama I have left nothing out. Kushi replied firmly. How many of the Namika's clan left Mido? I left Hashirama alive. Most of them were children under the age of four years old. Said Mido. Very well Kanoha thanks you for what you had to do Mido-chan Hashirama sighed. I wish it didn't have to come to that. But Minato forced my hand. Kishina and Sanadi know I am alive. And as ordered I left a huge impact on them. Kishina was branded with the traitor seal and Sanadi well I left her alive. I will not judge her yet since she has yet to prove where her loyalties lie. A knock was heard at the door as Itachi and Kakashi came in. Okage-sama the woman as you requested. Said Itachi. Thank you Itachi for sending her in. Itachi bowed as Kakashi brought her before them with Naruto behind her. Naruto immediately started to beg them not to punish her. He told them the whole situation that happened at the clothing store. Hashirama listened to his son's explanation of the incident. He sighed leaning back into his chair. He was conflicted on what to do because one this woman saved his son's life from two Kaiubi hating villagers and two he didn't even know who this woman is or where she came from. I appreciate you saving my son. Hashirama thanked her. But I have never seen you before. Would you please tell us your name? Agria nodded as she channeled chakra through her body and soon everyone saw a third eye on her forehead. It was a combination of the Rinnegan and the Sharingan. Madara knew that bloodline all too well. It was the most powerful eye in the world and only one person in existence had that bloodline. Agria Atsutsuki. Madara said respectfully. Chapter 12. A caged bird finally free. Agria Utsutsuki never thought I'd get to meet the mother herself in person, Madara said in his usual cold but respectful tone. Madara Chiha, descendant of Indra and former reincarnation. Kaguya answered before looking at Hashirama. Hokage-sama, so you're the one who rescued my son from some of the more hostile villagers. I thank you for what you've done. Hashirama thanked her. Pleasure is all mine, Kaguya replied. But may I ask Kaguya how are you out of the sea? I was told you were sealed with the Kaiubi into him. Naruto gave me temporary control of his body which allowed me access to my power in his body. This allowed me to summon a clone of myself. Kaguya explained. Why would Naruto do that? Madara asked. 
Naruto may be smart, but when it comes to seals he's not exactly gifted. Naruto wanted me to spend some time out of the sea. To taste the fresh air after so many centuries. I told him I was fine being within the seal, but bring the stubborn boy he is. He wouldn't take no for an answer. I felt bad for her too San. Said Naruto. It didn't feel right for someone like her to remain a prisoner after years of imprisonment. I mean I'm sure she spent enough time repenting. Naruto is a sweet boy Hokage-sama. His heart was in the right place so don't punish him for messing with the seal on his belly. Kaguya said firmly. I'll speak to Naruto about that later, but right now could you tell me exactly what happened? Of course Hashirama, it started when Naruto took me into the village for some shopping. He wanted to spoil me with gifts of clothes and jewelry with his allowance. She said making Naruto blush a little which Madara noticed. Trying to impress your new girlfriend. Madara teased. Hey hey I'm just a kid Naruto shouted still blushing red. I was just showing her a good time, that's all. Zoor and I bet all the gifts you bought her were just regular gifts grinned. Hey at least I can treat a girl to a good time unlike you who couldn't even score a lady like dad did when you were in your prime days, Naruto retorted back at him. You want to say that to my face? Madara shouted getting into Naruto's face. I just did what old man Naruto shouted back as lightning crossed between their eyes. Hashirama face palmed, uo these two. Aguya just laughed at the situation and a little spat between Naruto and Madara. Although she had to admit Madara looked pretty cute when he was mad. Enough of your squabbling. Naruto I can understand since he's a kid, but I expect better of you Hashirama yelled. Madara mumbled as he leaned against the wall with his arms crossed as Naruto stuck his tongue out at him, making many ticket marks appear on his head as he growled at the red-headed. I'm sorry Kaguya please continue. After Naruto took me shopping he took me to this cute little store that belonged to a sweet old lady. Two men were hanging around the store and the way they looked at Naruto told me they were Jinchuriki haters. They threatened Naruto to leave as they told us he wasn't allowed near the store due to him being a demon. Kaguya growled, gripping her fist. I attacked the men and I was going to kill them, but Naruto stopped me. He believed that killing them wouldn't change anything. But after they opened their big mouths again and attacked Naruto again I got so angry. My bloodline activated and the men exploded in a pool of blood. Naruto looked down, he believed in showing mercy to others even to those who don't deserve it. But Mito, his mother, showed him that sometimes there are people who are beyond mercy and that you'll have to kill those who wish to harm you if you wish to survive. Hashirama understood the situation as he would never forgive anyone who wishes harm upon his son, not even himself if he ever hurt Naruto. The old lady was the grandmother of one of the men I killed. She understood that her grandson was a prejudiced bastard. But I don't understand why she didn't feel sadness over her grandson's death. She saw that he rightfully deserved it, Madara snorted. I know I would if anyone harmed my son. That's the whole report of Hashirama. Kaguya sighed. I suppose I should be punished for killing some of your villagers. Punish you? Hashirama raised an eyebrow. Why would I punish you? You saved my boy from being killed by prejudicial bastards. Aguya wasn't expecting such a reaction. I mean sure she saved her student, but she didn't think the Hokage would be so happy that she killed two humans in the most horrific way imaginable. You deserve a reward. Ask anything and you shall receive it, Hashirama smiled. Can Kaguya and Karama live out of the seal daddy? Naruto asked happily. Naruto it's Kaguya's reward so she decides. Actually that's a fine idea. Could Karama and I live outside of the sea? It would do us both good. Especially since 98% of the village believes the Kaiubi will work with Naruto to protect the village. If we remove Karama from Naruto he will die, Madara argued. He's got godlike chakra and stamina he will survive. Okay okay let's say we do this then what? If word escapes the village that the Ninetales is free from its host. Naruto will become an even bigger target. I'm not afraid Uncle Emo Naruto scoffed. Well there you have it Madara from the mouths of babes Kaguya smirked. Madara groaned as he shook his head. No one listens to him. Why is he even here? He would rather be out on missions killing off enemies or go after that old guy Inoki again from Iowa. But now Kaguya actually wants to have the Kaiubi to be released and live in the village with him. Madara knew one bad thing about this whole thing. When Kaiubi comes out he will come after him due to their past history. Was he terrified? No was he intimidated. Yes after all the Kaiubi was a powerful force of chakra. Are you sure that's what you want because I'm starting to agree with Madara here. Thank you Hashirama at least you got some brains left in that head of yours. Hirama is as much a victim as Kaguya is. Naruto argued again. They deserve to be free like we do. Alright come to our compound later tonight and we shall work on releasing you and Kaiubi for real, Hashirama said as Madara hit his head against the wall repeatedly. Thank you, Hashirama Kaguya bowed. Naruto, why don't you go play with your friends? Okay bye daddy bye uncle emo. Bye Moonlight. He laughed as he left the office. Moonlight. Hashirama asked. My nickname he made for me she chuckled. So how long can your clone last? Madara asked her. 
as long as I desire it, why? Do you like looking at me? She asked seductively, making Madara blush. Nn no of course nn not Madara stuttered. Asharama snickered before Madara growled and put him in a headlock. Well I should go boys. Nice meeting you but I better go find Naruto and make sure he stays safe. Kaguya said before she felt a dark presence. The presence she felt was a sort of energy that was meant to bring about pain upon an individual, and she tracked it towards the western part of the leaf village towards the Hyuga compound. Excuse me Hokage, Madara, but I have some business to clear up. She said, narrowing her eyes as she jumped out the window and headed to the western part of the village. After she left Madara was still angry at his old friend for allowing such a dangerous request from Kaguya and Naruto. Why would Hashirama agree to something so stupid Madara growled. I didn't know Naruto would even suggest the idea. Hashirama argued. Madara then bonked him on the head hard, making Hashirama rub his head that now had a giant bump. You still should have said no. You know how valuable the Kaiubi is to every nation. Naruto's going to be in more danger than ever. Then what do you suggest we do? Hashirama screamed. We allow Kurama to live out of the seal, but he will still be connected to Naruto, which will prevent Kaiubi from being sealed or captured by another of the great nations. The Hokage thought. Alright I'll talk to Mido and make the arrangements. In the meantime you should probably get back to the clan. I heard the clan is planning on taking you back as clan head. Ha! Madara scoffed. They can keep their clan head status and shove it up their ass. Besides Itachi will become the new clan head when I re-educate the clan. Don't go into one of your dark and breedy educational methods. Hashirama warned him. No promises Hashirama Madara laughed darkly before vanishing in a swirl of fire. Hyuga compound, the ashy watched as Hanada lunged towards Niji, her arm outstretched, aiming towards a vital, only to be easily deflected by Niji. She stumbled a few steps across the courtyard before turning around and adopting the Jaikin stance. Niji faced her calmly, mirroring her pose. His hand held out, palm upward, beckoned her. Hanada pantsed before she rushed in for another attack. Hanada Sama your form is sloppy, your punches and kicks are too soft to do damage. Niji said harshly. If you expect to run the clan then you need to stop being so meek and soft. It doesn't suit a Hyuga clan head. I know that I'm not as skilled as you. But I can still reach my full potential. Hinata said, strongly launching a firm palm towards his chest. Niji dodged her attack a second time, sidestepping neatly at the last second. However, this time he grabbed her arm and jerked it, trying to unbalance her. Hinata twisted her trapped arm to get a hold on his and spun around, tearing off his grasp on her. She grabbed his forearm with her other hand too and used it as a lever to perform a flip so that she stood too close for him to block. The right elbow darted towards his face, but he bent his head back at an impossible angle, avoiding the blow. She sank to the floor and swept her leg across it trying to unbalance Niji, but he backflipped and his right foot caught her under the chin, sending her sprawling backward. The Ashi could see that his meek daughter was improving greatly, slowly but greatly. He was secretly hoping that his daughter would be able to impress the elders so she wouldn't be branded and sent to the branch house. He may be a father and love his daughter, but he also had a duty to the clan. He began to notice that Niji was quite the prodigy in the and the other Hyuga techniques. Even for a branch member he was quite gifted. Meanwhile Kaguya had followed the chakra mass to the main household dojo. Hiding her chakra signature she moved through quietly and managed to peek in through the door. She noticed the two Hyuga sparring. She noticed the girl was a bit off and completely meek. But the boy she noticed was very 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 skilled. Also she noticed their eyes which was one of the bloodlines she had. This boy is quite the prodigy. His skills are impressive for a boy his age. Kaguya thought about watching them. However the girl needs a lot of work. Her attacks are too soft, it's like she doesn't want to hurt anyone. Please, I know you're angry with the main house since your uncle died. But taking your anger on me in our spars won't bring him back. Hinata begged her cousin. Niji grunted as he tried to keep his anger in check. His father's death was a sour topic for him. He despised and hated the main branch for what happened to his Ashi. He Ashi, his uncle was supposed to be the one to be taken, but instead the clan sacrificed his father in its place. He gripped his fist as he looked back up at Hinata. Activating his Byakugan he charged at Hinata with malicious intent which Hiashi quickly noticed. Acting quickly Hiashi got in front of Hinata and force palmed Niji back a few feet. He then put his fingers into position as he activated the cage bird seal. Niji grunted as he felt like a thousand knives had pierced through his body dipped in salt and alcohol mixed with hellfire. He clawed at his head as he ripped off the bandages from his head, revealing a strange mark with an X in the middle of it. He screamed as his whole body was in excruciating pain. My head on my head it feels like it's on fire, Niji cried as he felt like ripping out his hair. Suddenly the door was broken open which broke Hiashi's concentration as he noticed a woman with long white hair rush towards him with such speed as she gripped his left hand and broke his wrist, making him scream. 
Kaguya noticed what that seal could do and thanks to her godlike ability, she can learn any seal quickly. She immediately slammed her palm against Hisha's forehead and threw him across the dojo. Father Hinata shouted. Kaguya immediately performed the cage bird seal sign as he Ashi immediately rolled around screaming as he knew that the woman put the cage bird seal on him. But how could she do that? Performing it for six minutes she stopped as she noticed Hayuga's rushing into the dojo. Lord Hiashi. What happened? This woman just placed the cage bird seal on me. I don't know how she did it but kill her. Hiashi ordered as the Hayuga's charged her. Agriya got into her battle stance as her eyes turned white with veins around her eyes. Hiashi gasped as he took notice of the eyes as did everyone else. It was the Byakugan. Kaguya immediately charged as she programmed many of the main house Hayugas. She managed to wound some, but to others she went too far by 364 palming three times which killed a few. Knocking the last Hayuga through the wall and decapitating the other, she approached Hiashi and picked him up by his neck. How? How do you have the Byakugan? Who are you? Hiashi demanded. Who I am is of no concern, but you can call me Princess Kaguya. I am disgusted to see what the Hayuga clan has become. To treat family with his kind of seal torture. To brand a child. She shouted, boy was she angry. The cage bird seal is to keep the side branch in line and protect the Byakugan. He ashy justified. So you enslave part of your family to do your job for you? Wow you really are pathetic. Watch your tongue. Do you realize who you're talking to? I'm the head of the Hayuga clan. All I'm talking to is a man who relies on the side branch to protect the Byakugan instead of doing it himself. All this shows me is that the main house is so weak that it needs the side branch to do it for them. How dare you insult the might of the Hayuga clan. In fact you should be branded for attacking me since you're actually a Hayuga. Kaguya tightened her grip on Hiyashi's neck, listen here no one seals me, never again she slammed him into the hardwood floor below. Daddy Hinata sobbed. Please madam please leave him alone. Zip your mouth girl this man needs to be taught a lesson in respect. Lady Kaguya waited, Niji said, stepping forward. What do you want kid? My name is Niji and I thank you for saving me. But I'm afraid of the side branch and I still answer to Hiyashi due to clan law and this seal. Niji sighed. Going through one hand hand sign she channeled her chakra to manipulate the chakra in the seal itself. The chakra used to power the seal was overcome with a strange white chakra, which made the seal once a bright grey into a fading white. Kaguya smirked as she tossed Hiyashi aside, making him pass out. Hinata rushed to his side. What did you do? You made hand signs, but it didn't do anything Niji asked. I manipulated the chakra, in that case the bird's seal. Don't worry the seal is useless now it will fade. She smiled. Niji didn't believe it as he demanded proof. To prove her point she conjured a small mirror which showed Niji the fading seal. He looked at her in shock, this woman actually managed to free him from his cage. My lady words can't express how happy this makes me Niji said getting on his knees bowing. It's a fine child. Are there others with that seal? The others you speak of are the side branch. Well then round the Niji, it's time for the birds to be let loose. But Lady Kaguya, what will become of us? You and the side branch will become members of the Utsutsuki clan. I'm the last one of my clan, but I share Hayuga blood, which means you are my remaining family. Niji immediately hugged her which she returned as he took her to the side branch compound where he gathered them all before her. One by one she removed each of their seals and offered them admittance into the Utsutsuki clan. The side branch members agreed shouting and cheering for their newfound freedom. Kaguya smiled as she also announced that Niji will become her heir, her son, her legacy. Niji was quiet in shock and excitement with his new turn in his life. This woman not only saved them from a shackled life, but she's offering to take him in as her son. Packing up the side branch left with Kaguya their new clan head as they left their old life as Hayuga's behind. Chapter 13. You reap what you sow. Kaguya led the side branch Hayuga clan through the village, getting looks of shock and confusion. Many thoughts were going through their minds as to why the Hayuga clan is with Naruto's beautiful friend. They quickly noticed Niji with her as he was holding her hand quite tight, being nervous of a new life. Agriya sama where are we going? He asked, I know Kanoha doesn't have an Utsutsuki clan compound. You don't have to worry about Niji. I can create a compound in an instant as I have the ability to warp reality. Wow Niji said in awe. You must be very powerful. Lady Kaguya. Hinoka Hayuga asked. Agria looked at the 90-year-old woman, yes what is it? Tell me my lady why did you do this for us? Why go through all this trouble for us slaves of the Hayuga? Because I know what it's like to be sealed by your own family. Kaguya said coldly, shocking them. My own son sealed me away in the moon for centuries. Centuries? They asked as they all continued to walk. Yes, centuries, I'm the mother of all ninja clans and bloodlines. I was the first one to use chakra and I use it to end all wars on this planet. But after seeing humans misusing the power my sons gave them I grew angry. The humans used it for war instead of using it to bring everyone together. 
It was enough to make me sick to realize humans weren't meant to have chakra. So what changed your mind? Moro Uga, a little girl asked. A young sweet boy named Naruto Uzumaki Senju. She smiled as she remembered the day she met him and the time she spent with him. Any flashback? Naruto's seal mindscape, huh? Why would a beautiful lady like you be sealed inside of me? I am Kaguya, mother of all chakra. Kaguya, I am honored to be in your presence. Naruto praised her. Children stand up, do not bow. Well I appreciate the respect you shouldn't treat me like royalty. Said Kaguya. But my parents said those of great importance must be shown the proper respect. You certainly were raised right, Kaguya chuckled. Flashback scene change. It's terrible to treat a sentient being in such a manner, Naruto shouted, shocking Kaiubi and Kaguya. Flashback. Outside the seal. I was hoping we could spend the day together. You and me. I'm not sure the world is ready for me yet, Kaguya said nervously. I mean I once tried to eliminate mankind. Naruto moved closer to her and held her face in his hands, making her look at him. You're not that person anymore. Flashback. Hokage's office. It didn't feel right for someone like her to remain a prisoner after years of imprisonment. I mean I'm sure she spent enough time repenting. And flashbacks. Kaguya let the first tears in such a long time stream down her face. Niji was the first who noticed as the woman gently wiped her eyes. He knew who Naruto Senju was. He didn't know how much about him, but he could see he meant a lot to his savior. Madam, are you crying, okay? Niji asked. Oh I'm fine Niji, call me mother, since I'll soon be your new one. My mother died when I was really young. She hated being a side branch and tried to get the seal abolished. She even threatened to go to the daimyo about this. But she was tortured with that stupid seal until she died. My father secretly hated my uncle since it was he who performed it. Niji said hatefully, gripping his fist. Niji Kaguya said, kneeling down. I know what anger can do to someone I believe I know from experience. Don't let anger consume you or you will be led down the road of no return. I was just lucky to get a second chance even though I don't deserve it. But promise me you won't let your hate for the main branch define who you are. Niji nodded as he gave his word to not let his hatred and pain of the past affect his future and define his personality. Kaguya smiled as she led them towards the southern part of the village and took notice of the old compound. It was still in fine condition but could use a little cleaning up. This old compound used to belong to the clan before they were relocated outside of the village. Kaguya used her bloodline and her ability to control the elements and particles of reality. She moved her hand to the left as the chakra wind swept the compound, blowing away dust and other dirt particles, making the compound clean. This will form the Utsutsuki clan compound. Kaguya said calmly. Unpack your things in any house you wish in the compound. Niji will live with me in the main compound. The side branch members nodded as they headed into the compound and began to take refuge in the houses. Kaguya took Niji with her to the main former clan head house. It was beautiful, but she had to get rid of all the markings and other stuff first. Once that is finished then they can finally have a place to call home. Despite her being only a clone she was looking forward to a free life. Gazing up at the sky as she looked out the window, she let out a sincere smile. Thank you Naruto, you've given me my second chance. Thank you. My love. Mother are you alright? Niji asked. Kaguya turned to Niji I'm fine Sachi how about we go out to eat? That would be nice. I do know a nice barbeque place we can go to. Niji smiled. Hanahagakur. Main district. Naruto along with his mother Mido and his friends arrived at the Kanoha BBQ. The lunch was for the Akamichi clan. There were two long benches on each side of the long grill. Naruto was seated, of course, next to his buddy Sasuke. Shikamaru sat next to the right of Sasuke with Joji next to him and next to Shikamaru. On Naruto's left was Satsuki who was a major fan girl of Naruto's. Naruto hated it as he knew Satsuki only wanted to marry him due to his senju status. Mido Senju was gripping her knife as she despised fangirls, especially ones who wanted to use her son. Yeah, keep smiling, you skank. I'm not going to let you marry my Sachi. Mido growled, gripping the knife tighter. Naruto took notice of his mom's expression and the knife in her hand. He knew her anger was towards Satsuki as he gave her a look that said mom calm down, I got this Mido side dropping the knife to the table as she crossed her arms. On the other side of the grill opposite to Sai seated Lee, and to his right followed Kiba and Sakura, Ten Ten and to the farthest right, Shino. When they were all seated the waiter delivered the meat to the mana trolley. Whoa, did they order a bunch. It was 20 kilos of pork. Some of them wondered how they were going to finish all that, especially Ino and Sakura, but remembered that they had Chaoji. His clan was always known to overeat which raises their strength and stamina. Each started to place their own pieces of meat over the grill. And when the meat was done, they said in unison, I did Akamasu. And they started to eat. Wow your parents are great cooks, Naruto said with stars in his eyes. Thanks Naruto my mom is the best chef in the business. I have to admit Chia Akamichi's food is wonderful. Mido smiled. It's a bit better than my cooking. 
Uo mido sama you flatter me chia, Choji's mom complimented as she served another table. No I'm serious, could I borrow some of your recipes? I don't see why not. In fact I'd be honored. So Sasuke, how do you like the food? Naruto asked the raven. Oh, um, the barbecue is great. Replied the raven. I think the BBQ is great too, Satsuki giggled. Mind if I feed you? Naruto was kind of a little uneasy about seeing Satsuki flirt with him. Though he told himself that she's just being nice. It was just a bit too creepy, especially since she wanted to feed him. I'm fine, Satsuki, I can really feed myself. Satsuki backed off, you heard him, Sasuke said, with a kind of serious look on his eyes. I heard him team, but it's none of your business. I'm going to be the future lady. Like hell you will hear Mido and Sasuke growling. Is my brother getting jealous? Asked the fangirl in a teasing manner. A blush formed on Sasuke's face. It turned so red that Naruto took notice. Hey, your face is all red. Naruto said to the blushing raven. Um, it's the, it's the A, the heat. Yeah, the heat from the grill. That's why my face is red. Defended the raven. Oh really? Is that why? Satsuki asked again with a smirk. So Naruto, I heard you've been spending the afternoon with Kaguya. There's a rumor going around the village that you would make the cutest couple. Mido said in a teasing manner. Then mom Naruto stuttered blushing madly. It's not like that. I, I was just showing her a good time and great places around the village. Are you sure about that? Mido smiled, noticing Kaguya walking in with Niji. Yeah, I'll admit she's cute and a beautiful woman. But she deserves someone who can respect her, protect her, admire her. She's a sentient goddess with a hard past but a good heart. Who oh am I? Kaguya kissing Naruto on his cheek. Naruto felt the kiss and turned around to see Kaguya. She was dressed in a black tank top and blue short shorts which showed off her legs. Naruto soon got a nosebleed as he fainted backwards. Was the outfit too much? Kaguya added innocently. I wanted to keep up with modern fashion. Uo the outfit is fine, Mido said as she gestured to her to join them. So you're Kaguya. Kaguya and Niji took a seat across from Mido as Kaguya noticed the Uzumaki woman. She remembered from Naruto that this woman is his mother. She could read Mido's thoughts, and she could see Mido was very overprotective of Naruto. So you think you're good for my baby maelstrom do you? Mido said sweetly. I'll admit Naruto is a sweet boy, but I'm going to wait till he gets a little older before any sort of relationship starts. Kagri replied back just as sweetly. Just because you're a goddess doesn't mean I'll let you shag my son when he's older. Mido smiling again with her eye twitching. Naruto woke up immediately when he heard what his mom said. Man, sometimes his mom can be so embarrassing. Naruto admitted he had a crush on Kagri I mean who wouldn't. But he didn't want to rush and hey anyone was better than Satsuki right? At least Kagri was no fangirl. Are you insinuating I'm not good for someone like Naruto Kagri growling? You took the words right out of my mouth. Mido growled back as lightning flashed between them. You know what you look like a big cream puff with that kind of white hair. Kaguya's eye twitched as tick marks appeared on her forehead. She knew cream puffs were fat looking puffs and she took that insult hard. She thought Mido was calling her fat. Like you want to talk to Mido. Kaguya screamed, making Mido growl, making the lighting between them increase. Cream puff. Tomatoes. Cream puff. Tomatoes. Cream puff. Tomato. Cream puff. Tomato. All the children were shaking as they were getting scared of the two angry arguing Kinoichi. Shikamaru was mostly afraid because they reminded him of his mother Yoshino Nara. Sasuke and Choji learned from their fathers never to interfere with an argument between two pissed off women. Naruto was a bit braver as he tried to play peacekeeper. Now mom, moonlight let's just all calm down okay. There's no need to fight over me. Naruto chuckled nervously. I love you both anyway now come on we're supposed to be having fun and eating a nice prepared lunch. The two Kanoichi looked at Naruto who was begging them to keep their arguing on hold so they could enjoy their lunch. Kaguya and Midom fed at each other, turning away from one another as they sit down to eat their lunch. Uyu Naruto sighed in relief. Naruto sat down as he noticed Niji was sitting next to Kaguya. He was Hinata's cousin from the side branch. Hey, you must be Niji. I'm Naruto. Nice to meet you Naruto. Kaguya-sama spoke fondly of you. Well um thanks. How do you know her? She saved me and the side branch from the main branch of the Hyuga clan. She overpowered my uncle Hiyashi and freed us from the cage bird seal. He said with a smile. She offered us asylum in her clan and welcomed us as new members of the Utsutsuki clan. She took me in as her firstborn son as well. What? Mito coughed. You kidnapped half of the Hyuga clan. I wouldn't say kidnapped, I say liberated. Mito sama please don't be angry with mother, we owe her our lives. You could end up in a lot of trouble for this. Mito sighed. You may have started a civil war in the village. Boars don't scare me, Mito Kaguya said firmly. I can easily take down the main branch. Haki one aren't you? Shikamaru said lazily. Of course not, Kaguya smiled. Let's just enjoy our lunch shall we? 
Naruto asked, making everyone nod. Namika's clan compound, Minato was in his office going through some paperwork. Apparently the paperwork was marriage contracts for Menma and Naruto. The Namika's massacre was kept under lock and key. The daimyo was informed of the massacre a day after it happened. Lord Shun was informed all right he was informed in secret before it even happened. While he did mourn the loss of Anbu he didn't tolerate child abduction and forceful breeding. He agreed with Hashirama that the Namikas had to be punished. Yes he knew about Hashirama being alive, but he kept it all secret from Minato to not arouse suspicion. Anyway Minato got marriage contracts between Iwa and Mist, asking for the marriage of Inoki's granddaughter and Yugura himself to be engaged to Menma. Whereas Naruto was asked by Natashiko, the Amazon village and by Kumo to better the Naruto to Yujito Nai the Nibi and the Natashiko leader's eldest twin daughters. Minato knew that these marriages would indeed strengthen the Namika's clan and even bring new bloodlines and another into the clan. Minato immediately signed the contracts and asked Minako, his cousin, to send the replies straight away. Minako nodded to her cousin and set off to deliver the marriage contract signed by him. Do bad Minato had no authority to marry off Naruto, since he's not actually his anymore. Minato knew that even though Naruto was adopted he was still his father, so these marriages will help reel Naruto in. Were you well that takes care of that. Minato sighed in relief. With Awagakur and my clan's alliance, it will end the bad blood between us. Plus with Kumo Naruto will be able to bring powerful children born from two, giving us a whole new breed or bloodline. I didn't know Yugura was gay, but still it will bring us two anyway. Enjoying yourself a cold voice rang out. Who's there? Show yourself. Who forgotten me already? Minato looked to see the door and the walls warped a little as a dark-haired woman with beautiful but deadly features stepped out. The Yandane could tell from the markings that it was the Shinigami herself. What did she want this time? Didn't she do enough to take Naruto from them? What are you doing here haven't you taken enough from us? Minato shouted bravely. Minato 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 ha 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 of course she growled. I'm here to claim the debt that you owe me from that night six years ago. Remember you summoned me to seal away the Kaiubi into your two sons. And I spared your life out of mercy. But you betrayed that when you left Naruto on his own and abandoned him. It was necessary as the prophecy we were given by the great toad sage was accurate. Therefore Menma was the one it spoke of and he came first. Besides, Naruto will understand when we come back for him. Suddenly the Shinigami gripped his neck and held him up to her face. He tried screaming, but the Shinigami told him that no one would hear him since she placed silence barriers around the office. Prophecies aren't sealed in stone you idiot. They constantly change with each event that passes. As for your great toad sage, he's not the one who is supposed to give prophecies that belong to my daughter Delphi. Only she has the power to give true prophecies. Your old man Toad probably overheard it. You. You lie what could you possibly know of prophecies? You're the goddess of death, nothing more. Minato barked. A child will be born from the mighty tree. He will have powers of ancients long forgotten. With the power of the divine beast he will save the world or its destruction. If shrouded in darkness the child of prophecy will bring death to all in its path. If shrouded in love and light the child will bring the cycle of hatred to an end. He will bear the light of the moon and will use its power to bring peace. Yeah yeah but you never heard the full prophecy. What do you mean full prophecy? Minato asked. The child born with the aid of the Lady of Wide and Demon of Fire shall bring an era of understanding. If the Chosen shall lose his light half, darkness will consume him. The child of fire and light will shine bright upon a peaceful future. That's it? Minato asked again. Yes, that's Minato. You screwed up big time. You actually believe that Menma is the one the prophecy speaks of? She laughed coldly. Menma is the child of prophecy and I will prove it. He will be an era of peace to the world, and you'll see that I was right. The death goddess growled, really, and you believe Naruto will just be some sort of backup in case something goes wrong? Because I heard you're planning on placing him in the Namika's side branch and be used as a breeding tool for the Mokuten. That I can't allow. You have no business here, the goddess of fate you, Yami, Kami can't interfere with mortal affairs. Minato snarled. Now kindly let me go and be on your way. I have work to do and I have to get back to my son to teach him. Angered by the disrespect she threw him against the door as the Yandame hit with a loud grunt. Panting he looked up to the Shinigami as she stared down at him with disgust. You think you can order me around mortals? You think just because you think Menma is the prophecy child you can talk down to me and treat me like I'm some kind of commoner? Oh no Minato, for this disrespect I can't leave you unpunished. Be punished. Minato shivered. For your insolence I shall take away from you the bloodline and most of our chakra that made you what the mortals call the yellow flash. You are undeserving of it, and so I will remove the Horatian and 60% of your chakra from your body. You will then learn what it means to suffer just like you made Naruto. She said harshly, reaching out her hand towards Minato. No. Minato whimpered. Noo. Chapter 14. Kashina's Hellish Nightmare. 
pain, that's right pain was the main thing that occupied Minato's thoughts, as he lay in a disjointed haze of pain on one of the emergency room tables. A small army of doctors and nurses were currently working over him in a fevered swarm of barely controlled chaos, pushing, prodding, sticking him with needles and tubes, calling for blood and more units of drugs he had never heard of before, or could ever hope to understand how they were supposed to drive back the encroaching rush of blood or patch the gapping slash across his stomach that was steadily draining him of life. It looked like Minato was attacked by a savage beast. But that was quickly debunked as the slashes were infused with some sort of dark energy. It felt cold with a smell of death. Apparently what they didn't know was that Shinigami might have gone overboard after she removed the Horatian and 60% of his chakra. They didn't know it was the death goddess and it was better that way. The piss off one of the trio sisters was a death sentence. Minato grunted as he felt every poke, prod, etc. as they were desperately trying to stabilize him and keep him alive. How did things get this bad? Why was the goddess punishing him for trying to save the world? Why risk everything because of the sake of a single boy? Why? These thoughts went through his mind as he just laid there. One meeting in moved forward to press a square of gauze to his shredded stomach. As she leaned back again to give one of the doctors access to the seeping wound. He saw that her latex gloved hand was now painted a disturbingly vivid shade of red all the way up to her wrist. That was the second major thing to register in his fading conscience. He supposed it was only natural seeing as how they'd stripped him of all his clothes from the waist up after Jurea had carried him through the emergency room door screaming for help. His mother was using most of her chakra to prevent the dark plasmic-like energy from reaching any of the internal organs, basically the heart. She was also overlooking the nurses who were able to extract the plasmic fluid via hose into a container. The plasmic was like a black liquid with purple energy waves. Once fully extracted they started to get him prepared for surgery. On the far side of the room over the tops of his toes, Minato could just make out a set of double doors with large glass windows. On the other side of the glass, standing outside in the hallway looking in, were his wife and son along with his sensei. The red-haired Kinoichi stood with her face almost pressed right up against the glass, desperately watching the knot of meeting in working over him. Her eyes were bloodshot and red, her cheeks wet and streaked with uncontrolled tears. She was shaking violently, the back of one hand pressed against her lips, as if struggling to hold in her ragged sobs. She stared at him through the window with watery green eyes, as if silently begging him to somehow pull through. Off to her side, standing slightly back from the door more near the middle of the hall, his son Menma looked on in blankness and could see the worried expression on his face. Menma was greatly concerned for him and his well-being. His son looked up to him and he was afraid that he wasn't going to survive. Gareya was most concerned for his student. He was the son that old Toad never had. He took pride in his students and his accomplishments. He felt like a proud father when he first met and trained him. But seeing him in critical condition and not knowing who attacked him. The vowed for vengeance against the one who attacked his surrogate son. Blood pressure 70 over 55 and dropping. A nurse standing near Minato's head called out. Damn it. The doctor on his left shouted again and hurriedly grabbed another unidentifiable medical instrument from one of the nurses and leaned back down over his shredded abdomen. His hands and the lower portion of his forearms were completely covered with blood and clotted gore. Ashi, call Hikari up in surgery and tell her to have an operating room ready for us. Once we get my son stabilized we're going to have to move him there fast. Blood pressure 65 over 50. The nurse called. Sachi. Minato-kun, look at me. Sanadi yelled as her strong hands began to shake his shoulder. Groggily blinking his eyes up at the one so insistently calling his name, he gave a weak twitchy smile under the oxygen mask that had been fitted over the lower portion of his face. Sanadi kasan He whispered in a watery cough. He was taken aback by how weak his voice sounded even to his own ears. There was also the faint taste of blood now in the back of his mouth, as if speaking had dislodged something and released a proverbial dam. Tsunade stared down at him in unconcealed horror. Her amber eyes were filled with panic, her usually immaculate blonde hair must entangled, as if she hadn't slept in weeks. Sachi, what happened? She demanded, unconsciously gripping his shoulder tighter as she frantically stared into his eyes. Her grip was beginning to verge on being painful. Minato couldn't help but feel guilty for being the one to put that frightened pain-filled look on her face. SS Shiniga Ami he coughed as he passed out. The fiery possessive look flared in Sanadi's eyes, and she speared the doctor with a poisonous glare that would have instantly turned him to ash if it were physically possible. Straightening from over her son, she turned to the nearest nurse and hissed, get me a pair of gloves. I'm taking over. None of the doctors or medical personnel dared contradict the female Sanan as the nurse timidly handed Sanadi a pair of latex gloves and scurried to the other side of the emergency room to get as far away from her as she could. Don't worry, brat, Sanadi said as she snapped the gloves on and forced one of the other doctors to give up his spot by the table, with nothing more than a glare. You're going to be alright, I promise. 
Outside of the operation room Kashima was sitting with Menma. Menma couldn't even sit still due to his worry about his dad's condition. Kashina was another story, she wondered how something like this could have happened. The compound was secured with powerful seals to prevent outside threats after the Namika's massacre from Mito Uzumaki. The seals were powered by a triple matrix seal that encircled the compound with a powerful electric barrier that would fry anyone who dares touch it or tries to mess with it. The seal would also alert everyone within the compound if any intruder ever managed to get in. So what went wrong? Who managed to not only sneak in but assault her husband, the most feared man in the shinobi world. She knew it couldn't be Iwa Shinobi, since they fear him. Kumo was out of the question due to A's respect for him. Kurigakur wouldn't bother since they are in a civil war. Suna was the weakest so they didn't pose a threat. Suddenly it all came back to Mido, her clansman. But Mido already proved her point by killing most of the clan and leaving an impact. Plus she was a sealing mistress so she couldn't exactly rule her out for coming back for revenge. Who oh why did things have to go wrong? Why couldn't anyone just let fate do her job? This is Namakas. A nurse said. Yes. Is my husband okay? Kashina panicked. Well your husband is stable. He suffered from seven broken ribs, his right leg was broken in six places. His broken rib cage almost pierced his lungs. His fingers were broken by most of them. His body was also infected with an unknown black liquid plasma in his blood. We managed to extract it all and heal his injuries. But that's where the good news end. What's the bad news? She was scared to know the answer. Whatever that plasma was. It apparently removed 60% of your husband's chakra. We tried to reverse it, but for some reason it affected your husband's chakra pools from replenishing what was lost. His chakra pools themselves have also shrunk to that of the civilian-born shinobi. Ashina covered her mouth with tears streaming down her face. She had no idea the extent of her husband's injuries and how far his assailant went. I'm sorry Kashina-sama, but I'm afraid your husband won't be as powerful as he used to be. I'm sorry the nurse apologized. You should head home, we will call you when the surgery is over. Get some rest. Kashina nodded as she left the hospital with her son. She wanted to stay with her husband, but the nurse was right. After all Tsunade was the greatest medic in the world. If anyone can save her husband she can. On the way to the Namika's compound she dropped Menma off at his friend's house because of a sleepover they were having. After kissing Menma goodbye she walked down the streets and towards the compound. When she arrived she unlocked the security seal which allowed her access before relocking it. Namika's compound main house. Humming to herself she entered the main house and headed into the kitchen to make herself some ramen. The sweet smell of the ramen filled the air as she poured herself a bowl and sat down at the table. While eating she felt a cold wind like chill. Did she leave the window open? Did I leave the window open? Kashina asked herself. It's freezing. She quickly noticed it was open as she walked over and shut the window. Wiping her forehead she headed back to the table. Until she heard what sounded like whispers. Traitor. 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 The voices whispered. Who's there? Kashina shouted thinking there was an intruder. Show yourself. Traitor. 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 Kashina started to panic, she could hear them, but she couldn't see them. But how did they get in? Acting on instinct she grabbed a large kitchen knife from the kitchen and moved slowly so as to not be caught by surprise. Suddenly the lights went out and the temperature dropped quickly to a freezing temperature. Uwak now Kashina was scared as she started to hyperventilate. The house began to shake as the floor began to break apart. Kashina screamed as she rushed to the door as she gripped the door trying to pull it open. The door didn't budge, but the knob came off. She gasped as she saw the floor breaking apart more. Quick on her feet she rushed upstairs to seek shelter in her room. When reaching the top of the step she noticed someone at the end of the hall. Hello. She said, still clutching her knife. Are you the intruder who's responsible for this? If so I demand you fix this and leave immediately. When she got closer she noticed it was a boy around the age of 6 or 7. He had spiky red hair that was similar to Minato's. The boy was also dressed in a white shirt with an Uzumaki insignia on the back and black Hakama shorts. Could it be? Could it actually be? Could it be Naruto? Naruto? Kishina said softly. The boy was staring at the wall not responding. Maybe the boy didn't quite hear her. Kashina decided to try again this time with more motherly instinct. She then immediately noticed a deathly figure appear next to him. She gasped as she recognized that spirit anywhere, the Shinigami had appeared once again. Until three others appeared, two Yuzumaki women and one male. They turned around to reveal Hashi and Yakin her parents and the founder herself. Well well look what the cat dragged and Shinigami smirked. You. Kashina roared. Leave us be. We've suffered enough from you. Who owes someone's testy the goddess laughed. And no you haven't. You see I was talking with some of your deceased Yuzumakis and like me aren't very happy with you. Kashina recognized the ghosts immediately, it was her parents Yakin and Hashi and the founder herself Anita Yuzumaki. But why would they be here? Why would they come to visit her when they've never done it before? 
she was going to find out. Father? Mother? Anita Sama Kashina said before her father interrupted her. How could you do this Kashina, I raised my daughter better than this. Yakin shouted. I didn't raise my daughter to forsake her own kin. I raised you with good morals and branded the Yuzumaki creed into your brain. I did not forsake my son's father Kashina. What would you call it then? He asked with a raised eyebrow. It's called protection, he would be safe within the village while Minato and I train Menma to control the Kaiubi's chakra. You could have raised him in the leaf village Hashi scolded. Naruto held the soul and it would be dangerous to have the two of them together. The Kaiubi would be allowed to slowly absorb its chakra back into its body. Kashina explained. You could have had Sanadi to stay behind and take care of him. She is his grandmother after all. Anita said coldly. Sanadi was needed with us. If Menma ever lost control and hurt himself she would be there to heal him. Kashina replied defensively. Besides, Shizun stayed in Kanoha so she could take care of him. You're his mother, you're the one who had to raise him. Hashi screamed. I did this to protect both of my sons. Besides, Naruto will be back with us when we return to Kanoha in a few days. Menma will have his brother back and the prophecy will be on its way to fulfillment. Hashi and Yakin shook their heads at the daughter's arrogance and belief in someone as stupid as a prophecy. The Uzumaki clan never believed in such nonsense. The only time they would believe it if Lady Delphi herself was the one who foretold it. Hearing it from an old toad was not evidence enough that this prophecy was even real. You've lost your way Kashina. You've abandoned and betrayed the Uzumaki creed that we Uzumakis have followed since Anita Sama, the granddaughter of Indra Utsutsuki, founded the clan. Yakin said in disappointment. I've done no such thing. Kashina argued. We of the swirling tide value camaraderie and family above all others. United we thrive, severed we fall. We swear upon Lady Anita that family will always come first. No outsider inside force will come before it. We the Yuzumaki clan swear to uphold the sacred creed and leave no family behind. Anita recited glaring at Kashina. You broke the very creed I created. You left Naruto behind. You abandoned him for a prophecy. We the ancestors of the Yuzumaki clan find you unworthy of the clan name and its sacred blood. You can't be serious. I already told you the reason for all this, Kashina said, stomping her feet. The need of the many outweighs the need of the few. Naruto will understand when we come back from him. Besides, he won't be under any threat. Kaiubi's soul is powerless oh there is no harm. Ubaka. Anita screamed. A tailed beast's soul is more manipulative than its chakra. Naruto could very well turn to the tailed beast for comfort if he ever learned of your abandonment of him. Naruto will be fine. Like I said, Nido is there with him. Speaking of Naruto, he already knows you abandoned him. Shinigami laughed. That's right, apparently he's met Kaiubi and the fox told him. Then Naruto knows. Kashina stuttered. He wasn't supposed to know until we came back. You're lying, there is no way Naruto could have met the fox. The seal was designed to separate Naruto from the soul until a certain age. Ooh I'm telling the truth Kashina. Hahahaha <laughs> in fact Naruto already hates you and your husband. He doesn't hate Menma though since he believes his brother had nothing to do with this. Ha Naruto would never hate us, Kashina said bravely though secretly was afraid it might be true. Don't believe me, well go ahead and ask him yourself. The goddess gestured to the boy standing next to her. Naruto it's me it's mommy Kashina smiled. The boy slightly turned his head to the right, acknowledging the woman calling out to him. Kashina was breathing a sigh of relief. If this was Naruto then perhaps Shinigami returned him to her. She smiled warmly until the boy turned around. It was Naruto except half of his face and body were decayed and rotting. Like Amelia Croftral in Tomb Raider Underworld. His clothes from the front were torn and bloody. He bore a similar resemblance to the goddess Hell. No. Kashina said, backing away as the boy slowly started to walk slowly towards her. No. 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 The boy was indeed Naruto, but Kashina couldn't believe what she was seeing. It looks like her son went through a blender or something or walked through acid. Its appearance was horrifying as if from a horror film. She had to be dreaming. This had to be a dream, she tried to desperately wake up, but found out quickly this was all real. What sort of trick is this? Kashina shivered. It's no trick you wanted to see Naruto. Well here he is or what remains of his former self. The goddess laughed darkly, sending shivers up Kashina's spine. You abandoned me Kas and the Naruto thrall replied. Why didn't you love me like Menma? Kashina was sweating and panting heavily. Her heart was racing as the creature was coming closer. She tried to move, but it was like she was frozen in place due to the amount of fear she was feeling. Naruto please I don't abandon you. I love you as much as Menma Kashina screamed as she started sobbing. No Ka-san is lying, the thrall shouted. You never loved me. You wanted Menma because he would save the world. The creature continued its way closer to Kashina as it stopped to pick up the knife that Kashina dropped when she tried backing away. She sobbed as she saw him pick it up. Fearing she was going to die she begged for her life. Please Naruto please don't kill me. 
I'm sorry for abandoning you. She cried as he stepped forward closer and closer with every step. Please Naruto please spare me. Please spare me please please please. She immediately remembered her back a kunai in her waist pouch as she took it out and thrusted it into Naruto. She panted as the creature looked at her and cried. Suddenly the thrall exploded into a pool of blood drenching her in the red liquid. She screamed as she tried to wipe it off her body. She thrashed and rolled around trying to wipe it all off until she suddenly passed out on the floor. The Jinjutsu faded as Shinigami and the Yuzumaki spirits looked upon her body. Well that was entertaining, the goddess laughed. I wish I could have tortured Minato that way. You think Kishina had learned her lesson? Anita asked. Knowing her, she'll probably think it was just a nightmare. Yakin scoffed. Still think she deserved more than what he gave her. Ooh yes thanks for reminding me I almost forgot. The death goddess knelt down before Kashina as she held her palm wide open as Kashina's body glowed dark purple. Suddenly chakra chains came out of her body and were absorbed into the goddess's hand. Kashina's chakra chains were slowly being removed from her body while her chakra pools were undergoing a slight change. They were still large, but their potency which all Yuzumakis have were becoming less and less potent. Which meant her longevity was cut in half. Normally Yuzumakis can live to 200 years at best, but now Kashina will live up to at least 80 to 100 years old. Her knowledge of all Yuzumaki seals were stripped from her mind. But she was allowed to keep the seals that would help keep Menma in check if he ever lost control of its chakra. Not that it would do her any good. After a few good minutes Shinigami was finished. Kashina's bloodline and knowledge of the Yuzumaki sealing arts were gone, her longevity was cut in half, and her special chakra to manifest solid objects was gone for good. She was of course allowed to reproduce, but her children and grandchildren will never carry Yuzumaki blood unless they marry into the Yuzumaki clan itself. The goddess then moved the unconscious woman to her bed, so when she wakes up it will be like she had a horrible nightmare. I think we've overstayed our welcome. It's time we left for the netherworld. Our work is done here, the goddess chuckled. Will Kishina remember any of this? Hashi asked. Your daughter will this day Hashi. It will be a day she will never forget. Why did you give her back the ability to reproduce? We had Kishina and Sanadi remain barren. We also stripped them of their bloodline. Anita demanded an answer. You may have been able to punish her, but you only made her bloodline and blood dormant, which meant she still had it in her body. However I decided to tweak it a bit. I fully removed and absorbed her Yuzumaki bloodline and cut her longevity in half. Also I gave back her ability to reproduce. Her children and grandchildren will be full with no drop of Yuzumaki blood. But Minato is quarter Yuzumaki due to being Tsunade's son, said Hashi. Oh I took care of that, Minato's Yuzumaki blood was removed when I punished him. He still sends you by blood, but no blood relation to your clan. Unless of course you want her to always have a miscarriage. No, we will allow her to reproduce. Anita sighed. But at least she will never breed Yuzumaki children again. What about Tsunade? Yakin asked. Who leave that old woman to me. But that being said the spirits vanished from the Namika's compound, leaving a soon-to-be traumatized Kashina and a beaten down Minato in the hospital. If Tsunade or Jiraiya catch wind of the Shinigami being responsible for both attacks, they better pray to Kami for protection if the death goddess dares to come after them next. They don't know it yet, but if they do catch wind of it, then they better start praying. Chapter 15. Namika's return and Tabarama restored. It has been a few months since the whole Kashina incident, as we find Naruto Senju on his favorite swing under the big tree outside of the academy. He loved that spot so much, it was where he and his mother used to have their picnics. Naruto was as happy as a six years old can be, and he was excited about beginning the academy. Normally the academy for students begins when you're eight, but Hashirama wanted the children to be better prepared for the cold life of a shinobi. The students would then graduate at 13 as always, but this new change was good, especially for the non-shinobi clan-born students. Naruto was happily swinging while reading his favorite story. Kurama was on his left side sleeping in the shade in his fox form. He was the size of an adult version of Akamaru. The fox was released from the seal a few months ago, with the help of Madara and Mido herself. The process was painful but worth the wait. The fox was still bound to the seal though via a soul link that connected the two of them together. The fox now turned over on his back rubbing around against the grass, trying to get into a good sleeping position. Naruto laughed as he closed his book and jumped off the swing. Walking over, Naruto knelt down and began scratching Kurama's belly. He was shocked when he noticed his tails were waving. Did Kurama like his belly scratched ha who knew? Grumbling and opening his eyes he noticed scratching his belly. He quickly moved onto his belly and looked at the boy. Aki why were you rubbing my belly? Kurama asked. Sorry Kurasan, but you were on your back in your sleep and I thought you wanted one. Plus your tails were wagging. Naruto smiled innocently. Kurama sweat dropped hearing that. He wasn't some puppy that craved attention from his owner. But still he had to admit it did feel nice and he and Naruto did get along. 
Sighing he told Naruto that he can give him belly rubs, but only in private, since he didn't want word getting out that the greatest tail beasts in the world likes belly rubs. The blonde nodded his head in agreement. Naruto turned around and leaned back to snuggle into his side. This kid has really grown on me, Kaiubi chuckled as he wrapped his tails around the boy. All tired out is he? A voice spoke. Hirama turned to see Hashirama. The fox looked back at the gaki and nodded his head. Out like a light. Though I thought Yuzumakis and Senjus had amazing stamina and energy to stay up for hours. Well that's true, but not everyone is gifted with that Hashirama laughed as he knelt down and ran his hand through his son's hair. So how are you enjoying your freedom, Kurama? Not complaining. Although I enjoy the sweet fresh air and wind against my face. I don't enjoy the looks from certain people that I've been receiving. I have no quarrel with the mortals that hate me. But I am concerned about the breast's welfare. How so? The Hokage asked. Even if 98% of the village accepts me and Naruto as a Jinchuriki. The other 2% though small can still pose a threat to the boy. Even if he's your son that alone won't stop them. People have betrayed the village for less. But they know you're close and protective of the boy. They wouldn't risk angering you. Like I said Hashirama even the stupidest of men would take a risk if it meant ridding the village of Naruto. Kaiubi answered coldly. Hashirama knew that no matter what the era, conflict will always happen. He knew firsthand how they were treated, but he believed his village to be different. But even that is wishful thinking, yes 98% love Naruto and accept Kurama, but the last 2% still fear for their lives. Fear is natural, he knows that and humans fear what they don't understand. But even still anyone who threatens or harms his son be it friend, ally, enemy, or family he will never forgive them and will put an end to them. So any word from you know who? Kurama asked growling when he said you know who. Hashirama nodded. Yes, I received a letter from my granddaughter that the Namaka's family is arriving tonight via royal escort by the daimyo. Minato from what I heard was attacked while in his home, and his wife Kashina suffered a traumatic experience from some unknown source. Based on what Sanadi said in her letter Minato's chakra reserves have shrunk to that of a low. Kashina however is physically fine, but her ability to use chakra chains have vanished. Also her mind seemed to have suffered quite a bit. Hirama took a moment to think for a minute of what kind of entity could do something that like. There were many demons and other beings that were capable of such damage. But something that involves chakra and bloodline loss was something different. He swore he knew someone that could do it, but quite put his claw on it. Any clues that they might have on who did it. The only clue they had was someone with long black hair and red eyes. Hashirama shrugged. Wait for dark hair and red eyes. Ooh, Kurama grinned. You know something. The only person capable of this is the Shinigami. She has the ability to punish humans in the most sadistic way. She also has the ability to take away abilities from people. Plus she is the only female deity with the darkest black hair and red eyes. Plus she must be punishing Minato for breaking her deal. It all fits. So they won't pose a threat trying to get Naruto back. Hashirama sighed in relief. Don't underestimate Minato nor Kashina Hashirama. They may be weak now, but they've overcome much worse than what happened to them, believe me. Yuzumakis are very stubborn, your wife is a good example. Plus Minato is a genius, a very rare one I might add which I hate admitting. So even in their weakened state just remember. A cornered animal is the most dangerous. He couldn't agree more with the nine tails. Minato was a powerful shinobi even with his flying thunder god, which was based on his brother Tabaramas. Yuzumakis were among the greatest of Fuenjutsu users and they had very potent chakra and long lifespans. But Hashirama believed he could handle them due to him being the god of shinobi. But he shouldn't get too cocky. Their conversation continued for a few hours when Naruto somehow woke up from his mid-afternoon nap. Yawning, he noticed that his father had come to see him. His dad Naruto smiled. Hello, Maelstrom. Sleep well. Yeah, a good afternoon nap after playing ninja with Sasuke and Niji tired me out. I can see you formed a great friendship with the two. Speaking of which, how is Niji doing? Hashirama asked. Hashirama knew from the Hyuga clan what Kaguya had done. Hiashi burst into his office in full blunt rage, explained the situation, and demanded the head of Kaguya for her crimes. Kaguya was called to his office to explain her side of the story. She told him about a certain seal that was used to keep the side branch in line. She also told him the effects of the seal and what it does to the person's mincet. He was infuriated with this kind of slavery. He dealt with many disobedient senjas during his time, but never would result in barbaric enslavement. He chewed Hiashi out and tore him a new one. He couldn't interfere with clan affairs so he couldn't do anything. However Kaguya managed to win the day by gaining custody of the side branch and adopting them into her old clan Utsutsuki. He remembered Hiashi's horrified expression as he knew the power and prestige of the Utsutsuki clan. To save face Hiashi gave up the side branch to Kaguya which saved him from any political embarrassments. Niji is doing great too-san. He's settling in well as are the others. 
However I'm a little weirded out that when I one day marry Kaguya, I'll have to call Niji my stepson. But I like him more like a big brother. What about that fangirl of yours? The one who has a crush on you? The one who's trying to impress Madara Kurama teased making the boy fume. Miro Fox she's not my fangirl and I'm not into her okay. Naruto yelled. Don't put images like that in my head. Kurama and Hashirama laughed at his little tantrum as the fox stood up and shook his body. Hashirama picked up his son and was going to take him to the compound for dinner. Apparently Makoto invited them over for a special dinner. He then carried his son by piggyback as Naruto wrapped his arms around his neck. They walked down the street where many greeted them on their way to the compound. On their way there Kurama took a right much to their confusion. I'll meet you all there. I have to take care of something. The fox said, taking a shortcut to the graveyard. Ashirama and Naruto just shrugged and left the fox to his own business. When they left some of the villagers and yes you guessed it, fox haters decided to follow it and end it. Crepting through the shadows they took notice of the fox heading into the graveyard. Deep deep into the graveyard till he came to a halt. The shinobi stood in the shadows waiting for a moment to strike. The fox sat down before a tombstone which read. Beer lies Tabarama Senju, the great shinobi, the faithful brother, a devoted friend, it's been a long time since my old friend. Kurama chuckled, wiping his eyes. I'm sorry I haven't been here as much as I hoped. But things have been a bit busy for me. But a lot of good things happened, I made a new friend, your nephew Naruto. Your brother and sister-in-law were brought back from the grave. To raise me who was abandoned by his real ones. Thanks to the brad I am finally able to walk in the real world again. But still I wish you were still here Toby. I still blame myself for not being able to protect you during the second war when Mito allowed me freedom to fight by your side. Hirama was allowed freedom after the first war but was still bound to Mito. He was allowed free reign as long as he behaved. Tabarama and him at first hated each other. But somehow not really sure how they managed to create a civilized friendship. Not best friends but still friends. After Hashirama died Kurama was always there for Tabarama which the guy thanked him for. Their friendship soon became a close companionship. Maybe even more than that. Kurama would always fight alongside Minato or Tabarama in battle. Until that fateful day during the Second Shinobi War. When Tabarama chose to sacrifice himself for his village. It was the last battle they ever fought together and it was one he regretted. Tabarama was struck down by a sneak attack with an explosive tag attached to a kunai. Kurama remembered going into rage and killing every enemy ninja there. Once he calmed down he tried applying his chakra to his wounds. He was bleeding too fast and many internal organs were damaged. Kurama tried much to his ability but Tabarama told him that he was okay. He did his job and he did it for the village. Kurama remembered his blood-covered paws as he looked down on the lifeless body of his closest friend. Tabarama was more than just a friend. Unknown to the second Hokage, Kurama was in love with Tabarama. The rest of the story was history. Tabarama cried tears as they dropped to the ground. I can sense you shinobi. Come on out. The group consisted of 4 and 15 villagers. They all carried pitchforks and armed themselves with multiple weapons. We are here to avenge our loved ones that you killed. The Hokage may believe your sorry sob story, but we don't. We know better. The day you die a demon and maybe your son will be free of your influence. Hirama stood and rose to his feet as he turned around and glared at them. Why oh you should know better than to threaten someone like me. Especially when I'm in such a bad mood. Hirama charged at them as they charged in return hoping to finally end the fox. But boy were they outnumbered. Ooh so very wrong, Kurama was not only able to overpower them, but he dismembered each of them slowly and painfully. Legs ripped off, bodies ripped open while still alive. Heck even one of the ninja was dissected. Kurama showed no mercy as the ground was spilled and stained with blood. Anting sat back down and began licking the blood off him. When he heard a clapping sound behind him. Now that's what I call a show. The fox turned to see an old woman well, more like a hag. She was short and had a humped back. Her teeth were rotten and her skin was wrinkled and saggy. Who are you? He asked warningly. I mean you no harm Kurama. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Gilda, I'm the embodiment of time and age. What is someone like you doing here? And how do you know my name? I know all about you Kurama from your birth to your life right now. I also know of your relationship with Tabarama Senju. She laughed before coughing. I can sense great distress and hurt in your heart. You blame yourself for his death do you not? That's none of your business old hag. Temper temper just like a child. Well I have come here on Kamisama's wishes. I'm here to give you this. She holds out a bottle of silver water. This vial contains water from the very river of eternal life. Sprinkle this water on any dead body and they will fully be restored to the age of when they first died. What's the catch? Kami wouldn't just give this for free. There is always a price for something like this Kurama scoffed at the woman's offer. Naruto's fate is critical and we must ensure that nothing interferes with its progression. 
You are a critical part of Karama, you are the demon of fire that the prophecy speaks of. Your loyalty to the Senju is unquestionable. Which is admirable, but you've been easily turned away by other means like Madara for example. What's your point lady? My point is in order for you to not be tempted by outside forces to steer you away from Naruto. We needed a way to keep you on the right track. So we decided to resurrect Taburama. Maybe just maybe he can keep you safe. Taburama died for this village, I understood that a long time ago. I'm loyal to the village no question there. But I will not abandon or turn away from the village. Kaiubi roared. But you do wish to have Taburama back don't you? Thinking about it, she hands him the vial as she vanishes out of sight. Harama looked down at the vial in his hand. Is this really what he wants? Does he really want Taburama back after the sacrifice he made? So many thoughts were conflicting in his mind. Was it right to resurrect a man who proudly gave his life for his home? A man who chose to die rather than see the village fall. A man who Karama highly respected. Sure he missed his friend, but was it enough to disturb his resting place? Taking a deep breath he thought for a moment. Thinking of the benefits and cons of this decision. The benefits were that Naruto would have an extra family member if Hashirama Armido would somehow pass away young. Naruto could also benefit in Elemental as Taburama was a master water ninjutsu user who could conjure up water without any water source nearby. The cons would be Hashirama would be furious about this, not to mention Taburama if he was returned to life. Naruto needed all the help he could get and what's the harm with one more senju? It would help the numbers grow quicker. Plus Taburama could keep Madara on a tight leash, so that was a score in Karama's book. Gripping the vial he made his decision. Leaning down he used his chakra to crumble the earth till the casket was revealed. Pulling off the lid there laid Taburama perfectly preserved via preservation seals, which kept the body intact and well guarded against the elements. Uncorking the vial he opened the man's mouth and poured the liquid down his throat. Stepping back he waited to see if anything happened. After a few moments he started to think that this whole vial thing was pure bullshit. I mean only Shinigami and Kami have the power of resurrection. He couldn't believe he allowed himself to be conned. Until he heard what sounded like a groan. Karama looked wide-eyed as Taburama was grunting and flinching a bit as his eyes started to flutter open. What? Where am I? Taburama groaned trying to get up. Nindame looked around and noticed he was in a hole in the ground and quickly noticed the outline of the casket. Was he brought back to life? Did someone use the reanimation he got up slowly as he could till he saw a certain paw in front of him. He looked up and noticed the Kaiubi in his sight. Hey Karama is that you? He asked. Who else would it be if you crinkle a sack of water Karama teased. Yep that is definitely Karama. Taburama sighed. Mind telling me what's going on? Do you want the long or the short version? Give me the short version. He groaned. There was a boy named Naruto Senju born to Minato Senju Namikas, your great grandson and his wife Kashina Yuzumaki. He was born with a twin brother named Menma. I was forced to attack the village after I was ripped from Kashina. I was defeated and sealed into the twins. Naruto got mine and Menma got my chakra. Afterwards there was a prophecy about a child who would bring peace to the shinobi world. Minato and his family believed it to be Menma, so they abandoned Naruto and took Menma with them to their compound in the capital. Shinigami found out and was furious, so she punished Minato and Kishina, but not before resurrecting Hashirama and Mito to raise Naruto as their son who is known biologically there. Minato and Kishina are coming back to Konoha to get Naruto back and claim him. Also Madara is alive as well, and some old lady of time gave me this vial of water that would bring you back from the dead so you can help protect Naruto and help him fulfill his destiny. I said give me the short version. Taburama said coldly till he sighed. Hirama pulled him out of the hole as he wondered how he was going to explain this to the Hokage and Mido. Taburama stretched a bit to get used to his body after being dead for almost 90 years. He then asked Kurama to tell him more about the prophecy and how Naruto was doing. Kurama took the time to explain everything so that Taburama could be up to date with everything that happened. I seem to think my grandniece and great-grandnephew could sink that low. Taburama hissed. However I'm glad the boy is doing alright. Though I'm upset that Madara is still alive. I hope the crow-sucking bastard remained dead, but it seems my idiot brother once again decided to show mercy to that bastard. Don't worry he's changed and for the better as much as I hate him. He has changed. Kurama said. HMPH someone of his caliber can't just change on a whim. If you want me to truly believe he's changed then I'll see it for myself. Always the cold untrusting man even back during the first and second shinobi wars. The fox laughed. So where is my idiot brother now? Your brother and his family are at the compound about to have dinner with Makoto Ichiha and her family. Care to join them? Sure I'm always up for a little dinner and a little drama once I make my appearance. Alright then let's be off Karama said, taking the scenic route away from anyone as this was to remain a secret for now. But the Namaka's family, a well-decorated carriage was coming towards the front gate of the leaf village. 
the two guards at the door noticed the design and believed it was a member of the royal court of the fire capital, or maybe the daimyo himself. The carriage driver handed over the documents of the people inside. They looked shocked and with disgust, but nodded as they were let through. Inside the carriage were six people, Minato who was looking much healthier now thanks to his mother's medical skills. He was also perfectly built after retraining day and night since his recovery. He managed to increase his speed and agility to make up for the loss of the Hiroshin. His chakra pools were now slightly high to low, but that was as much as he could do. Ashina was still suffering from the after-effects of the nightmare she had. She was unable to perform any of the old Yuzumaki seals due to her memory being erased. Her chakra chains were gone forever. But she was still a powerhouse to deal with. She never really relied on her seals or bloodline that much. She proved exactly how stubborn Yuzumaki women are. Menla was doing fine as well. He was well built and quite handsome to boot with his father's looks and blonde hair. His power level was that of High Genin, but he was well trained in Dian Lo Si Jiraiya and Sanadi were there with him to bring unquestionable support for the family. The last person with him was none other than the Amazon Queen of Natashiko. She was the embodiment of perfect beauty with a slim figure and long luscious black hair. She was dressed in her shinobi kimono outfit that hugged her figure with double swords on her back. They were on their way to meet with the Hokage Maru Senju, the fifth Hokage, to discuss the fate and future of one Naruto Senju, their former son and the queen's daughter's future husband. Minato and Kishina believed they did everything they could to ensure the boy's safety and for the whole shinobi world. Plus they also managed to secure a bright future for their sons. Menma would bring great power to the clan when he took over the Senju, Yuzumaki, and Namika's clan. Naruto would be head of the Namika's side branch and be the protector of his brother. Not to mention the powerful children he would breed with Anibi. You sure Naruto's son won't hate us, Menma asked. Ashina laughed don't be a silly Menma. Naruto won't hate us. He's a smart boy from what I heard. He will come to accept us when we explain the situation. Your mother is the right kid. Your parents made a very tough choice. But it was for the benefit of the whole shinobi world. Jiraiya explained. Even if he does hate us, we will try to gain his forgiveness. Minato boasted. I mean who wouldn't want to be the child of the yellow flash and the infamous red death of Konoha. Besides, Naruto will have everything he could ever want. Tsunade answered. Yeah not to mention he's going to bed Amazon women and a hot to boot. I mean who wouldn't want that. Jiraiya chuckled, imagining it. Tsunade bonked him on the head screaming about him and his pervertedness. The carriage came to a halt as the family stepped out of the carriage. All right everyone we have to see Minato smiled as he and his family headed inside. The Chiha compound. Meanwhile back at the compound Hashirama and his family greeted Fugaku and his family. Words of greetings were exchanged as the group entered the house for a well-cooked meal. Nido complimented Mikoto on her cooking, making the matriarch blush. Sasuke and Satsuki greeted Naruto with the proper manners which he returned. Please sit down and dinner will be served soon. Mikoto smiled brightly. Everyone took their seats as the family began making conversations. Fugaku explained how Madara was going through the reformation of the Ichiha clan. He wanted to ensure there were no uprisers or any threat from within the clan. Hashirama laughed knowing that his old friend was always the paranoid one. Naruto was helping Makoto cook the dumplings which was his favorite part of their get-togethers. Sasuke and Satsuki were also helping as they enjoyed cooking a bit themselves. The puff of smoke appeared before them as Madara stood before them with a very serious expression. Hashirama knew that meant something was very very wrong. Is there something wrong with Madara? Hashirama asked. The Ichiha only nodded as he replied. The Namikazes are here. They have arrived at the Hokage Tower. The group was silent as the Hokage stood up. It was time to finally face them and to put an end to their quest of reclaiming Naruto. Suddenly a loud knocking was heard as Itachi said he would get it. When Itachi answered the door he noticed Kayubi standing there. Uo Kayubi-sama welcome please come in Itachi bowed. Thank you Itachi, mind if my guests come in. Hirama turned to his old friend as Itachi gasped seeing the second Hokage standing before him. Tabarama sighed before walking past Itachi and towards the living area. Hashirama heard footsteps as he noticed a familiar shadow in the doorway. The shadow vanished as Tabarama came into view. Hashirama and Madara's jaws dropped. Was Tabarama standing before them? Did someone bring him back from the dead too? Close your mouths and you'll catch flies that way. Tabarama said sternly. Although I can say for sure it's not nice seeing you again Madara theme. Madara sighed but laughed still acting high and mighty aren't you Toby Dope? I can still crush you in an instant, Madara. Perhaps you would like another lesson up close Tabarama screamed releasing his intent. Tabarama enough. Hashirama shouted. How are you here? A certain old fox and an old lady. Tabarama responded plainly. They all looked at Karama who held his paws up. Hey don't look at me. I was just greeted by an old lady who said Kami sent her to give me this vial of silver water and bring him back. Anyway, don't blame the fox. 
For once I'm glad to be walking around instead of being dead in the ground. Besides, I'm here to meet my nephew. Is he here? Naruto overhearing jumps down and runs over to the man. I'm Naruto sir, he smiled. Kaburama knelt down as he looked over Naruto and saw much of Hashirama in him with certain traits from Mido. Smiling, he ruffled his hair. Hello Naruto, I'm Taburama, your uncle. I was the Hokage after your dad died young. Taburama smiled. Wow, you're the second Hokage. Naruto said excitedly. I heard so much about you from Tusan. Good things I hope he said looking at his brother. Hello Taburama it's good to see you again. Mido smiled. Hello again Firebird you're looking good. Ooh oh why thank you Mido blushed. Madara cleared his throat as much as we would love getting acquainted, I believe we have a family to meet. The group nodded as Taburama asked if he could come along. Madara and Hashirama nodded as Taburama took them to the Hokage's office along with Mido. Hokage's office. Minato and company were waiting for the secretary to give them the go-ahead. They noticed a look of disgust upon her face as she looked at them. They knew that they were not well liked from what Jiraiya told them. But they were willing to pay that price if it meant keeping the shinobi world safe. Suddenly an Anbu by the name of Inu which they noticed was Kakashi approached them. Minato-sama and family, the Hokage, are ready to see you now. Kakashi said coldly, making them flinch. Kakashi Minato said sadly. They were led down the hall until they reached the Hokage's office. Kakashi knocked on the door. Lord Hokage the Namikazes and company are here to see you. Send them to Kakashi. Kakashi stood aside to let the family in. Minato opened the door and walked in. They were greeted by two people they didn't expect to see. Madara Ichiha who was long thought dead and Mito Yuzumaki the Namikaz clan killer and a hood-robed man next to the Hokage seat. So you finally show your face Madara scoffed. Now Madara although their presence is unwanted. They still want to speak to Hokage-sama. Mito said in a cold tone. Mito-sama. Kishina said. I didn't give you permission to speak to me traitor. Mito shouted. Kishina flinched at her words as she shut her mouth. The Hokage's seat was facing the window as the Hokage spoke in a deep voice. What brings you here? As if I didn't already know. Lord Hokage, we have come for the return of our son Naruto. We understand you and Mito-sama have been raising him. We are grateful for that, but now that we are back we would like him returned. Minato explained. You expect me to return a boy I loved as my own son. A boy who was abandoned by his parents, a boy who Lady Shinigami took pity on and gave him a new family. A boy who deeply loves and cares for Mito and I. The boy who had no right to Tswan shouted. And how about turning around and showing us your face? The Hokage motioned for his hooded friend to go first, as the hooded man turned around and took off his robe, revealing himself to the group. Minato and the others gasped as they stood the second Hokage Taburama Senju. But if he is here then that means. The Hokage chair slowly turned around as Hashirama glared angrily at them. Hello Tsunade. Chapter 16. Senju vs Namikas. The air within the office dropped to such a cold temperature. The emotions emitting from the Senju brothers, Mito and Madara, were flaring and combining to raise the level of killing intent they were expressing. Hashirama was glaring at his granddaughter like he was glaring at an enemy. Taburama was the same way as his older brother, except his reason was different. Taburama had taught Tsunade the importance of family and the values of the Senju clan. Mito and Madara were glaring at Kishina. Mito was releasing killing intent for Kishina's betrayal of the Uzumaki clan values. Madara wanted to kill every single one of them since Madara was once a father and he loved his children unlike Minato, who only loved one of his children and abandoned the other. Tsunade and the others were having mixed expressions and feelings about the situation at hand. Here standing before them were the first and second Hokage, Mito Yuzumaki, and the infamous Madara Cha. The most powerful and dangerous of the shinobi nations and known as gods by all. Digi Tsunade spoke. My patience is wearing thin. Hashirama spoke coldly. You dare to show your faces after you fled from the village after the Kaiubi attack. How are you both alive and young? Jiraiya asked. A certain deity took pity upon Naruto and brought my wife, brother, and I to take care of him. Since you both failed in your parental responsibility it fell upon our shoulders. The Shinigami of course Minato scowled. Prideful divinity bitch. We told Saratobi that Naruto would go to an orphanage. There he will grow up with other children and have a normal childhood. Then when Menma turns 13 we would come back to retrieve him. Kishina explained. Because you wanted to raise the boys apart from each other under the fear of Kurama trying to take back his chakra right. Mito said in her sharp tongue-like tone. Not only that, but also due to a prophecy that decided the fate of the shinobi world. I knew it had to be Menma, and so it was decided to take him to the Namika's compound in the fire capital. Jiraiya pointed out. Yet you didn't decide to leave the poor boy with a family friend or an allied clan. Taburama said with a tone as cold as Madara's. We couldn't have him live with any of the clans as that would draw suspicion and attention to Naruto. Minato explained. Sounds like a bunch of bullshit to me Madara scoffed. 
I, being a father once myself, would have made sure my child would stay with a family friend or ally if I had to perform a mission or whatever that was critical to the village's safety. Well regardless of what you think of us. We did it to ensure the world's salvation and survival. Minato retorted. We know it was painful for us to do this Naruto. But we are back now and we would like for the return of Naruto to us. Ashirama laughed in fact it was the most he laughed in such a long time. You honestly think I would surrender my son back to a man with a godlike complex. A man who threw away one of his sons for the training of another. A man who fled the village when they needed him the most. A man who deserted his village when we were in such a weakened state that left us in such a vulnerable state in which our enemies could easily attack us. Hashirama yelled at the end, panting hard. Lord Hashirama please see. Minato sighed. Minato was soon interrupted by a gust of wind that was pure chakra. The feeling and the killer intent within was making it tough to breathe. Gazing up, he looked to see it coming from Tabarama Senju. Say please he reason and I'll rip out your eyes and shove them down your throat so you can see my hands tear your carcass open. The second Hokage shouted angrily. The party backed away, including Madara himself. They have never seen Tabarama so pissed off before, except only when it was wartime. The Namaka's family couldn't even move at the amount of Kai being released. The only one who wasn't affected was the Amazon queen herself. She was gazing at Tabarama with such longing and lust in her eyes. Their reputation precedes you Tabarama the queen purred. And you are? Tabarama asked. My name is Gabrielle, queen of the Amazon she greeted. Abarama heard about the Amazon village of Natashiko. They were a race of powerful female shinobi that only married if they could be defeated in battle. He thought that was crazy, but he wasn't one to contradict or insult their methods and ways of living. He remembered when he fought a few members in his youth and won against them, but then refused to marry any of them as he wasn't interested in marriage or anything of the sort. The pleasure Gabrielle Sama, likewise Tabarama. I wish we could have met under better circumstances, but am I here to fulfill the contract signed by Minato regarding his son Naruto and my twin daughter Zena and Artemis? According to the contract they would meet up with the boy and during the exams they would fight. If Naruto wins, my daughters will be his. And if he loses he loses his life Mito growled. Precisely now if you would be a dear call Naruto here. So he can be reunited with his parents and we can go on with business. Gabrielle smiled. Ashirama was about to stand up when Mito stepped forward and got into the queen's face. The Uzumaki matriarch glared and her hair flared as her eyes turned slits, her nails turned into claws and whisker marks grew on her face. She looked like a female human version of Kaiubi. Listen here jungle whore, my baby isn't going to fight so she can fight your sexual driven spawns. Mito insulted Gabrielle. Gabrielle growled at the disrespect the woman was giving about her village and her daughters. She also flared her hair and countered with her facial markings becoming tiger-like. Her eyes, nails, facial markings strongly resembled a tiger as she growled back at Mito. I'd watch what you say ocean bitch. The queen roared. When it comes to my son. I'll make sure only the best women marry my little boy. Mito growled. You mean my boy Kashina shouted. Shut up Kashina. Mito and Gabrielle screamed. Enough of this chatter, Tabarama please retreat Naruto for us so we can put an end to this once and for all. I'm sure Naruto would love his former parents and get to know them. Hashirama grinned insanely which Tabarama nodded at before vanishing. Hanahagakur. Ichiraku Raymond. Meanwhile we find Naruto at Ichiraku Raymond having some delicious Maizo Raymond with Kaguya and Kurama. The sweet smell of aroma from the Raymond bowl filled the redhead boy's nostrils as he dived into his bowl. Kurama never had Raymond before and he never understood why Naruto or Kishina could even devour so much of this stuff. Still it couldn't hurt to try it. Taking his chopsticks he tasted the noodles and his taste buds took him to a whole new level of taste. Holy Kami never would I have believed that Raymond would taste so delicious the fox laughed eating more. Tell you buddy, Raymond is the food of the gods. Naruto smiled, finishing his sixth bowl. Aguya was eating her Raymond with more sophistication as per her character and status. She was enjoying the food that her future husband loved so much. Thank you A.M. San, this Raymond is wonderful. You and your father are amazing cooks. Thank you Lady Kaguya, it's our pleasure. Thank you for the kind appreciation. A.M. blushed. Excuse me, I'm looking for Naruto. Everyone turned to see Lord Tabarama standing in the entrance. Tuchi and A.M. immediately gasped at seeing the presence of the second Hokage. They immediately bowed their heads. The second Lord Ichiraku Tuchi welcomed him. Pardon me for the interruption. But I am here to collect Naruto because my brother wants him to come to the Hokage's office. Tabarama answered. Any particular reason uncle? Naruto wondered. Yes, the Namaka's family has arrived in the village and are at the Hokage's office waiting for their presence. Naruto placed down his bowl as he stood up. Kurama knew how long Naruto had waited for this moment. His face was lowered at the ground with his hair covering his eyes. Kaguya was worried for him as well. 
she knew that her lover had a horrible past with his former parents, but at the same time she was looking forward to seeing how he was going to handle the situation. So they finally showed their faces after all this time. Naruto said coldly which thickened the air around him. Are you sure you wish to face them now? We could always postpone the meeting until another time if you wish. Tabarama asked. No uncle, if I don't encounter them now. I'll never get over this rage that's building up inside of me. If I want to move on with my life then I have to ensure that they don't try anything to worm their way back to my life. Well if you're sure. Yes uncle I am very sure Naruto growled. Very well Naruto came with me, Tabarama said, taking his nephew's hand. Wait, Naruto said as he got on Kurama's back. Kurama should come with us. I have a feeling Kurama wants to go with them too. Especially since he is now accepted by the villagers. Kurama sighed, but he had to agree with the brat. He most definitely had a few words to speak with his former and her husband. Nodding to the boy he took hold of Tabarama as they vanished. Kaguya thanked the Ichiraku family for the Raymond as she opened a dimensional portal and went through it and decided to head to the office before Naruto did. Anahagakur. Hokage office. While awaiting for the arrival of Naruto the two families were arguing back and forth about the fate of Naruto. Hashirama was the most upset with the vocabulary of insults coming out of his mouth. Who knew the god of shinobi had such a colorful vocabulary? You arrogant little, traitorous, backstabbing, toad-sucking whore Hashirama shouted. You think you can demand anything from me? I am the Senju clan head grandfather Tsunade retorted back. You're a cowardly nobody that I am ashamed to have created from my son's loins. You turned your back on everything your parents and I taught you. I did no such thing as an old man. Like we told Suratobi sensei the survival of the world outweighs the needs of a single boy. Tsunade scoffed at him. We put the survival of the world above our own family. A loud slap was heard as Tsunade felt her head turn sharply to the right. Minato and the others gasped at what they had witnessed. Tsunade was most shocked as her grandfather never raised a hand against her. We send just don't put anything above family Tsunade. Hashirama shouted back. You hit me? You've never raised your hand against me. Tsunade gasped, shaking a little. I'm your granddaughter. You're nothing to me now. As of now I disown all traces of you. You are no longer a Senju and don't even try to argue. You've never taken the mantle of Lady Senju while you were still in Konoha. Saratobi told me you were too busy gambling and building up debt after debt. You've never attended council meetings and you haven't been taking care of the Senju clan compound and the clan's bank accounts. You've never even married and yet you had this man here with a man out of wedlock. Hey, my personal life is none of your business and for your information Minato was the best thing that ever happened to me. He became the infamous Yellow Flash and won us the Third Great War. Hell, even a Wagaker fears him so badly they wouldn't dare attack Kanoha. You mean the Horatian that my brother invented and mastered during the First and Second Great Wars Hashirama scoffed at. Your son even dared to claim that it was a bloodline that his clan was famous for. Suddenly a knock was heard at the door as everyone wondered if it was Naruto. Hashirama smiled and told whoever it was to come in. Suddenly a portal came out of nowhere as they saw a beautiful woman coming through it. Jiraiya was awesome, struck and made perverted sounds as he gazed at the beauty before him. He could see she was a lovely beauty with long white hair, black lipstick, and soft skin. She was also wearing a kimono with pink flower petal designs on it. Lady Kaguya greeted Hashirama. Greetings Hashirama, Mido, Madara Kaguya smiled before looking at the Namikazes with a glare. The Namikazes pleasure. Hey show my parents some respect, Menma growled. They are well known and respected heroes. Little boys should learn to be quiet when the adults are speaking. She hissed as she let out her intent which suffocated them and brought them to their knees. Who the hell are you? Kashina demanded. My name is Kaguya Utsutsuki, soon to be Kaguya Senju. She answered the demanding Namika's woman. You're marrying my grandfather? Sanadi asked. Of course not, I'm Naruto's first wife, wife. They all shouted. But that's impossible. My twin daughters were going to be Naruto's first spouses due to the marriage contract. Gabrielle shouted. Besides, you're too old for the boy anyway. He needs someone his own age. Madara scoffed as if my student would associate himself with weak Kinoichi such as you. Watch what you say Ichiha, my village may be small, but it's powerful and don't you forget it. I only speak the truth, jungle girl. Also the marriage contract you have with Naruto I'm afraid isn't valid anymore. What nonsense do you say about Ichiha? Minato challenged. Naruto is no longer biologically yours anymore Madara grinned. What do you mean by that? Of course he's still our baby Kashina shouted. What Madara means is that Naruto went through a genetic change. Like a metamorphosis. When you both abandoned him when he was born the death goddess altered the boy's DNA to match the genetic code of myself and Hashirama. Meaning that the Namika's clan genetic code no longer exists within his small body. Mito said arrogantly. You lie, no such thing can alter someone's DNA Jiraiya shouted. Are you saying you know more than one of the three divine sisters do? Madara asked the toad sage. Are you doubting their abilities? 
Enough Madara, don't waste your time with this man. His ability of rational thinking had long since died out from the countless beatings he got from the women he peeped on. Kagri aside. Hey I'm over here Jiraiya grunted feeling insulted by the beautiful woman. You're not important Kagriya blew him off. Jiraiya felt his whole world shatter at the very thing Kagriya said to him. Never had he been struck down emotionally by a woman since Tsunade refused to date when he was in his youth. Hey you can't talk to a pervy sage like that, Menma shouted again. Suddenly the commotion was interrupted as they saw Naruto himself walking into the office. But on the back of the nine-tailed fox itself. Minato, Jiraiya and Kashina immediately went on the defensive. How is the fox free? Minato shouted. We set it free. Mito smirked. Why would you do that? Kashina yelled. Do you understand what you've unleashed upon the village? Uo shut up you old broad Naruto groaned cleaning out his ear. Kurama is a part of the village. The villagers accept him. The fox has placed our son under his control. We must reseal the Kaiubi. It's obvious Naruto was incapable of keeping the soul of the Kaiubi at bay. We must reseal the beast into Menma. Jiraiya said getting his sealing kit ready. The Kaiubi let out a roar which sent the family back against the wall. Naruto rubbed the fox's head to calm him down. The easy Kurama hasn't killed them yet. Naruto smiled. They were asking for it you know that. I know the Kurama but I want my turn before you get to play with them. Fine but don't take too long. Alright now that Kurama has calmed down let's get down to business shall we? Naruto said sternly not in the mood for games. Ah. Naruto, I'm glad to see you actually have control over the beast, Minato said with that foxy grin that Naruto couldn't help but growl at. Look at you, so handsome already. You have your father's looks alright, the redeed woman gushed. But my red hair. Naruto then noticed a boy about his age with red hair like him, but Spiky walk up to him. Hey San my name is Menma I'm your brother. I've waited a long time to meet you. Menma grinned. Now that we're together again we can finally fulfill the prophecy together and you can also fulfill your duty. What duty? Naruto asked. That simple son, Menma here will be head of the Senju, Yuzumaki, and Namika's clan. He's also going to engage Inoki's granddaughter and other powerful females of other nations to rebuild the clans. Minato smiled. You will become the head of the Namika's side branch and will be married to my cousin's daughter. You will also marry Mei Terumi and the Nibi Jinchuriki of Kumo. This will bring peace between Iwa, Kumo and the Leaf Village. Plus you will be trained in minor ninjutsu and jinjutsu from your mother. You'll also be trained under Tsunade to become a support medic. That way you'll always be at your brother's side whenever he gets hurt. Plus you'll be engaged to my twin daughters, bringing the support and political power of Natashiko to the leaf as well. Gabrielle smirked. So you're saying my duty is being a slave to my brother and the clan, like how the Hyuga clan operates. You're also saying that you want me to marry women I've never even met just for the sole purpose of increasing the power level with new powers and abilities within the clan. You won't be a slave Naruto Kashina laughed. You'll be a support ninja to protect the main branch of the Namika's clan, along with your new wife. So it is like the Hyuga clan. Naruto scoffed. Thanks but no thanks. Everyone was shocked that Naruto was refusing such an opportunity. He was not only denying to be part of the Namika's clan. But he was also denying to be married and court with many powerful females that many have strived to be bed with. Many men would kill to have what Naruto was being offered. But he was throwing it all away. What do you mean no Minato gasped. Do you realize what you are refusing? Of course I do besides I already have a wife to be and she's proven herself to me in more ways than one. Naruto smirked as he winked at Kaguya. But she's too old for you, Tsunade yelled. Says the 50-year-old broad who spread her legs for a younger man. Naruto smirked. Though with your wrinkly skin you're hiding under that I'm surprised that Minato's father even bedded you at all. Madara snickered under his breath as he was trying hard not to laugh. Tsunade looked like she was about to bust a blood vessel. How dare this brat insult her like that. Once we return home I'm going to beat you into some common sense and make you learn to respect your betters. Tsunade growled, cracking her knuckles, wanting to pound the wise-ass kid. And I told you I'm not going anywhere. I'm happy here with the parents I have now. Besides, I don't carry a single genetic trait of the Namika's clan. So therefore Minato has no biological claim over me. Minato was slowly getting a migraine, this wasn't what he had hoped. He was hoping that his son Naruto would jump at the chance to see his family again and welcome them into his life with open arms. But the Naruto before them was cold, calculating, and above all cold and ruthless to them. Kishina was trying hard to hold back her tears. Her son was denying all connections he had with them. She was on the same boat as Minato, believing that her son would welcome her with love and affection, only to receive coldness and anger. Mother, father, Uncle Madara, I'm sorry that the Namika's clan has wasted our valuable time. Naruto spoke to his family. It's no trouble at all Sachi Hashirama sighed resting in his chair. You may leave now. Naruto nodded, but he jumped off the fox's back and embraced his parents. 
Nido and Hashirama hugged him back as the boy headed to the door only for Kashina to wrap his arms around him. He grunted as he felt her embrace as she was on her knees. Sachi please I know you're angry for what we did. But we had no choice, please don't cut us out of your life. Kashina begged. Naruto sighed as he pried her arms off him. Kashina felt herself being pushed off as the boy looked down at her. He looked at her with emotionless eyes that showed neither hate or sympathy. It was complete apathy. If you truly loved me as you claimed you did then you should have left me with a friend or have one of you stay back to raise me. But instead you chose to take Menma with you and leave me to fend for myself. You didn't abandon me out of love or for more safety. No you left me out of obligation to your precious toad prophecy. Naruto said before his face turned into a snarl. I once respected you when I heard all the stories of you when I was little. I admired both you and your husband, but once I learned the truth from Kaiubi about what happened, that all went out the window. Now look at yourself begging at my feet like some old beggar on the street, it's pathetic. Sachi Kashina cried, grabbing his shoulder only for Naruto to slap it away. Please I'm sorry, don't touch me, Naruto growled. You honestly expect me to believe you're sorry. Naruto that's enough, Kashina is your mother, Minato scolded. This woman is no mother of mine, she's no relative of mine either. Naruto yelled back. Please Naruto, no Kashina you hurt me in the worst way possible that very day. Now it's my turn to return that in full. Naruto held down Kashina to the ground as he got on top of her. He quickly used Mokuten which shocked Hashirama to bind Kashina to the ground. Reaching into his pouch he pulled out a kunai and pulled up Kashina's sleeve. Kashina panicked as she struggled as she screamed, feeling the kunai carve into her flesh. She screamed loudly as Naruto began to carve something into her arm. Minato and his family looked in pure horror as Naruto was cutting his former mother with a kunai. Minato and Jiraiya rushed to stop him only for Madara to pin Jiraiya down and Tabarama pinning Minato. Sanadi charged forward to attack only for Mito to deliver a punch, sending her back. Naruto suddenly stopped and admired his handiwork. He quickly got off of Kashina and stood up. He cleaned off the blood from his kunai and bowed to his parents. He then left the office. Kurama used a little of his chakra to prevent the wound from healing fully before he left as well. Kashina panted as she felt the Mokuten release her. She cried softly as she laid there in shock and sadness. She turned her gaze to the arm that Naruto cut. There carved on her arm was the word bloodkin deserter. She could only lay there in silence as Minato and Jiraiya were released and Menma rushed over to aid his mother. He could see each letter bled from her arm as Sanadi came over and tried to close the wound. However the letters were forever scarred into her arm and Sanadi knew that. Believing that the meeting had gone on long enough, Hashirama ordered Minato and his kin to leave and get settled in the Namika's compound that was still in the village. Not wanting to anger the Hokage and make things worse, Minato and the others decided to retreat for the moment and figure out how to fix the situation another time. Minato took his wife into his arms as he and his son left the office and headed towards the Namika's compound. Sanadi stayed back for a bit as she pierced her grandparents with a glare. You've made a terrible mistake grandfather. Soon your interference will cause drastic changes and the whole world will suffer because of you. And despite what you say I'm a proud senju and I stand by my son no matter what. Sanadi spoke arrogantly. That boy will fulfill his duty and Menma will finally bring peace to the shinobi world. Suddenly a hand wrapped around her neck as Tabarama lifted her up. He had enough of her. I'm smarter than you complex. Listen here Tsunadi, if any of you come near my nephew again. Grandniece or no I will kill you. The Nindane gritted his teeth putting pressure on her throat causing her to choke. He then threw her into Jiraiya. Now take your whore and leave Toad Sage before I decide to sever your body and feed you to the animals. I'm sure the animals in the forest of death love toads. Jiraiya, fearing for his life, immediately took Sanadi and left the office. Tabarama snorted before turning to Hashirama. This won't be the last we see of them. Tabarama warned his brother. Hashirama sighed. You're right that Tabarama will need to keep a close eye on them. I know Naruto can look after himself especially with Kurama looking after him. But even he isn't a match for someone of their caliber, yet Mito spoke out. Which is why I'm going to up Naruto's training. Perhaps you'd like to teach him as well Tabarama. Perhaps he chuckled. I just hope the boy is able to keep up with me during training. I'm sure he will know who's up for some sake. Hashirama smiled as everyone raised their hands. Alright let's head to that new bar Mito heard about. Everyone nodded their heads at the idea. Hashirama left a shadow clone to handle the paperwork. He then told his secretary to hold his meetings for a while. Once that was finished they headed out to the new bar to share a drink together like the good old days. Chapter 17. Can't take no for an answer. The morning soon came as the sunlight shone through the beautiful crafted windows of the upper level of the Senju mansion. Its rays shone bright upon the sleeping boy who was snuggling close to his lovely companion Kaguya. Mito and Hashirama couldn't understand why their son loved sleeping with Kaguya. But according to their son he says he feels safe. 
Naruto fluttered his eyes open as he heard the sounds of birds chirping. With a groan he sat up and let out a yawn. I hate waking up early in the morning. He groaned and rubbed his eyes. He soon turned to see Kaguya still asleep. She looked so beautiful when she slept. Not wanting to disturb her he started to get dressed. He put on a bright orange shirt with a Yuzumaki symbol on it, along with black Hakama shorts. Once fully dressed he walked over and kissed Kaguya's cheek before heading downstairs. He was suddenly greeted by a sweet smell of delicious eggs and bacon as he saw his mother cooking and his dad reading the morning paper. Morning Ka-san, morning Tu chan Naruto greeted them happily. Mido turned her head to see her son up and at me so early. Normally he would sleep in like his father. Still she placed the food on the table and took a seat next to her husband. Well good morning Sachi it's very rare to see you up so early in the morning. I can only guess since today is your first day of the academy. Mido chuckled. Of course Kaas and Naruto said taking a seat at the table. I'm finally going to become a shinobi and one day I'll take that hat from Tusan. Ashirama chuckled at his son's motivation and his ambition to become the next. He knew that his son had the dream for it. But it took more than just ambition to be. The weight of the hat and the job it comes with is something that you must prepare yourself for. Ahahaha, you're many years too early to take the Hokage's hat Sachi. But if you train hard and never give up then I have no doubt that I'll one day pass the mantle of Hokage to you. The family soon began eating and boy oh boy did Mito know how to cook. Her recipes were one of the best, heck she even published them and they sold off the shelves like crazy. Naruto was stuffing his face which showed how much he loved his mother's cooking. Naruto-chan no stuffing your face you'll choke. Mito scolded. Naruto let out a goofy laugh before swallowing, sorry Ka-chan, I just love your cooking. Well that's very sweet, but you can still show proper table manners. Ooh oh come on Mito-sama let the boy have a little fun. I mean you're only young once. Hashirama chuckled. This resulted in him receiving a bonk on the head by her ladle. Hashirama grunted, rubbing his head. Mito looked at him with her hair flowing in nine strands resembling Kurama's tails. Are you questioning my parenting skills Hashirama Mito shouted. And did you just hint at me that I'm old. Sinking down in his chair Hashirama held up his kitchen plate to shield himself from his wife's anger. Sure he may be the god of all shinobi, but even he wouldn't risk arguing with his hot-blooded wife. Begging for mercy and apologizing quickly for his mistake, he was saved by a loud laugh. They noticed Kurama on the couch waking from his nap. What an alarm clock, I woke up to the whining of the so-called god of shinobi, scared out of his wits by his own wife Kurama, teasingly making Hashirama steam with anger. Kurama stretched his limbs as he jumped off the couch and turned into his favorite form. A beautiful red-haired woman with long red hair, red eyes with black slits, a goddess-like body with a double E-size cup. The kitsune woman also wore a tight kimono that showed off her body shape. Kurama chose this form a lot to keep fangirls away from Naruto. The fox also loved this form despite him being male. But to him he believes tailed beasts are not defined by gender and switch between the two anytime they want. She took her seat next to Naruto as she was served with some eggs and bacon, along with some rolls. Unlike Naruto, Kurama ate in a more sophisticated way. Similar to how royalty eats. Kurama I'm going to be busy at the Hokage's office with so many applicants for the academy, alliance contracts, and other papers that I wish I didn't have to sign. God I hate paperwork. The more I finish the more they multiply. Hashirama sighed in his hands. If you want to save yourself from doing so much paperwork why not just use multi-shadow clones and have them help you. That way you'll get it done twice as fast Naruto suggested. Ashirama immediately slammed his head down on the table, rattling the silverware. Everyone could hear him muffin the word stupid over and over. How could the most powerful shinobi of his era forget about the many uses of shadow clones? It would seem all those years in the afterlife affected his brain cells. Stupid. Stupid. Stupid Hashirama shouted over and over. How could I have forgotten that? Because you're a century-old fossil with fewer brain cells and your son is a natural-born genius with a good head on his shoulders. Kurama smirked. Not helping the Hokage groaned. Come on Kurama, leave dad alone. Naruto scolded the fox. He's not an idiot. You can't expect him to remember something 90 years ago. Thank you Naruto Hashirama sighed leaning back in his chair. That's what moms are for. Hashirama soon sulked in his chair, sobbing that his son was agreeing with the fox about him being an idiot. Naruto and the others sweat dropped at his reaction to what he said. Mido sighed in irritation, her husband always takes insults too seriously. Suddenly there was a knock on the door. Who could be at their house this early in the morning? Minato and his family arrived at the Senju compound, hoping to end this farce and retrieve Naruto. They were thankful that the gods had pity on Naruto and gave him a temporary family to raise him. But now that they were back the family services would no longer be required. Plus they were hoping that by doing this then their relationship with the village would be restored. Since their return over 92% percent greeted them with glares and harsh whispers of insults. 
At first they didn't mind it, but soon they were overcharged for food and other merchandise. Along with the fact that many other food joints didn't allow them entrance. Of course Menma was treated differently as they didn't know if he was the same as his parents. After all, don't punish the child for the sins of their parents. So the villagers gave Menma a fair chance to prove to them he wasn't arrogant. However 2% of the village praised the return of the Namika's family with open arms. Soon they all gathered at the front door as Minato knocked on the door. Minato had been planning on teaching his son his uncle's elemental and the side branch to Jutsu styles. Since Naruto was going to lead the side branch he wanted to ensure his son would be powerful enough to aid Menma. Kishina was planning on teaching him Fuinjutsu and Kinjutsu, which would allow them to be closer and form a mother and son relationship. Tsunade however was planning on teaching Naruto medicine, since Menma didn't have the proper chakra control to use it. Although she was still peeved at the brat for mocking her and making fun of her age, she decided for the good of her family, she would put aside her pride. Hiraya was going to train him to summon toads, despite the fact that unknown to him, Nito was going to have Naruto sign the White Tiger contract and that Kurama would let him sign the Fox contract. We have to get my son back Minato-kun. Kishina cried. We will Kishina-chan don't worry. It will be tough, but I'm sure Naruto will get used to it. Minato smiled. Suddenly the door opened and they saw Naruto standing before them. Naruto just looked at them with no smile on his face. They assumed that their son was still angry with them and decided to show it. Can I help you Namika's sama? Naruto asked. The Namika's family was shocked. They thought that he was going to explode with anger or sick the Kaiubi on them. But he just greeted them with a respectful gesture. Hello Naruto we hope we aren't intruding. But we need to talk to you, Minato smiled. Mother, the Namika's family is here when Naruto calls out to Mido. Mido, who was clearing some of the dishes, heard what Naruto said. She growled in irritation wondering what they could possibly want now. Send them to Naruto, let's see what they want. Mido called back. Naruto allowed them inside as the group entered the dining hall. Tsunade was shocked to see the old compound in such good shape after being deserted for so many years. Kishina was trying her best not to get into a confrontation with Mido, her old mentor. Jiraiya on the hand noticed next to Hashirama and noticed the goddess-like beauty next to him. The toad Sanon's eyes popped out as he immediately got out his notebook and began taking notes. The said woman glared at her as she noticed that Jiraiya was staring at her and writing notes in his notebook. Jiraiya said I hope you're not writing notes about me to put in your filthy smutty books are you? She growled. Wait what? Naruto said, grabbing the notebook from his hands. Hey give that back, that's personal Jiraiya shouted. Naruto read through the notebook and turned to glare at Jiraiya. The however was unfazed with the kid's glare and demanded his notebook back. Oh I'll give it back. Naruto growled as he walked over to the dining hall fireplace and threw it into the fire. Jiraiya screamed as his new work of Itcha Itcha Paradise went up in flames. He cried and I'm tears as he sobbed about his hard work and research were now gone forever. Kishina and the other women didn't really care since they despised that novel. Now that the entertainment is over, what do you all want? We told you that Naruto is ours now and you have no legal bindings to him. Mito said harshly. We told you that Lady Shinigami replaced your DNA with ours, therefore making Naruto our son. That's a load of bullcrap Sanadi shouted. And you know it. Now we understand that you were brought back to raise him and you did a fine job. But now it's time for Naruto to return to his real family. My real family is right here Lady Tsunade. Lord Minato and Lady Kishina had their chance and they blew it. I'm also protected by the laws of Konoha. So if Minato and Kishina really want me back then they shouldn't have left me in the first place. Naruto replied coldly. Naruto, we already told you the reason why we had to leave, Kishina sighed and got a headache. It was for the bet. Betterment for the world yeah yeah I heard. But you could have done it another way actually in a lot of ways. Kurama spoke up in his female voice. You could have left Naruto with Makoto since you were friends since you were kids. You could have had Tsunade stay back to raise him since she was his grandmother. You could have left him with any of the clans and you could have come to visit him once in a while. Or you could have taken him with you. Minato and Kishina understood they had many options and while many of them were good. They thought that if none of their enemies knew Naruto existed then he would be safe from all attempts of assassination. Yet they failed to understand that many of the clans were powerful in their own right and would have done anything to protect Naruto. Yet they failed to see that. If our enemies didn't know Naruto existed then he would be safe. Minato defended himself. But now that we're back we can finally be a family again. Ashirama stood up showing off his dominance for the first time in years. You seem to lack brain cells for someone who was a natural born genius. Naruto is my son now. He's happy here and has been for the first eight years of his life. So why pray tell should he leave parents that loved him, fed him, heard his first words, saw his first steps, and comforted him when he was scared or sad to someone who saw him more of a tool than a child. We never saw Naruto as such a thing. Kishina retorted. Really then what would you call it? 
Nito asked, crossing her arms. Ashina opened her mouth to speak, but no words seemed to escape her lips. Nito only nodded her head as she proved her point. Minato cleared his throat and stepped forward towards Naruto. Naruto, we understand that you've grown attached to Lady Nito and Lord Hashirama. We are thankful that they raised you while we were gone, but now it's time to come home. You can still come and visit them, but your duty is to your family. Jiraiya said firmly. Naruto stared up at him with cold eyes. How dare this man come into his house and tell him to leave his family for people who threw him away like some useless toy. I'm sorry Jiraiya-sama, but I'm happy here. My duty is to my father, Hashirama. I'm needed here. Naruto shook his head at them showing his refusal to leave. Naruto's rebellious attitude is unbecoming of an amicus. Minato scolded him like a little kid. You're destined to perform a great service to the world of Shinobi with your brother. Now please pack your things, we can start your training when we get home. Plus my cousin is there so you can get to know your future wife. It would appear you are hard of hearing Minato, my son is not going anywhere. Now I've tolerated your presence here long enough. Leave my home or I shall call the Anbu and have you executed for not only trying to kidnap a Hokage's heir, but also trespassing on my property. Hashirama released so much Kai. Say I do come with you what could your clan possibly offer me other than enslavement and forced marriages? Naruto asked not to buy into their we miss you and want you back crap. Minato smiled at this opportunity. Simple my son I can teach you the lightning elemental of my uncle that made him famous in the second great war. As well as the Namaka's Tejutsu style. I already have Kakashi sent to teach me Raiden. Naruto scoffed. Plus my mom and dad can teach me Senju and Uzumaki Tejutsu style to its full potential. Minato stuttered as he tried to think of something else. Kishina seeing her husband was trying to control the situation spoke her piece. I can teach you Fuinjutsu and the Uzumaki Kinjutsu style raging tide. Kishina smiled. We can bond over that and learn so much about each other. To get together as mother and son again. Naruto found attempting as raging tide was one of the powerful Kinjutsu styles of the Uzumaki clan. But it was the toughest style to learn. Naruto wasn't really interested in Kinjutsu as he had a staff like Hiruzen Jiji. Plus he already had a Fuinjutsu teacher, his mother, since she was one of the greatest sealing mistresses in all the nations. Sorry but I don't have the patience or the love of swordplay. And as for sealing I've got Mito Kachan, who is the greatest sealing mistress in existence. So sorry Kishina-sama, but I'll have to pass. I can teach you the summoning kiddo Jiraiya boasted about. After all the toads and slugs are two of the most powerful summonings in the world. Naruto and his parents sweat dropped at that. Apparently no one ever told the pervert that the toads and slugs were one of the top 15 most powerful summonings. Even Hashirama knew that the top 5 most powerful summons were the lions at number 5, the tigers at number 4, foxes at number 3, phoenixes at number 2, and dragons at number 1. Surely every summoner and their summoning clans know that. Forgive me Jiraiya-sama, but Mido Kachan is letting me sign the Uzumaki White Tiger contract, and Kaiubi-sama is letting me sign the Fox contract. Naruto grinned. So forgive me old hermit, but I must refuse the toads and slugs. I don't mean to insult them, they are powerful, I admit no doubt about it. But the foxes and tigers are one of the top five most powerful for a reason. Geez since when did you become so smart? Jiraiya asked. From studying and reading you should try it sometime. Naruto answered. Well I can teach you medicine and my super strength. Surely you can't pass that up. I'm the world's best medic. Swan smirked with a boastful look on her face. Your skills are impressive Lady Tsunade Naruto nodded. But I'm afraid that Kurama has you beat there. Yes Kurama may be made of chakra, but his knowledge of healing and medicines outdo yours. You're giving me too much credit, Gaki Kurama thought watching it all play out. You're comparing Kaiubi's skill to mine. I've developed poisons that can kill. My skills are not to be criticized. Sanadi fumed. Inchuriki may be Hashirama butted in. But tailed beasts are a whole different thing. See there is nothing you can offer me. If that's all you're willing to offer then I suggest you leave now. I have to get ready for the academy and I don't want to be late because my so-called birth family can't take a simple no for an answer. Silence filled the room. The Namaka's family was outwitted by a mere eight-year-old child. Their plan was simple to convince Naruto to come back, regain control of the village, train the boys, and save the ninja world. Why couldn't fate just let the prophecy come to fruition and let their sons do their duty? Seeing there was no way out they decided to try something else. Minato took a scroll from his back pocket and tossed it to Naruto. Naruto, seeing Minto toss him a scroll, caught it in his hands. He unraveled it and noticed that it was a strange seal. There was a long list of what was inside it. It was also a letter from the first Namaka's side branch leader Kanadijin Namaka's. Dear future Namaka's side branch leader, however, this letter proves that you are the future Namaka's side branch leader. I am Kanadijin Namaka's, and my duty was to protect the future of the Namaka's clan. In my time as leader I've created many deadly seals that protected the clan for almost a century. 
I was known during the clan war era as the lightning flash not just for my speed, but for my mastery in Raiden. In this scroll are all my works and research notes, along with all my and my lightning blade that earned me my nickname. Hopefully you can use and perhaps experiment with them to make them stronger or make your own creations. I have no doubt that already there will be many to continue my legacy. Glory be to the Namikas clan. Panadijan Namikas, leader of the Namikas clan side branch, Naruto looked at the scroll as the contents also had a list of all catagens. From the sound of it Naruto could see this man was truly a devoted clan member that went to great lengths to protect his family. However on the other hand this also showed him that this scroll was his obligation to follow in the man's footsteps. Naruto was about to lose his temper but decided against it and rolled up the scroll. The boy was silent as everyone waited to see what his reaction would be. Naruto turned towards the fireplace and in a flash threw the scroll into the fire. Minato gasped as he saw his ancestor's scroll thrown into the fire. Like a flash Minato pushed Naruto aside and reached into the fireplace, ignoring the burns and blisters from the flames. Minato used the bottom of his robe-like jacket to put the flames out. Once the fire was extinguished the scroll was severely damaged. Minato unrolled the scroll to find the letter part was okay, but the seals on the scroll were destroyed beyond repair. Katagen's research, his Raiden, and legendary lightning katana that made him the lightning flash was now lost forever. Minato's eyes filled with tears before turning to Naruto with a glare. You little turd do you realize what you did? Katagen was a hero that many Namikazes after him respected and admired. His legacy that was passed down to future generations is now gone because of you. You could have been the next lightning flash. Minato shouted enraged. I did it because I've broken the final chains that chained me to you. I'm not an amicus nor do I want to be one. I'm a senju and an Uzumaki. Naruto declared proudly. I Naruto senju hereby wash my hands of Minato and Kishin and amicus. I hear they renounce their status as my parents. From now on they are strangers to me. Naruto you can't mean that. Kishina covered her mouth trying to control her tears. I do Kishina-san. I've detached myself from you. You gave me life and for that I thank you. But now this is where we part ways for good. I really do want to hate you. But what would be the point? The world is full of it already. Therefore I will be apathetic towards you and your family except for Menma. He may be arrogant, but that's thanks to you morons. So I'm willing to give him a chance. Well this has been a fine morning now, do kindly leave before I call Anbu to arrest you, Hashirama seed. Minato stood up and faced Hashirama, this isn't over. Naruto will be ours. Hashirama's only response was a kick to Minato's jewels as the Yandame squealed, clutching his precious balls. The Shadame then picked him up by the neck and smirked. Try all you want. I love a good challenge. Hashirama chuckled darkly. See you again Uo and have a nice flight home. Minato wondered what he meant before he was raised into the air by Kurama via telekinesis, as he was sent flying through the air and into the women's bathhouse. The women screamed as Minato was beaten by many angry naked women. Minato's screams and their girl's angry shouts told Kishina and company where he landed. Deciding to try again another time they decided to back off for the time being. Hiraya and the others bid the Senju family farewell as they went to rescue a beaten down Minato. Chapter 18. The Academy and a Brother's Remorse. A few weeks had passed as we found Hashirama was in his office going through the applicants of the Academy students. Madara was next to him helping him sort them out. Looks like they had a great number of new students that would bring Kanoha to a new height. However one such application caught his eye, it was the new transfer student from Kumo. She was young with long pale blonde hair and black eyes. Not to mention she was from Matatabi. Yujito Nai came to the village as a transfer student and a peace offering ever since word spread that Hashirama was restored. The Rakage believed this would strengthen the ties between the village, but Hashirama didn't fully trust the man. Kumo had a history of seeking out new bloodlines, especially the. So there was no doubt that Kumo would seek to obtain the Mokuten. According to the girl's sheet she was a gifted prodigy. She mastered all academies when she was five and mastered many E and D ranks, along with a few cranks. She had a powerful regenerative ability like all. She also gained the enhanced senses of a cat. Her Tujutsu was C rank, her was D rank, and her Ninjutsu was low B rank at best. She reminded him of his wife who was also a prodigy at a young age. She was also currently living with Danzo as her temporary guardian. Looks like we will be having a lot of good applicants. The heirs of our fellow clans and our new transfer student. Hashirama smiled while going through the other papers. You know as well as I do that has been at a thin line with Kanoha since the second ninja war. I don't trust that bastard as far as I can throw him. You know they've sought out many bloodlines from this village. Madara said coldly. I have a feeling that if they come here to sign the peace treaty they will try it again. Hashirama sighed as he couldn't argue with Madara's statement. But if peace was to be restored they had to take a chance. However he would strengthen security during the treaty signing. 
He thought having Tabarama and Madara would be enough security, but it wouldn't hurt to post a few more men. The door opened as Minato and Kashina walked in. They were dressed in shinobi attire that showed their status as. Minato's attire consisted of a standard Konoha uniform with two bands on both of his sleeves, a green flak jacket, blue forehead protector, and blue sandals. His wife Kashina's attire consisted of a standard Konoha flak jacket over a black short-sleeved shirt and black form-fitting pants that reached her calves. She wore a blue forehead protector with her hair tied up in a high ponytail and strands at the sides of her face. They reported for their first mission since they've been back. Ever since their last failed attempt to convince Naruto to come home. They've become more focused on Menma to train him for his role as child of prophecy. Menma was strong for his age, they knew that and truly believed once both boys graduate, they could have them both on the same team. At least that's what they were hoping. Mostly Kashina as she was a feared Kinoichi throughout the nations. Plus she had the ability to contain Menma if he ever went berserk. Minato and Kashina reporting for our first mission Lord First Minato said respectfully. I have a special mission for both of you. The ambassador from Kumo is coming here tomorrow to sign the peace treaty between our villages. Now I understand that things have been very shady with Kumo, of course they have. Kashina shouted. Those bastards tried to kidnap me when I was a little girl. Kashina. Hashirama yelled. I understand your anger, but I will not let you lose your cool. I Kashina seethed. But now as extra security I want you to secretly watch the ambassador. I don't fully trust them to not try to kidnap someone from any of the clans, especially the Hyuga clan. Therefore I'm placing you Kashina to be stationed at the Hyuga compound. As for Minato since you're known as the Yellow Flash you'll be the ambassador's escort. Therefore you will tag him with your special seal, so you'll be able to catch him if he does in fact kidnap someone. They nodded as they took the scroll from Hashirama. However Hashirama glared at them and told them that if they fail in their mission, they will be stuck doing D-rank missions for the next year, with no pay at all. Seeing as they were getting the message they promised they would not fail. Before they left Minato asked Hashirama about Naruto. Okage-sama how is Naruto? I heard he's quite the powerhouse at his age. Minato asked. He's fine Minato Hashirama groaned. And yes he's quite strong for his age. Far greater than many others in his age group. Why do you ask? We were hoping when Naruto graduates he could be placed on a team with Menma with me, as their sensei Kishina asked with a hope in her tone. You know I can't promise that. As I must abide by the rules I set when I first became Hokage. I can't show favoritism even to my own son. Naruto and Menma will be placed on teams that fit their strengths, weaknesses, and abilities. But it's a perfect way to rekindle with Naruto. Kashina begged. Naruto will decide if he wants to rekindle with you. But if you keep trying to force your way into his life. It will only make him push you back more. Be lucky Naruto didn't disown you. What did you say? Kashina covered her mouth, tears flowing. Naruto believes in the code of the Uzumaki. He will never forgive you for what you did. But he refuses to abandon you as you are still his blood kin. But he carved a blood kin deserter into my arm and renounced me as his mother and family member. Kashina argued. Yes family member, but he never said clan member. Madara spoke up. Naruto has shown true Uzumaki devotion. He still called you a clan member regardless of your crime. So be thankful for that. Minato and Kashina were silent for a minute as they felt hope again. Naruto hadn't fully disowned them as he still considered them clan members. Maybe there was a chance to rekindle their relationship. They vowed to make things right with Naruto even if it killed them. Bowing their heads they left the office. Madara knew that their desperation for redemption from their former son would lead to an even greater disaster. Sensing his distress Hashirama placed a hand on his shoulder. I know you're overprotective of my son, but like I said before Naruto can handle himself. Madara could only smile at that. Of course the little fuzzball would be okay. The boy had proven he can take care of himself, but that still didn't turn off his feeling of protecting his godson. Madara was like a mother wolf that protects her cub. Konoha Academy, Naruto was walking to the academy with his mother and uncle Tabarama. Tabarama's return also spread like wildfire throughout the village. The village never felt more safe than ever now with both Senju brothers to protect them. Naruto was super excited to start the academy and to become a ninja and one day take the hat from his dad. He was dressed in a white battle kimono which was based off and modified from Kaguya's sage robe design, which would help him improve his speed and movement in battle. His red hair had gotten a bit longer as it reached to his waist but was tied in a ponytail. The villagers bowed their heads and waved to the family paying their respect which they kindly returned. On their way to the academy Naruto stopped when he heard a loud crash and noticed Mabuki Hirano tripped and hit the ground, spilling her groceries. She groaned in pain as she sat up and tried to pick up the spilled food. Immediately he rushed over to her to see if she was okay. Madam Hirano, are you alright? He asked. Uo Naruto-sama I'm fine I just tripped that's all she groaned. Naruto reached down trying to help her up as best he could. 
Mabuki was grateful the boy was trying to help her, but she was a bit too heavy for him to lift up. However as luck would badly have it, a certain pink-haired banshee came running towards them. Hey, how dare you hurt my mother. You tripped her. Sakura screeched loudly, making Naruto cover his ears. Naruto, shocked at the accusation, spoke up in his defense. What? No, I didn't trip her. I saw her fall and was trying to help her back to her feet. That answer resulted with a slap across the face. Naruto held his cheek as everyone around them gasped. Sakura glared down at Naruto with hateful cold eyes. Yeah right. You made her fall, you're just like what other people say you are. You're nothing more than a demon. You're no better than that fox demon you carry inside of you. Nobody wants you here, do us a favor and go die in the ditch. Naruto felt those words pierce his heart. He's heard many insults from the villagers that hate him and he was used to it. However, hearing from a girl he secretly had a crush on hurt him badly. Mabuki, hearing what her daughter said, became infuriated as she screamed at her daughter. Sakura Haruno apologized this instant. Mabuki shouted, shocking Sakura. Apologize. But mom he's a demon. He's the reason dad is dead. Sakura shouted back. He's there's a difference. Mabuki argued back. Kaiubi and Naruto are two separate beings. Now you will apologize to this instant young lady. Also when you get back from the academy today I am going to teach you some respect, young lady. I say she needs a lot of it. Tabarama growled as Naruto turned around. Uncle Tori Naruto smiled. You alright. Yes uncle I'm fine. Tabarama walked over to Mibuki and held out his hand helping her to her feet. Oh thank you Lord Tabarama, Lord Naruto. She thanked them. Please call me Naruto, I don't like having my lord title being used as it makes me feel like I'm above everyone else. Naruto blushed a bit. Such a kind boy with a good heart. I see your parents have raised you well. She chuckled and stumbled to her feet. She offered Naruto an apple from her bag. Ooh thank you but I can't accept it. Naruto replied shyly. Oh please I insist it's the least I can do to thank you. She begged. Well alright Naruto smiled while taking the apple. Thank you. No my boy, thank you for taking time to help a lady. She smiled before dragging her daughter to the academy. You did a good thing Naruto. Tabarama smiled. I couldn't just leave her like that, Naruto sighed. That wouldn't be right to let a sweet lady just lay there. Spoken like a true hero Tabarama ruffled his hair. Come on your mother is waiting for us. Naruto nodded as they headed back down the road to meet up with Mido, who was at the front of the academy. Mido noticed them and asked them what took them so long. Tabarama told her about how Naruto helped an old lady who fell and hurt herself. Mido turned to her son who nodded which had confirmed his story. That was a nice thing you did Sachi. Mido praised him. Thank you Kachan. Naruto smiled. Well then come on I don't want my son to be late on his first day. Naruto nodded as he hugged and kissed mother goodbye and high-fived Tabarama. He followed the batch of students to the classroom where their sensei Aruka Yamino greeted them. Naruto also noticed many of his friends were there. Kiba, heir to the Inuzuka clan and a brash kid with an alpha male complex. But on the inside he was as soft as a newborn puppy, all bark and no bite most of the time. Sasuke Ichiha, his brother in arms and closest friend since childhood. Satsuki Ichiha, his number one fangirl that dreams of marrying him. He swears that she is worse than Sakura Haruno, Sasuke's number one fangirl. Speaking of the banshee she was sitting next to Satsuki, she was one of the students that hated Naruto and blamed him and the Ninetales for her father's death, she also hated him for corrupting her mother. In back of Sakura was Ino Yamanaka, heiress of the Yamanaka clan, Shikamaru Nara, heir to the Nara clan, and Akamichi, heir to the Akamichi clan. On the left side say Shino Aburam of the Aburam clan, Hinata Hayuga of the Hayuga clan, Niji Utsutsuki, second heir to the Utsutsuki clan, Rock Lee, and Tenten in their final year at the academy. Sitting in back of them was Men Manamikas, he looked exactly like Minato from the gold spiky hair to the heart-shaped face of his mother. All the clan heirs and many civilian students were there. His eyes soon rested on Yujito Nai, the transfer student that was sent by Kumo as a peace offering. He remembered meeting her, and he liked her not for her beauty or her power. No, he liked her for her personality and sense of humor. He waved to her which she noticed. She blushed while waving back. They had grown very close ever since her arrival to the village and became very good friends. Even though they were arranged to be wed, Naruto had treated her like a human being instead of an arranged wife. Naruto immediately took his seat next to her. Aruka is looked over by his new class, students from many of the shinobi clans and many civilian students. However he also heard the Senju and Namika's heir was going to be in his class. He heard about both families' reputation and their training they received from her parents. He noticed Naruto who looked a lot like Lady Mido, but with some traits of Lord First. He heard the Senju heir was more powerful than his age group. But he also heard the boy was modest and loved to work hard. He also noticed that he was close to Yujito Nai, the transfer. He noticed Menma, son of Lord Fourth and Lady Kashina. 
Though he hated the Namikas for what they did, he couldn't hate Menma as he had nothing to be blamed for. One thing for sure he had his work cut out for him. Welcome to the academy. My name is Aruka Yamino, and I will be your sensei for the duration of your time here. Aruka smiled. Why don't you introduce yourself to the class so we can get to know you better? Also I have Lady Kaguya with me as she will take over as head of the academy to ensure we produce actual shinobi and kinoichi. He motioned to the woman who sat next to him. She was dressed in an elite amber uniform, she also had in her lap a wolf mask with black lines around the eyes. She was known as the Akami Megami Aka wolf goddess. Her hair was in a long ponytail and was shiny as silver. She waved to everyone but blew a kiss at Naruto who blushed making a quiet growl. Everyone began to greet the junior or senior students telling them about their likes dislikes and their dreams. Some had dreams of being legendary shinobi while others dreamed of being Hokage. The next one to introduce themselves was Menma Namikas. He stood at a height of 4 feet 5 inches tall and he wore black shorts and a white t-shirt with a Uzumaki spiral on the back of it. He greeted everyone and smiled. My name is Menma Namikas. I'm 6 years old and I like my family, Kanoha and clan. I love learning new things and Raymond. My dislikes waiting for Raymond to cook, Emos, a certain red-haired woman. He looked at Naruto before turning back. My dream is to become, but also my dream is to restore my clan and to make a certain someone pay. Naruto knew that Menma was talking about his mother Mido. He heard that his mother was ordered to eliminate the Namika's clan to prevent them from using him for breeding purposes. Naruto believed his mother's actions were justified, I mean would you allow someone to use your baby as a bloodline breeding stallion? But he also understood his big brother's anger, but that didn't mean he would allow him to kill his mother. Okay then Aruka sweated as he was one of the very few who heard about the Namika's clan massacre. Looks like we got ourselves an Avenger here. I hope the Kami Menma won't do anything stupid. Naruto cleared his throat as he decided to introduce himself next. I'm Naruto Senju. I'm six years old. My hobbies are Kurama, Kaguya-chan, Kitty-chan Foxes, The Moon, and Raymon. I dislike Lord and Lady Kashina, Lady Tsunade, and Jiraiya for his filthy books that degrade women in such a way I find absolutely abominable. I hate rapists and predators who prey on innocents. My dream is to restore the world to a peaceful era and to be as strong as Daddy and Uncle Madara. Aruka nodded as he smiled. The kid truly had big ambitions, especially wanting to be as strong as his parents and uncle. Alright thank you Naruto and Ms. Nai. How about you go first? Alright my name is Yujito Nai. I'm 7 years old and I like my village, cats, Matatabi, Foxy-kun, Naruto, cooking, and castrating men who annoy me. My dislikes are rapists, a certain family, and secretly my rakage for forcing me to become against my will. My dream, well my dream is to marry my Foxy-kun and be the dominant wife in his harem. Agria narrowed her eyes on the young girl. The little brat actually thought she was going to be Naruto's head wife. Ooh oh she was going to show her when she's old enough to have sex that no one is going to lead the harem but her. Kagri always had a superiority complex when it came to sex, and she wanted to ensure only the worthiest of women would bed him. Yujito noticed Kagri looked pissed off as she gave her the stink eye making her silently fume. Naruto, noticing it, groaned as his face palmed, shaking his head. Why was he cursed to be so desirable? After the rest of the introductions were finished the class was now in session. It started with a basic curriculum much to the disgust of Naruto. His uncle Taburama told him that the academy's academics the former civilian council had chosen were utter bullshit that wouldn't even help you on the battlefield. However despite that the best part was when it was time for the battle portion of the day. Tejutsu spars was the most fun for Naruto because she was facing Menma. He wanted to see just how much Menma learned from his parents in the 1, 2, 3. Hajim. Menma got into the hummingbird stance as he rushed at full speed. But Naruto expected this, he could clearly see Menma rushed in rashly and was acting upon only power and speed. He immediately sidestepped and trepped him. Menma caught himself as he delivered a punch aimed for his chest which Naruto blocked with his elbow. Naruto was soon swung off his balance by a low kick falling on his back as Menma swung a punch down only for Naruto to roll out of the way. Naruto smirked as he was impressed. Well I must say your parents taught you well. Your speed is incredible and your use of the hummingbird style is truly impressive. Naruto praised him but let's see how you handle this. Naruto dove in the whirlpool to jutsu style as he vanished from sight, making the crowd gasp as Naruto appeared behind Menma. Menma immediately countered the punch that was aimed for him, but was kicked back a few feet. Menma grunted feeling the power behind the kick. Naruto-san charged forward, not letting him recover, delivering kicks at his waist, chest, and his face kicking him against the metal fence. Menma fell to one knee as he growled at Naruto. I won't lose not this time. He started leaking red chakra which everyone knew what that was. His eyes turned slits and his teeth sharpened. He let out a roar as he charged extremely fast. Naruto quickly dodged a swipe of his sharp finger-like claws. 
Damn he succumbed to his anger that quickly. Naruto thought to himself. Looks like there is no choice. I had to find a way to calm him down. Naruto was pushed back against a fence pretty hard grunting from the pain of the impact. Naruto stood up as he went through hand signs that his father taught him. Wood style. Cage restrained he shouted. Soon wood sprouted around Menla like a cage, and the wooden bar sprouted more strands of wood that wrapped around him, contracting him. Menma struggled as the chakra began to be sucked into the wood which allowed Naruto to absorb the chakra. If only I still had Kurama in me it would be a big help Naruto groaned softly. Naruto was only able to absorb 10% of the Kaiubi's chakra from Menma before the Namika's air collapsed. Naruto panted as he was released. He soon collapsed a few minutes afterwards. Kaguya immediately rushed both boys to the hospital as the students were sent home early. Hanoha Hospital. Room 204. Menma Pav. I yawned as I woke up and found myself in a comfy hospital bed. Looking out the window, I saw it was a bit cloudy. Upon realizing I was in a hospital I began to remember how I got there. Suddenly I remembered that I was sparring with my little brother and then. I remember losing my temper and soon. Oh god I lost control of the nine tails. Oh my god Naruto, I hope I didn't kill him. I'd never forgive myself. Quickly throwing off the covers, I ran out of room to the receptionist in the lobby, having been to the hospital many times before back home. Excuse me? I asked the receptionist. Which room is Naruto in? Naruto-sama is in room 504 Lord Menma, she told me. I thanked her as I rushed up to the fifth floor despite my small injuries. Upon reaching the room I slowly opened the door to see Naruto resting in the bed with small parts of his body bandaged. He didn't look beaten up at all. I guess he had regenerative abilities like me. I gazed upon my brother's sleeping face as I felt a pang of guilt. I don't know if you can hear Naruto. But I know you can. I'm sorry I lost control of myself. I could have almost killed you. If that happened I'd never forgive myself. I know you and my family don't see eye to eye, but I would like to at least be part of your life. I won't force you to leave the family you already have. I can see that Lord and Lady Senju make you happy. I would be a bastard for taking that away from you. For what it's worth little brother I'm sorry. I hope you'll still consider me as your big brother. I leaned down and gave him a kiss on the forehead before leaving before my parents found out I went AWOL in the hospital. Normal Pav. Naruto opened his eyes slowly as soon as Menla left. He wasn't really out cold he was just resting a bit as an injury like this was nothing compared to the sparring matches with Madara Kurama. However a small tear ran down Naruto's cheek as he let out a small smile after hearing his brother's words. He found no deceit in these words and he felt pure remorse and love from it. I already have Menma. Chapter 19. Brotherly Bonding. Menma headed towards the door and gripped the handle when he heard a voice telling him to stop. He slowly turned his head to see Naruto turning his head towards him. He could see a smile upon his fair, gentle face. His eyes were showing amounts of kindness with no amount of disdain and anger like he did the last time they met. Releasing the handle Menma walked towards the bed. His brother slowly sat up grunting a bit. I knew you could hear Menma chuckling. Like I said before, I'm sorry that I lost control of the Ninetales. I don't know what went wrong. Didn't your parents ever train you to control it? Naruto asked. Surely with Kishina being a former. You would have been trained to control it. Menma felt a little embarrassed, but he had to agree with Naruto. He wasn't trained in the basics of controlling a tailed beast's chakra yet. What's the point of having a if they can't even control their power? No, I haven't reached that level of training yet. My parents taught me the basics first before moving on to ninjutsu and other stuff. I mastered low rank and I was good at tojutsu. My few ninjutsu skills suck balls, and I suck at it. And yet even after all that training, they didn't teach you to unlock the Kyubi's chakra. Well according to dad. I needed to train my body before allowing the Kyubi's chakra to flood my body. Menma sighed. He always said it takes a power being to wield power. You took that kind of advice from your father instead of asking advice from the actual family. Naruto Fasipam. Um I guess so Menma chuckled nervously. You're an idiot. It takes more than just training your body. First, you need to train your mind as well as your body. A tailed beast is known to be very manipulative and cunning. If you lack a strong mind then you lack the mental strength to combat their influence. Second, you need to have perfect chakra control. Karama's chakra is potent and highly acidic, if your chakra control severely lacks then the chakra can cause some major bodily harm, or worse, you can lose yourself to it and go berserk. Naruto explained. Right and look what happened I nearly killed you. I'm a monster, Menma cried trying to wipe his eyes. Sensing his brother's distress he patted the bed motioning his brother to sit. Taking the invitation Menma sat down close to him. Naruto placed a hand on his shoulder with a firm but gentle grip. Menma looked at me, Naruto said softly. Menma looked up with his sad and filled eyes to gaze into Naruto's light blue ones. You're not a monster. You just lost control when you gave into your anger. You weren't yourself. Naruto explained trying to ease his pain. 
I wasn't exactly myself. Menma shouted. What if I end up hurting the ones I care about again? I could hurt mom, dad, or anyone in the village. No Jinchuriki is perfect. But if you truly want to ensure that you don't lose control again. Then get off your ass, go home, and demand training from your parents. The only ones to blame are your parents who should have trained you from the start. But. But I don't want to hurt anyone again. He sniffled. I'm afraid to use this power again. Naruto wiped his brother's tears with his thumbs and held his face in his hands. Menma sniffled again, his tears running in I'm style as he wrapped his arms around his brother. Naruto ran his hand through Menma's hair, letting him let out all of his pain and sadness. A word of advice brother, to combat a powerful source of chakra like Karamas. We must fill ourselves with love. Love is the only thing powerful enough to combat the chakra's malicious nature. Naruto said gently, still running his hands through Menma's hair. Menma slowly looked up at his brother. He was confused at Naruto's attitude towards him. Even after how he acted towards him when they first met in the Hokage's office. Naruto, why are you so forgiving towards me? I thought you hated me like you do my parents. Naruto understood Menma's question. True he hated Minato and Kishina for abandoning him for a prophecy. But he couldn't bring himself to hate his brother. He believed that Menma was also a victim in this, I mean sure he was one of the reasons they left, but not the main reason. I mean how could an infant be the cause of his abandonment? He may have held hatred for Menma once before. But after today he knew Menma truly was remorseful for his actions. Which separated him from his power greedy parents. I will admit that I felt hatred for you once. You became their main priority and I became the extra baggage. But I soon came to realize that it wasn't fair to blame you for something that you had no knowledge of. Your parents abandoned me thinking that I would be safe here without taking into consideration the mental state of the people who lost loved ones in the Kyubi attack. You don't hate me? Menma whispered, clutching him tighter. No I don't, Naruto answered as he clutched his brother close to him. After a brief moment he released Menma from the hug. Menma sat up as he pulled off the blankets and stood up. He stretched his muscles a bit as he felt fine as a fiddle. Then the nurse came in to check up on him and was shocked to see him fully recovered and out of bed. Young Lord Senju, you're not supposed to be out of bed. You couldn't have recovered that fast. The nurse asked, shocked. As you can see I am perfectly fine. You forget my Yuzumaki regeneration and my healing factor of being a former speed up my recovery. Naruto gave a goofy grin. Have my parents visited me at all in the hospital? The nurse quickly checked the visitor's log and nodded. Yes Naruto-sama. Your parents visited you twice today. Lady Mito was so worried about you. I had never seen her so worried in my life. After she visited you a few hours ago, she looked like she was going to kill someone. Menma gulped as he had a feeling that someone was him. Since it was him that attacked Naruto. Naruto was sweat dropping as he knew his mom was pretty overprotective. He remembered a time when a man tried to sell him a cheap knockoff toy. His mother beat the man's ass so badly for trying to scam him. His mother was a real mother wolf. Thank you nurse but seeing as I am okay. Am I free to leave? Seeing as there was no injury she could see and the boy looked perfectly healed. She couldn't help but sign the release papers for Naruto to leave early. Thanking her, Naruto asked Menma if he wanted to head out for some lunch to get to know each other better as brothers. Menma wanted nothing more than that, nodding his head excitedly. Anoha downtown district, Sanadi Pav, I was enjoying my day so far. I was hanging out at my favorite local bar The Golden Dragon, with my old teammate Jiraiya and my son Minato. The bar was filled with people. Guys playing billiards, girls dancing on stage much to my perverted teammate's face. I could see the perverted look in his eyes. That idiot couldn't even go a day without staring at a beautiful woman. Well at least it wasn't me this time. The bartender pouring us a drink was an old friend of mine. Hachi Kazama, son of the owner and big boss himself Daichi Kazama. Hey Tsunade, it's been a while since you've come to drink at my bar. Hachi cackled, pouring me a drink. What can I say, I had family business to take care of. I laughed, chugging down my drink in an instant. Damn that's good sake, hit me again. You sure know how to hold your drink. So what brings you back to the village so early? I thought you guys weren't going to be back for 13 years. Hachi asked. Well I won't go into details, but a certain situation came up. I told him, not wanting to reveal more. Hey whatever it's your business Tsunade. The bartender left to tend to other customers as I reached out and grabbed a whole bottle of sake. I needed a large drink to make me forget about a certain redeed. Damn that brat gave me such a migraine after our encounter. That brat had the nerve to insult me, make fun of my medical skills. And even had the gall to bring up my age. I chugged down the bottle like a mad woman. After a large gulp I slammed the bottle down. Jiraiya and Minato take notice of me overdoing it. Hey Tsunade, home is easy there. You don't want to end up drunk again. Said Jiraiya. I scoffed as he tried to take away my bottle as I swatted his hand away. 
My son gave me a look which was the same look he gave me when I was drunk off my ass and started a bar fight a few days before we left for the fire capital. I nearly got in trouble with the owner and had to pay for the damages. Mother please control your drinking, we don't want a repeat of last time when you started a bar fight. Ooh oh come off at Monado, you know very well those men started the fight when they thought I was an easy score for sex. I growled softly, taking another gulp of sake. Besides, I learned my lesson. Now let me enjoy my drink. Normal pav. It was now getting late in the afternoon and yep you guessed it. Sanadi was once again drunk off her ass. Her breath smelled like sake and she could barely even walk. The bartender had to cut her off because she had her 23rd glass of sake. Of course this enraged her as she believed she didn't have enough. But the bartender stood firm in his decision to cut her off. Seeing there was no way to convince him she tried another approach. Leaning over the counter she revealed her cleavage making her large D-cup breasts pop out. Jiraiya screamed as he flew back with a nosebleed. Minato could only groan knowing this wasn't going to end well. Shaking her breasts in the man's face. She hoped her seductive nature would get him to change his mind. However unknown to her, the man was a happily married man and he didn't take kindly to people who would seduce him for free benefits, free drinks, or free anything. He immediately pressed a button to call the security anbu that his father hired in case of emergencies. I'm sorry Lady Tsunadi, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. You've had enough drinks for today. He stuttered. Tsunadi groaned as she slammed her fist into the counter, leaving a spiderweb crack in it. She climbed over the corner and grabbed the man by his shirt and gripped her fist tightly about to punch him. Listen here pal. She slurred. I tried to be nice, I even offered you a chance to peek at my beautiful body. She ripped off her shirt revealing her full naked chest, making so many men have the same reaction as Jiraiya. Luckily the Anbu weren't affected by it and moved to a restrained Sanadi. You still deny me a drink. Looks like I need to teach you some manners. She raised her fist to punch him. Hey, what's going on? She yelled as she felt her hands being tied behind her back. Do you know who you're messing with? Hands off me, I'm Lady Tsunadi of the Senju clan. Lady Tsunadi you are under arrest for assault and prostitution. Anbu Bear stated firmly. You are to be held in the local jail center until you are released on bail. Said Anbu Hawk. Tsunadi was then hauled out of the bar kicking and screaming. Minato slammed his head on the counter in embarrassment. His sensei Jiraiya was too drunk and Lady was happy to even care. Now he had to go and file for his mother's release. He just couldn't catch a break. For once he just wanted to have a normal day with his family without any trouble. Was that so much to ask? Meanwhile Naruto was leaving the hospital with Menma. The villagers greeted Naruto with warm greetings and smiles. Menma got some smiles, but most were still unsure about him given his parents' reputation. Menma tried his best to ignore some of the glares he was getting. Naruto called out to him telling him to hurry up so they could make it to Ichirikus. Not waiting for an answer Menma immediately dashed towards him. Come on, Ichiraku is on me. Naruto offered. Thanks little brother, but I think I should be treating you. You know for almost killing you during class. Hey, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You're not going to let me treat you are you? Menma sweat dropped. Nope. Naruto grinned. Now come on. The two boys rushed down the street, hoping to get to the Raymond stand before they closed. Tonight was the Leaf Music Festival so many businesses were going to close for the occasion. Taking a sharp turn around a corner through an alley they noticed the Raymond stand was a few feet away. Naruto could smell the Raymond's sweet aroma. Its delicious flavor, scrumptious delicious noodles, and tender meat. Uo it was driving him crazy. He walked only a few steps as he heard a loud crash from two buildings down on his left. What he saw was something he never thought possible. Their being restrained by the police force was none other than Sanadi herself. This was too good for Naruto to pass up. Looks like he would be getting a show before lunch. He soon also noticed Madara being led by two police officers. He could see Madara glaring down at the slug princess. Wanting to know more, Naruto told Menma to wait at the stand as he rushed over to meet his uncle. Well well Swan looks like the law finally caught up with you. Madara sneered. That chance you can't hold me for long. Besides, I was just having a drink and making conversation. Tsunadi scoffed. You mean with your fists and showing off your breasts? You tried to seduce a married man into buying you more sake. Madara groaned. Wow what do you know? Naruto chuckled. Madara turned his head to see his godson standing there. He didn't even see him coming. Naruto, what are you doing here? I thought you were in the hospital. I was released by my uncle. You know my healing factor rivals that of a tailed beast. Naruto boasted. Also I was heading to the Chiraku Raymond when I noticed Lady Tsuan being hauled into the precinct. What happened? Lady Tsunadi was causing a ruckus at the Golden Dragon and using um naughty means to get him to buy her more sake. He refused and she lost it. Anbu Hawk answered. Naruto looked at Tsunadi and could see from her expression and drunken state that Anbu was telling the truth. 
He could see the slug princess was trying to plead her case that she wasn't guilty of any crime. She said she was just having a good time at her favorite bar. Arrested for prostitution I can't believe Naruto snapped at Tsunade. Hey you tomato haired runt, I'm innocent of what they have accused me of, Swan retorted. I know that, I can't believe these idiots would think any man would pay money to sleep with you. Naruto replied, making the slug princess gasp, and Madara covered his laughter. Or in your case Tsunade it would be necrophilia with your old shriveled body and fake breasts implants. Tsunade's mouth opened wide with shock, and Madara fell back clutching his sides with laughter. Anbu could tell that Naruto has been hanging around Madara too much. The slug princess roared as she struggled against the Anbu's grip so she could give the brat a full beat down. That's it I'm going to pound that brat's face in. Swan growled, struggling against Anbu's grip. He's going to be black and blue and less of a man when I'm through with him. Really Naruto? A voice called out. Naruto turned around to see Kakashi reading his orange book. You can't go one day without insulting Tsunade. Whatever happened to treating your superiors with respect? Uo don't worry Kakashi. Tsunade still has my respect as a medical master and elixir crafter. I just like to get a rouse out of her every once in a while. He chuckled as he noticed the clock on the precinct building. Uo crap I got to meet Menma at Ichiraku, catch you later Kakashi, by Uncle Madara. Uo and make sure to behave yourself Lady Tsunade and a word of advice. Date someone your age, I heard the great toad sage is the perfect age for you. Try him, bye. Tsunade was soon dragged into the police station by six officers to keep her from chasing down the senju air and beating him to a pulp. She swore revenge on the brat as she was dragged inside. Kakashi, watching the whole thing, groaned. He hoped Naruto would grow out of his roasting phase and become more mature like his parents. But hey you're only young one so you better enjoy it while you can. But another thing confused him. Since when was Naruto on friendly terms with Menma? Back at Ichiraku Raymond, Menma was looking over the menu wondering what he should get while waiting for Naruto. A.M. placed a glass of water in front of him. She greeted him with a warm smile. Hello Menma what can I get for you? A.M. smiled brightly. I'll have one small miso Raymond please if that's okay. He asked. Certainly, coming right up she giggled. Dad. We got an order for a small miso Raymond. Coming right up, Tucci yelled as he began cooking. Make that two old men Naruto said take his seat. Uo Naruto, welcome back. A.M. smiled, giving her precious little brother a hug. Thanks A.M. Nichan Naruto chuckled warmly. They're back Naruto what happened? Menma asked, taking a sip of his water. Oh your grandmother got arrested for assault and prostitution. Let's say what now? Menma sputtered, spitting out his drink. Exactly as I said. Ooh great, as if our lives in the village weren't bad enough, Menma slammed his head onto the counter. Hey, don't beat yourself up. You're not responsible for her actions. I know but my grandmother's drinking habits are worse than her gambling habits. Like a few years ago she gambled 120,000 ryo on a game of poker. A game she sucks ass at. She even tripled the amount on the third game. She loses and what does she do, she flees, and my parents had to pay off her debt. We were lucky she stopped gambling, or the entire Namika's clan accounts would have bled dry. Menma sighed in irritation. These I can see now why she's called the legendary sucker. Said Naruto as he was served his drink. Uncle Madara told me she was called that for a different reason. But he never told me and said I was too young to understand. The four men that could even answer that, A.M. served them their Raymond. The smell was so toxicating, the aroma was enough to drag you in. Taking their chopsticks they thanked Tucci and his daughter before digging in. Chapter 20. Kumo Peace Treaty. Senju Kidnapping. Sunlight shined through the window on the upper level of the compound. Its warm rays shone lightly upon the faces of Naruto and Menma. Menma spent the night at the Senju compound and was welcomed with open arms from Hashirama and his family. Naruto was sleeping soundly on his side with Menma huddling close to his little brother. Mido came in and smiled at the sleeping boys. Walking over she gently shook them awake. Naruto, Menma, wake up and you're going to be late for breakfast. Mido said softly. The boys mumbled a bit as they weren't ready to get up yet. Mido sighed and decided to use her usual method when Hashirama wouldn't wake up. Gathering her chakra and pushing it to her hands she formed electric currents in her hands. Chuckling with a happy smile she leaned forward to their sweet little faces. Bet your lazy butts out of bed. Naruto and Menma immediately sprang up clutching each other. Barely awake they turned to look at Mido. Menma let out a yawn and spoke to the Senju matriarch. Wow, I didn't know Naruto's old clock had a banshee alarm. Mido gasped in shock, her face twitched, and large tick marks appeared on her forehead, who's an old banshee. Ah. Mido-sama. Menma screamed, coming to his senses. Back downstairs Madara was cooking breakfast for the whole family. He had a knack for cooking and it was one of his hobbies. He wore a black tank top which showed off his ripped muscles and six-pack. He also wore a pair of black Hakama Anbu pants with a skull belt buckle on it. He also wore a white apron that said the following. 
disrespect my cooking I'll burn you alive. Tabarama walked in rubbing the back of his head and yawning at the same time. Morning sunshine. Tabarama said jokingly to Madara as he sat down at the table. Morning Toby, sleep well. Madara asked back, flipping the pancakes. Better than my 100-year dirt nap. Tabarama answered by reading the newspaper. Where's Hashirama? He's preparing for the peace treaty with Kumagakar. Hirazin and Karama are with him to oversee the treaty. Madara set the table and began placing the pancakes on the plates. The sweet aroma was so heavenly it even made Tabarama's mouth water. The second didn't want to admit it, but he liked his cooking better than Mito's. Speaking of Mito, she should have woken up the boys by now. Soon they heard loud crashing from upstairs and screaming from Mito. The boys came rushing downstairs fully dressed as they say at the table. Naruto was perfectly fine, but Menma looked like he was in a street fight. What happened? Tabarama was concerned about Menma for a bit. I tickle a sleeping dragon. Menma groaned in pain. He called mom an old banshee. Naruto ratted him out. Hey I was still tired and I couldn't see straight okay. Menma retorted angrily. Menma's eye was swollen along with his left cheek and he had a black eye. Madara immediately took notice of this and knew who the sleeping dragon was. Speaking of the dragon they noticed her coming down the stairs humming to herself. Mito was smiling warmly and brightly, except it was a smile the family was familiar with. What a fine, fresh morning. The matriarch chuckled, taking her seat at the head of the table. It's a special day for Konoha. Special day my ass. I wouldn't trust Kumagakur as far as I could throw them. You know their main goal is to obtain as many bloodlines as they can to fuel the ranks of their shinobi. Madara spoke his piece with malice against the cloud. I believe this treaty is no more than a trap. Once we have our guard down they will steal someone from one of the clans from under our noses. Surely Hashirama placed that ambassador under watchful eyes. From what I heard they tried this the last time and almost kidnapped Hinata Hayuga. Yes he did, he appointed Minato for that. Tabarama sighed, turning the page. Hedgehog head, scratch that you would be insulted by actual hedgehogs. Why him of all people? Minato no longer has Horatian, so he won't be able to teleport to the guy's location in an instant. Madara pinched his nose before sitting down to eat. If anyone, he should have chosen you Tabarama, you originally created the Horatian. Uo don't worry, I'm the backup. Say wa? Madara was confused now. Ashirama knew Minato lost his ability to use the Horatian. So I'm the backup in case Minato screws up. Which I know he will. Lord Second smirked. So children, how are things at the academy? Mito asked the boys. Naruto and Menma looked at each other before Naruto answered his mother. He revealed to her that the academy qualifications weren't as they once were. Basically the old civilian council reduced the effort it took for shinobi to be prepared for the real world. The curriculum was falling behind with basic maths and writing which you can actually learn at home. The most they learned during the first year or so was shinobi history and other basic classes. Mito couldn't help but agree that the curriculum wasn't living up to its glory days, and she had noticed that civilian-born shinobi were passing a lot easier than clan-born shinobi. Abarama, overhearing the conversation, added his own piece of advice. He told the boys that learning about the past helps to improve the future. It is easier to learn from the past if they wish to improve and bring fresh ideas and other things to the future. Many people pride on their past while others suffer from it. The only difference is whether the person wishes to learn from it or run from it. He understands that some classes may be boring than the others. But they could also benefit from it. Hearing this the boys seemed to agree with Lord Second, and soon the family dug into Madara's sweet delicious pancakes. After the hairdrumming breakfast the two boys bid them farewell and headed out to the park. Madara placed the dishes into the sink and began to wash them when he felt a pair of strong arms wrapped around his waist. Toby? Madara painted. Now that the brats are gone how about we move on to the second course? How's breakfast in bed sound? Tabarama purred, nibbling Madara's earlobe with a gentle nibble. Madara shivered at the touch and dropped the dish she was holding back into the sink. Why did Tabarama have to be handsome and alluring? They dated in secret after the creation of Kanoha and eventually fell in love and were going to be married. Until Madara became consumed by power and waged war against Hashirama. But now that he was back they would now be free to continue their relationship. Dobi chan I uh. Madara struggled to find the right words, yet he couldn't get them to come out. I still need to punish you for leaving me for your greed for power. Tabarama grinned a devilish smile. Tabarama hoisted Madara over his shoulder, much to the shock of the Acha. Madara struggled a bit demanding he put him down. But Lord Second being the stubborn and dominant guy he just carried him upstairs to the bedroom for some delicious breakfast in bed. I hate you. Madara mumbled with a deep blush. I love you too. Tabarama laughed. Utsutsuki clan compound. Agria was washing dishes humming to herself after having a delicious breakfast. She had to thank Mito for the recipes. After putting them away she turned around to see her son, Niji on the back porch. 
She was the same height as Naruto and wore a traditional white robe with the clan symbol on the back. Niji underwent a genetic change, he still resembled his father a bit, but he had Kaguya's white hair and two horns on his head. He was petting his little dog that he named Hachiko. The little dog yipped happily as he settled in Niji's lap. Niji was gazing up at the sky, for some reason he loved looking at the sky. Kaguya walked outside as she noticed her son was sky watching. It reminded her of how she always gazed at the sky every night when she came to Earth for the first time. Taking a seat next to him she placed her hand on his hand, making him look at her with a small gasp. Niji turned to look at his mother's warm smile. He looked at her as he saw her face change to his birth mother Himiko's face for a slight second. Crying small tears he leaned close into her arms. Mommy Niji said softly with a smile. Agria brushed her hand through his hair gently. She understood that Niji lived without a mother for the first years of his life. But she promised to go out of her way to be the mother he needed. Ever since the side branch broke free from the Hyuga clan and became Utsutsuki, life had become better for them. She had their genetics altered so they could look like members of her clan. Of course she was met with many members of the Hyuga clan, and each meeting never went well for them. Kagri always managed to be one step ahead, and some Hyuga even ended up killed. Niji? Said Kagriya. Huh? Niji said, looking up at her. What is it? What do you want most in life? What do you fight for? Niji was confused by this question. But at the same time he remembered that his mother hadn't known love from her past. She never understood what humanity strived for. It never interested her in the slightest, so why was she asking him this? Well I fight for my village and everyone in it. We live as protectors of the leaf. Some may say shinobi are slaves that serve their cages. But to me it's different. I fight for a brighter future to bring peace. But peace is never everlasting, it's temporary with the dark fact that there will always be war. Peace is only an illusion. Niji explained in his usual tone. I used to believe that fate was sealed in the very threat of life itself. But never would I have thought that fate could be altered. I was once a slave to the main branch of the Hyuga, but now. Niji cried tears of happiness for the first time in such a long time. I'm finally free of my cage, free to fly wherever my life takes me. Agria could only smile at how far her little boy had come. Niji had certainly matured in the short time he had been with her. One of the Utsutsuki members approached them. It was a middle-aged woman who was once Niji's nanny after his mother died in childbirth. Lady Kaguya, forgive me for intruding. But Lord Hiashi is here to see you. Kaguya's eyes narrowed with a sharpening glare from the mere mention of that man's name. After what happened that day when she liberated the side branch and used the caged bird seal on him. She thought the man would have the brains to realize she was not someone to be challenged. She calmly stood up and told Niji that the meeting would last long. She told him to go see his friends for a while, but Niji shook his head because he wanted to help his mother. He explained that if he is to become head of the Utsutsuki clan one day, then he will need to learn all he can. She was going to refuse till she noticed the determined look in his eye. She sighed but nodded her head. Very well Niji you may come. But remember these few rules, you don't speak unless spoken to. Second, regardless of your past with this man, you must show him respect unless he insults the clan in any shape or form. Third, you must contain your negative emotions during the meeting and only release them at the right time. One screw-up could ruin everything. Agria explained harshly, making Niji nod. Agria then turned to the old woman and told her to let Hiashi in. The woman nodded as she headed to the front door to allow the man in. Hiashi walked into the compound as he and Kagria stared down at one another. He took notice of Niji and how different he looked. He could see his former nephew resembled the woman who broke apart his clan, Lady Kagria. Hiashi said, trying to hold back his distaste for her. Lord Hiashi. Kagri replied back with equal distaste. What brings you here to my compound on such a fine morning? I have come here for the return of the clan members you stole from me. Hiashi demanded. The Hyuga elders have pushed him to retrieve the side branch, since the side branch made up most of the clan itself. Losing them had greatly reduced the clan in numbers. It left them at a very vulnerable state, they weren't weak or defenseless, but it put their bloodline in severe peril. Hiashi was ordered to ensure the side branch was returned for their bloodline was vital. No who you are speaking to Hiashi. Kaguya threatened as she unleashed her chakra infused with massive killer intent. Niji felt the air thicken from the amount of power his mother was releasing. He could barely even move, it was like being frozen solid. It was like being in a nightmare you couldn't wake up from. This Kai it's so powerful. I I can't move my body. Is this? Is this power my mother's true power? Her chakra feels so dark, so benevolent, so. So divine. Niji shuddered as he gazed upon his mother. What is this strange chakra? Hiashi gasped, shielding his face with his arms. Who are you? I'm the embodiment of power itself. I'm the very core of which all chakra originates. I am known throughout history by many names. Some call me a goddess, a healer, a demon, a killer. 
But I am infamously known as the rabbit goddess, the mother of all chakra. Kaguya shouted. The Ashi's eyes widened. This woman. This very creature that attacked him and severed the clan was the embodiment of chakra itself. The infamous rabbit goddess herself. No that couldn't be true, the rabbit goddess was just a fairy tale. Surely this woman must be an impostor and a high uga rebel. You honestly expect me to believe that? He Ashi scoffed with a laugh. The rabbit goddess is a myth, a mere story told by generations of shinobi. What I see is a high uga woman with an over-egotistical ego, who tried to defy the power of the main branch. Niji grit his teeth seething with anger at his former uncle's disrespect to his mother. What he wouldn't give to rip that smirk off his smug face. But he had to remember his mother's rule. He couldn't show any negative emotions until the right time called for it. You dare call the fourth greatest woman of divinity a liar. You dare mock her power and ability. You dare mock the woman who lived before Chakra even existed, the woman who ended all wars before the rise of Shinobi, the woman who has the rank of divinity that only the three divine sisters have. You dare mock her like she was some kind of peasant under your shoe. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you where you stand. Niji stepped forward before Kaguya held her arm in front of him to stop him from approaching any further. Niji grunted in frustration but backed down as commanded. Whether you believe me or not Hiashi is up to you. But what is true is that I am on a level far greater than anything you could possibly achieve. Kaguya smirked darkly. I'm a person of divinity, and I won't hesitate to end your life if you continue to demand of me anything. Your clan's numbers have been greatly reduced making you now the smallest clan in the village. You dare mock the high uga. Hiashi screamed charging at Kaguya with full speed. Kaguya stood her ground to fight until Hiashi fell to the ground clutching his forehead. The cage bird seal was still branded on his forehead. The elders who knew the seal and its design tried to remove it but couldn't. It was as if the seal itself was burned into his skin. Kaguya turned to see Niji standing there with his hand forming the symbol. Niji spoke out against Hiashi once again. You told me to only lash out when the time came. Well that time was now, it was bad enough he called you a liar. But it crossed the line when he mocked you as some low-class peasant, like some commoner. I have tolerated his insults, but that one crossed the line. Niji screamed, adding more chakra to the seal, making Hiashi scream louder. Aguya immediately grabbed Niji's hand, breaking the seal. He looked at her asking her why she stopped him. She shook her head at him, basically telling him to let it go. Letting out a small growl of anger and frustration, he stopped the flow of chakra to the seal on Hiashi, giving him relief. Hiashi looked up at the two. Kaguya stepped forward. Let this be a lesson to you. I have shown you mercy by having my son spare your life. Kaguya warned him. But try to demand anything from me again, and I won't stop him from killing you next time. You won't get away with this, you hear me. Hiashi screamed. I'm the head of the Hyuga clan. Arg. Kaguya pressed her foot upon his neck, adding pressure to crush it. Hiashi struggled to pry it off but was having trouble trying to budge it. Don't push me, I'm in a really foul mood. She said coldly before removing her foot. You've become the kind of man you despise. The once great Kai blocker Hiashi of belief is now a figurehead for the Hyuga elders. Once a proud clan head now reduced to an elder's lapdog. The Ashi picked himself up trying to put on a brave face. But he was shaking so bad that urine traveled down his pant legs. Kaguya groaned, her new carpet was ruined. She picked up Hiashi by his collar and kicked him out the door, making him fall flat on his face. That's for ruining my brand new carpet you filthy mutt. It cost me a pretty penny to buy that. The villagers who saw the whole thing felt sorry for Hiashi for being at the end of her wrath. Either from demanding her of something or insulting her. Hiashi grunted as he got up and dusted himself off. Seeing the villagers staring at him, he coughed before walking off as if nothing happened. Niji smiled watching him walk away in shame. Well that was fun. I'm going to meet my friends and I'll be home by dinner. Niji rushed off to meet up with his friends. Kaguya smiled before heading back into the house to continue with sewing a sweater she was making for her son. She needed time to relax after her morning was ruined by Hiashi. Niji was hurrying down the street as the park was close by. On his way there he heard the villagers talking about the Kumo peace treaty. He couldn't understand how they could trust Kumo after what happened to his father. The rakage denied any involvement with the kidnapping, and the village actually believed it and sacrificed his father. The only problem was that his father willingly gave his life not just for his brother but for the village. On his way there he noticed Naruto and Menma outside of the park gates. They met with Sasuke who also arrived along with Shikamaru and other kids. Naruto noticed him and called him over to which he happily responded and rushed over to greet them. Meanwhile the villagers were gathered in the main district as the Kumo shinobi arrived with the new Kumo ambassador. The man was six feet two, dark skin and well-built muscled body. He wore a dark green vest and dark blue pants with white tape wrapped around his left leg and both arms. He had long dark hair with a ponytail tied at the end. He also had a long scar over his left eye that ran from the top of his eye down past his nose. 
his name was Arashi Akumi. The Dark Tempest of the Hidden Cloud and s rank shinobi who specialize in nightly assassination. He was accompanied by his sister, who was one of the group of shinobi that was in charge of protecting him. She was 5 feet 8 inches with a slim body and DT size cup. She was dark skinned but fairly beautiful with long black hair and beautiful blue eyes. Her name was Ketsu Akumi, the bloody tempest of the hidden cloud. She was an A-rank Kinoichi and a deadly one at that. She was well infamous for killing 1,000 shinobi with a single typhoon caused by her deadly bloodline storm release. While everyone greeted them with warm smiles and cheers of praise. A figure watched from a distance in the shadows. He wasn't fond of having Kumo ninjas here. Uo not one bit, he only returned today from his month-long mission, tracking down a highly dangerous rogue ninja that was wanted by the Leaf for over 10 years but was never found until now. He let out an angry hiss before vanishing into the shadows. He was going to keep a close eye on them. Arashi and his sister were greeted by Minato and Kashina, the infamous Yellow Flash and Red Hot Habanero. They exchanged greetings. Minato Namikas, your legend precedes you. You're quite the legend in our village, the only one who could match the fourth rakage in speed and manage to almost defeat him and killer B in combat. Said Ketsu. Ketsu Akumi of the Akumi clan and the infamous Bloody Tempest and Air and Kinoichi that single-handedly killed 1000 Kanoha Shinobi in the Third Great War, using Storm Release. It's been a long time since we met on the battlefield. Minato replied before looking at her brother. And who can forget the infamous Dark Tempest, Arashi Akumi, Kumo's deadliest assassin. Seems we are quite known in the leaf as well. Arashi boasted as he gazed down upon Kashina. Ah, Kashina Yuzumaki, the red hot habanero and member of the infamous Yuzumaki clan. It's been far too long since we last met. Indeed your father tried to capture me along with his team when I was a little girl. Kashina snarled. Then he was killed after he tried kidnapping the Hyuga heiress. Now you dare come here to settle another peace treaty when you failed to secure one last time. That was when the third rakage was in power. The fourth rakage, I, wishes to form a non-conflict peace treaty with the leaf. He is not interested in bloodlines as he's perfectly fine with the ninja we have. We don't need bloodline-fueled ninja to show off our strength. Ketsu rebuked her. I've lusted after bloodlines in the past. That will never change. Kashina screamed. Pardon my wife, as she still is sore about her past experience with Kumo Shinobi. Well next time keep your wife on a very short leash. Ketsu scolded. If our villages want this peace treaty to happen. Then we must be civil to one another. Not be at each other's throats like pack animals. Minato nodded before leading them to the Hokage's tower. Once there they were shocked and astounded at the man who sat upon the chair. They had heard rumors of the return of the first Hokage. But I didn't believe it was true, but here he was sitting before them. But the other thing that shocked them was that the Nine Tails fox sat on his left side. They thought the Nine Tails was sealed away after it rampaged through Kanoha. So you must be the ambassadors that have come to sign a non-conflict peace treaty with my village. Hashirama asked them with warm greetings. Yes lord first, we are shocked to see you here of all people. Rumors had spread far and wide of your return to the mortal world. It looks like the rumors were true. But yes lord I wishes to secure an alliance with the leaf. He had hoped this will mend the rift that his father, the late Sandane created after the failed Hyuga kidnapping. Yes, although I's father denied any involvement. We still had to give in to their demand for the killer's life as it violated the first treaty. We had to sacrifice his Ashi Hyuga, Niji's father. Luckily he had the cage beard seal which not only saved the village but preserved the Byakugan. As much as I hate and despise that kind of slavery, it did prevent a war. Said Hirazan. However Kumo sent Yujito Nai one of their Jinchuriki as a peace offering and a piece of goodwill. Speaking of Yujito, how is she? She is the Rekage's niece and he wants to know her status and condition. Arashi asked about the girl. Yujito is fine, she is staying with one of our most trusted occupants. Hirazin replied wanting to keep her location with Danzo a secret due to Kumo's attitude towards the man. And who is that? Ketsu narrowed her eyes. The kitten is living with me at the Senju compound. Mrs. PMS is the holder of my elder sister Matatabi. So who better to raise her than me? Hey, her name is Yujito Nai Yubaka Fox. How dare you call her such a name? Ketsu ranted. Ha. Hey. I call her that because her tantrums are exactly like Matatabi when she's on her period. Kurama smirked, being a smartass. I feel sorry that Naruto has to marry her. But hey his tastes are his business. I mean look at Hashirama, he's the god of all shinobi, yet he's whipped and leashed by his wife. Hashirama sulked in his chair from Kaiubi's statement. Sure he was the greatest shinobi in the world and feared by all. Yet he wasn't able to stand up to his loving and scary lotus flower, Mido. Hiruzen let out a loud exasperated sigh. Can we continue with the treaty? Hiruzen groaned. I want to get home and relax with my favorite book. Deciding to get this over with, Arashi and Ketsu were led to the council chamber. 
the large marble hall was filled with the clan heads, the civilian council led by Mabuki Hurano, and the representative of the fire daimyo, who was a young woman around the age of 20. She was the fire daimyo's eldest daughter, Aiko Takahashi, and his pride and joy. The Kumo ambassador and his sister were seated at a white marble long table with the clan heads on the left side and the civilian council on the right. The Hokage sat at the head of the table with Hiruzen and the fire daimyo's daughter standing behind him and Kaiubi standing next to him. Now that we are all assembled we can discuss the terms of the treaty. Hashirama said in his stoic yet commanding voice. The treaty that was given to Hashirama stated that the two villages won't engage in any hostility from one another. Business and trade routes will be open to one another's merchant guilds to greatly improve business relations. All Kumo asked for was knowledge on the almost extinct art of sealing. As there were very few Fuinjutsu users in the Land of Lightning. The contract also came with a marriage agreement that the son of the son would marry the niece of the current Reikage. Basically they were asking for the marriage between Naruto Senju and Yujito Nai. Having read the treaty, Hashirama asked the council of his peers if they agreed with the terms. Everyone nodded their heads, Hashirama asked Kurama for his counsel, since he knew humans better than anyone. Kurama and all your great counsel what say you? The terms of the treaty are minor and basic at best. However regarding their term involving the sealing arts. If we handed over any high ranking or powerful seals to them. Then even without their or our own knowledge someone from Lightning Country would use it to their advantage and violate the treaty to try and destroy us, given our past bad blood. After all our sealing knowledge comes from the Uzumaki clan who were the masters in the art. Therefore my final counsel is, yes we share our sealing knowledge, but any sealing formulas and knowledge known to the Uzumaki clan are to be kept secret. As for the marriage proposal, Yujito has already shown interest in Naruto and openly wishes to marry him. Kurama said, giving his wise counsel. However to ensure the treaty stays effective for years to come, it needs an ace in the hole. Therefore as a message to Kumo, any attack on the village is an attack against me. I may have been sealed three times already, but I had pledged to defend this village. Every shinobi knows that while I may be sealed I'm still the most powerful force in existence. The Kumo ambassador and his sister nodded their heads, fearing the fox's retribution should anything happen against the village. Sure they have the eight tails, but Kanoha has the god of shinobi, the Kaiubi, and other powerful forces. Satisfied with the agreement the treaty was signed by both parties. The bad blood between Kanahagakur and Kumagakur can finally be placed to rest. The ambassador was welcome to stay for the day and depart the next day. They took the offer with great sincerity. The rest of the day passed quickly and the village was in joyous celebration. Bars and restaurants were opened and a festival was held to honor the peace between the two villages. Naruto was enjoying the festival with his brother and friends. Playing games at booths, eating delicious snacks and other things. It was the most joyous day of his life. He had never been happier. He and Menma sat at the edge of a large lake looking at the sunset. Menma took in its beautiful side as he felt relief, something he hadn't felt in a while. He turned to look at Naruto who had somehow fallen asleep. Placing an arm around him he held him close. Watching from the trees Minato and Kishina were pleased to see how close the boys had become. Now that the boys have become close it will be easier for Naruto to help his brother achieve his destiny. Hearing the rustling Menma turned to see his parents. Mom? Dad. What are you doing in the tree? Are you spying on us? Menma asked disturbed. Of course not, we came to look for you. Minato said as they jumped down. We noticed how close you two have gotten and we are so happy. Something tells me you're more than just happy. Menma answered. We knew Naruto would understand. Now he will finally be able to help you achieve your goal in bringing peace to the shinobi world. Just like the wise old toad said. Menma stiffened hearing about the prophecy again. Menma began to slowly realize that his parents seemed to care more about the prophecy than their kids. He began to realize that he was only special and receiving extra love and attention because of it. If Naruto was the child of prophecy would they have abandoned him like they did Naruto? Mom dad if Naruto was the child of prophecy would you have left me here in the village? Menma asked a little coldly. What? What are you talking about, son? You're the child of prophecy. Kishina laughed thinking he was joking. What if I wasn't? Would you have left me behind? Menma asked again impatiently. Of course not. Minato said hurtfully. Then what made Naruto any different? His parents tried to speak their answer. But the words wouldn't seem to come out. It was as if their guilt was trying to prevent them from saying something stupid or something that would make everything worse. We had to keep the soul container away from the chakra container. The Kaiubi would be able to remove its chakra from you and break out of the seal once more. We aren't proud of what he did, but it was the best solution at the time. His mother tried to explain. All this time I believed I was special, some kind of hero. He said before looking at Naruto. But now I see what that could have cost me if the roles were reversed. I'll fulfill the prophecy as foretold. But I'll do it on my own terms. 
As the Uzumaki Code states, family comes before all. Menma, the future of the shinobi is going to be at serious risk soon. A great evil will befall the world, and the child of prophecy will decide the fate of the outcome. Plus with that masked man still out there who knows what he will do. Kashina explained. When has the shinobi world not been at risk? Our lives are at risk every day. You speak of this great evil, but don't know what it truly is. I also know prophecies change all the time. Menma what's gotten into you? Minato asked. I grew brain. Menma retorted before standing up with Naruto on his back. I'm taking Naruto home, I'll be home afterwards. Minato and Kishina tried to stop him, but Menma had already left. Deep in the shadows a man was watching before creeping back into the darkness. Night fell quickly as Menma carried his brother home. He jumped up a tree and through the open bedroom window. Once inside he placed Naruto on the bed and tucked him in. Afterwards he left and headed home. Unbeknownst to him a figure crept into the room and approached the sleeping Ritid. Pulling out his large sack he stuffed Naruto in it and ran out into the night. A snake was nearby as it slithered its way into the surrounding woods. Approaching its master that was waiting for it, it slithered up his arm and hissed into his ear. I knew it. The man gritted his teeth and dismissed his summon. The figure ran quickly through the woods and into the dark areas of the village to avoid being seen. He was eager to bring the Senju heir to Kumo. They would have access to the legendary Mokuten. He knew being chosen to go with the ambassador would give him perfect access to snatch a child from one of the clans. Hetsu and Arashi had no idea of his motives, and when he brings the brat to the village, he might even replace Aya's rakage and finally have the power to demolish Kanoha. This so-called peace treaty wasn't worth the effort, why should they be making peace with the leaf when they still had the manpower to wipe them out? You're going to be the key to Kanoha's destruction, boy. With the Senju and Yuzumaki bloodline, we will breed an army that will bring the villages to bow at our uo, I mean my feet. He laughed maniacally. Suddenly he heard movement in the trees. Taking out a kunai he prepared for any attack. He looked around for any sign of movement but found none. Feeling a bit paranoid he continued on. After moving a few more feet he heard it again. This time his nerves got the better of him. Who's there? Show yourself. He screamed. I know you're there. Come out and face me cowardly. Goku ha 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 ha. The voice laughed. Now why in the world would I want to do that? When I can ravish in the joy of making you sweat. Come on out, I'm not scared of you. Show yourself. He demanded louder this time. The figure soon jumped down in front of him. The cloud ninja readied his weapon as he gazed upon the shape from the shadows. The moon's bright rays illuminated the woods, revealing the figure who stood in his way. His skin was very pale and white like a snake skin, his eyes were golden with slitted pupils and purple markings around them. His wide grin showed off his fang-like teeth. He also had pronounced cheekbones and straight waist-length black hair, with some locks covering and framing his face. He wore the standard Jounin uniform, flak jacket and all. He also carried a long sword with a golden snake handle strapped to his back, the Orochimaru of the Sanin. The man gasped, dropping the sack. Did you really think I wouldn't find out what you were up to? Orochimaru said coldly. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything wrong. He screamed while still sweating. You're lying, even your body language and tone of voice gives it away. You tried to kidnap my godson and use him as a breeding tool. Hoping this will raise you to the ranks of ultimate power within Kumo. It was bad enough that Minato was planning it. But when another village wants the same thing. I don't show any mercy. Snakes are very protective of their hatchlings. Orochimaru smirked, drawing his sword till he saw his reflection within the blade. Because believe me when I say you're not going to leave this village alive. You think I'm scared. You can't do anything to me as it will violate the treaty and Kanoha isn't prepared to fight another war. The man boasted. I hold the cards now for Orochimaru. Kanoha wouldn't risk going to war for a single brat. The ha ha uo but I would. Orochimaru charged at such speed he appeared behind the man. The ninja turned his head as Orochimaru slashed his arm off. The man screamed as blood gushed out of his severed arm. He laughed as he licked the blood from the blade. Don't bother screaming, no one can hear you. I set up a soundproof before confronting you. But please scream as loud as you want, it only makes me want to kill you more. Orochimaru laughed approaching the ninja. Uokami please no, please I beg of you. No. Please no, no. Orochimaru grabbed his other arm and pulled out his kunai and laughed maniacally. And this little piggy went to market. He cut off the first finger causing him to scream. Ah. This little piggy went home screaming. He yelled, cutting off the second finger. Ah no one can help me. The ha ha and this big piggy lost his head. He sliced his hand off. Please have mercy. The man cried out. Please have mercy. Sorry but I wasted that on Minato before he left the village years ago. The sounds of tearing flesh and screaming filled the barrier as the birds flew off into the sky. Orochimaru, now stained with blood, approached the sack and picked up Naruto. He felt the barrier fall as Ninja rushed to the spot. 
Hashirama and the Kumo ambassadors arrived to see a cloud shinobi flayed and in pieces and Orochimaru standing by him covered in blood. What happened here? Hashirama yelled. You should ask the ambassadors, one of their shinobi snuck into the Senju compound and kidnapped Naruto. The man hoped that by kidnapping Naruto the village wouldn't risk another war over him. I only managed to come home today and one of my summons informed me of the man's intention to kidnap the boy. Orochimaru explained. Hetsu approached Orochimaru and instead of attacking him. She thanked him which confused him. Why was she thanking him for killing one of their shinobi? Ketsu explained that she thought the village purged the remainder of Kumo's Black Lightning Division. The Nanbu division created by the second Reikage whose mission was to kidnap and bring fresh bloodlines to boost the physical power of the village. After the third death I had the Anbu division disbanded and had the old members executed. They had no idea that members of the division were still active. Hirachimaru was skeptical, but he had a run-in with those Anbu before. Plus he didn't sense deception in her words. Lord Hokage, Kumo had no idea they were still running in secret. The Reikage had no knowledge of this. Arashi explained hoping to avoid another war. That's what the last Reikage said when he tried to kidnap Hinata. I told you Kumo couldn't be trusted. Kashina ranted loudly like a banshee. Geez and I thought my voice was loud. Mibuki winced, covering her ears. They speak the truth Hashirama. Said Arachimaru. I sense no deception in their actions or their words. Hashirama nodded very well, Arashi cleaned up your ninja's corpse, and Arachimaru took Naruto home. Ketsu sent word to I of what had transpired. Ketsu nodded and left to send word to I of the incident. Arashi took care of the body by burning but keeping the severed head. Arachimaru took the sleeping Naruto home. The snake was surprised that Naruto slept through all that. Arriving at the compound Mito was told of the incident and boy was she mad. So she actually trashed the kitchen in her rage. After calming down she sat down to have a glass of sake. Arachimaru quickly placed Naruto to bed and closed his door. Small M in a head. If you don't like please skip it. On his way down he heard laughing coming from Tabarama's room and went to investigate. Opening the door his eyes widened before he screamed. Madara and Tabarama both naked in bed turned to see Arachimaru gazing at them. Do you mind? Tabarama shouted as he was still on top of Madara. The man's arms are still around his waist. Don't you know how to knock? Madara retorted. Don't you know how to lock your doors? And since when are you two so lovey dovey? You hate each other. Arachimaru shouted as he covered his eyes and shut the door before running down the hall. Geez what's his problem? Tabarama scoffed. Who cares now where were we? Madara smirked and kissed Tabarama. Chapter 21. Academy and letting go. Why do the goddesses torment me with such irresponsible, blatant, and useless shinobi? Hashirama asked irritably, tearing into Minato and Kishina for their failure to protect his seedling. Please. Minato said, trying to reason with him. Be silent. Hashirama commanded the man to flinch. I gave you both a simple assignment to keep track of the Kumo ambassador, and your incompetence had nearly cost me the life of my only son. Has my teachings from the past taught you nothing? You mustn't be hard on yourself, Lord Hashirama, you were an excellent teacher. Here is in praised. It's not your fault they were incompetent Danzo added. Hashirama-sama, please there is no excuse for what we did. Kishina answered with a firm tone in her voice. We know we were responsible for Naruto. HMPH responsible. Hashirama scoffed. Do you know the meaning of that word Kishina? Yes, I understand. Kishina assured him. Then do you understand the destiny that my sapling has set for him by the heavens above? That my son will lead the world into a paradise that not even I myself couldn't achieve. The Hokage gazed upon the picture of Naruto on his desk. His warm smile shows off the radiance of innocence which saddens him as that would soon fade once blood is spilt by his hand. One failure to save Naruto doesn't show weakness in our capabilities. Minato retorted, getting fed up. You should know that. But one weak link can break the roots of a mighty generation. Hashirama roared, turning to face Minato. Mito placed her hand on Hashirama's shoulder and gazed down at Minato's lowered head. Hashirama sighed before raising his hand to dismiss them. You have my leave to go, you're both demoted for your failure. Hashirama groaned, giving his final word on the subject. Okage Sama Kishina tried to get a say in before Mito held up her hand to silence her. Kishina turned around and headed out the door muttering to herself all kinds of complaints. Minato soon left after her not wanting to cause any more trouble than they already have. Love. Mito consoled him. I shouldn't have sent those two imbeciles when I should have sent Orochimaru, Naruto's godfather to do the job instead. Hashirama said lost in his own shame for failing to put better protection for the boy. You're right you shouldn't. Mito scolded him before softening. But that doesn't make you any less of a leader. Her husband turned around to meet her gaze. Demoting them two isn't enough. What would you have me do? He asked before Mito whispered something in his ear. Scene change. Walking down the hall Minato noticed his wife leaning against the wall. She looked troubled from the look of it, he guessed she was taken this harder than he was. 
He wrapped his arms around her, pulling her into a hug. Kashina laid her head against his chest. Minato-kun, this can't go on. Kashina said softly. What are you talking about Kushi-chan? Minato asked, confused at this. Naruto, we can't keep doing this Minato. I think it's time we let him go. Minato's eyes widened at his wife's declaration, she was always spouting about getting Naruto back. To hold her baby again and have him call her mom. What changed? What could have forced her to come to this conclusion? Kashina. What are you saying? You've been always talking and planning on how to get Naruto back. Look at us Minato Kashina shouted. Look at what's happened to us since we left him here. Nothing but punishment, lately I noticed I can't conjure up the chakra chains, then you lose the Horatian in most of your chakra, and now we've been demoted too. Kashina sobbed into his shirt, staining it with tears. No more, no more Minato, we can't endanger our lives because of him. Kashina. Minato consoled her, rubbing her back. You're talking nonsense. Open your eyes Minato, we lost mostly everything. If surrendering Naruto will make this go away so be it. Kashina screamed till she panted, running out of breath. Please love, for the sake of our family and Menma's sake let Naruto go. He's happy with Hashirama, and Mito let's give him that at least. We have to think of Menma and prepare him for his destiny. But he's my son. Minato shouted, he's my son too, but look what's happened. We can change the past, and we must look to the future. Naruto is the past, and our Menma is the future for mankind. I love him as much as you do, and it pains me to do this. But we have to make sacrifices and if I must lose to Naruto a second time, then that's what I shall do to ensure the safety and future of the human race. Kashina's voice broke in sadness with each word she spoke. Minato looked out one of the windows and gazed at the cloudy sky. Could he really do it? Surrender his ties to his former son. Minato loved his son even after leaving him in Konoha. But did he love him enough to let him go? Konoha Academy. Naruto entered the classroom, which was filled to the brim with students. Gazing around he noticed that over 50% of the student body in the academy were civilian-born, and around 42% were clan-born shinobi. He knew that the academic materials used during the reign of the fourth lacked a bit since the old civilian council handled the curriculum pretty badly. They also removed certain classes that made it easier for civilian shinobi to get into the shinobi ranks. Male seduction, which was a key element to Kanoichi, was a critical part when it comes to her intel retrieval. Which was now replaced with a flower arrangement class. Then there was Kenjutsu training which taught many people mastery and skill with a blade. Another class is gone due to lack of art. Training, which was once another key class, was now restricted to Anbu and other special ops. Even medical training was lacking due to lack of funding. All the key classes meant to prepare a shinobi for the real world were removed by greedy human beings. Luckily his father managed to reinstate the classes. His mom, Mito was in charge on male seduction, Yugao was in charge of Kenjutsu, Tsunade was placed in charge of training medics, Arachimaru was in charge of teaching the arts of poisons, and Madara was in charge of assassination training. Finally Kurama was in charge of teaching torture and interrogation tactics. Naruto Dan Menma yelled, waving his hand in the air. Over here. Naruto smiled and walked over to his brother and greeted him with a playful headlock. Menma laughed as he struggled to get out of it. So what's my charming, sassy, and overconfident brother up to? Naruto asked. Hey I'm not overconfident, who do you think I am? Uncle Jiraiya. Well, Naruto grinned. Don't answer that. Menma silenced him. What? I wasn't going to say anything Naruto said innocently. Menma knew that look and tone of voice. He's seen that in his time at the academy in the fire capital. He then gave Naruto a bonk on the head with his fist. Now Menma, what was that for? Naruto whined rubbing his head. Oh come off it Naruto your innocent act doesn't fool me. Menma accused. You were going to compare Jiraiya's overinflated ego with mine. It's written all over your face. Was not Naruto arguing. Menma argued back. Lightning collided between their eyes before they were interrupted by a small cough. They turned to see Yujito dressed in a black tank top and blue shorts. Her pale blonde hair tied into a beautiful bun. Well well looks like I just walked into the baby hour. I swear your behavior looks like something out of a comedy. Except I'm not laughing. Yujito grinned. Though I expect my future husband to contain himself and not fall into such childish squabbles. It makes you look like a joke. And you're a loud mouth, sexy, and short-tempered fuse that makes you the punchline kitten. Naruto smirked before he was tackled to the ground by Yujito. Don't. Call me kitten. Yujito hissed. Okay I won't Naruto smirked before flipping her over, pinning her down. Kitten. If they kiss I'm going to puke Shikamaru said from the second row seats. What? Naruto asked before realizing how close his lips were to Yujito's. Wait. Um. No he sputtered before getting off Yujito. Heading to their seats Aruka came in and took roll calls. The early part of the academy was just basic academy stuff, like calligraphy, history of the shinobi, and certain maths and other classes. 
which was perfect for the first years of the academy. But Naruto, Menma, and Yujito wanted to participate in the better parts of the academy. When the afternoon came around Yujito being a bit older, attended her first male seduction class, and she was very good at it. Naruto, along with Sasuke and surprisingly Ino attended Kurama's class. Torture and interrogation class room A3. Naruto took his seat next to Sasuke and Ino. Other children were there and were looking forward to the class. The door opened to reveal Kurama, he stood in his male human form. A man at 5 feet 9 inch tall, long red hair, and a fit body build. He was both intimidating and handsome at the same time. He gazed upon the student body and greeted them with a wide smile. Hello students, my name is Kurama Utsutsuki and welcome to torture and interrogation. Here you will learn the methods and techniques to extract information from both enemies and sometimes traitors within your own village. Kurama grinned widely. But beware some of the methods will be too gruesome. But then again some may be too extreme like what I do. Everyone knows that when you interrogate someone you love peeling off their skin, gouging out his eyes. Naruto spoke out. Besides, if anyone was interrogated by a tailed beast they would sing like birds. What about mental torture? Ino asked him. Kurama looked up at the Yamanaka girl and smiled. Ooh Yamanaka, they are infamous for their mind transfer bloodline. He chuckled lightly. Ino Yamanaka, heiress of the Yamanaka clan. Infamously known for their mind transfer bloodline. Physical torture may be good, but it doesn't last long. Any creature can die from large amounts of physical torture. But mental torture is in my opinion, a superior branch. The way you can ensnare the mind, bewitch the senses, among other things. Ino smiled as she welcomed that compliment. Thank you Kurama-sensei. Kurama produced a blood clone of a random person. He called upon each student to see what they could do to extract information from an enemy. Naruto called out to go first. Naruto headed to the blood clone and conjured up wood as it wrapped around the clone. With a smirk he formed a snake hand sign as the wood sprouted spikes which began to pierce into his head. Takra infused within the wood embedded itself within the bloodstream leading to the brain. The clone screamed in pain from his nerve system. Oh, oh gods please it hurts oh, oh ah the clone cried out in pain. Naruto placed his hand upon the clone's head and began to absorb the chakra from within the brain that contained memory. He was able to see all the memories that Kurama gave the clone for the test. Of course he also found something else which made him smirk. Kurama sensei I had no idea you had the hots for Tsu Minyazuka. Naruto announced shocking the class. Kurama blushed deeply, how did the brat find out? Then he realized he must have added too much memory in the clone. That's none of your business you little twit. Let me guess Tabarama banging Uncle Madara, so know you're moving on to Kiba's mother. Though I wouldn't blame you, Sum is one of the sexiest women in the village. Naruto teased him. Shut up or I give you detention which is physical training with me, 100 laps around the village, 300 push-ups, and 600 sit-ups. Kurama showed his pearly whites making good on his threat. Naruto held up his hands in defeat alright alright I concede, don't get your panties in a twist. Arg. You really are insufferable you know that. What can I say it's part of my charm. Naruto boasted. After he finished, Sasuke took his turn and extracted his information from the clone by cutting off a finger one by one, then his toes one by one. Sasuke also began describing Tsunade as an old cat lady hag with saggy breasts, false teeth, and dirty breath smelling like fish. He then explains in detail the clone having sex with that version of Tsunade. The clone screamed as it began envisioning it. Ooh god gross. The clone shouted. Ooh oh I am going to puke, okay okay I'll tell you what you want. Just please no more, I'll tell you what you want. Sasuke was given full marks for his methods, Ino passed with flying colors as did some civilians. Others didn't have the stomach for torture, but did have the knack for non-violent methods and were actually good with negotiations. Kurama thanked and praised the students for their achievements and dismissed the class. Hey Naruto lunch? Ino asked shyly. Sure come on Naruto smiled as they left to have lunch outside. On the way they met up with Yujito and Menma. He heard that Menma had the potential to be an assassin and was proud of him. According to Madara, Menma had perfect stealth that rivaled Kakashi, and he had the capability of ending the target swiftly and cleanly. Yujito, he had no doubt his kitten would pass that class. No one could resist her charms. I heard you passed your class, Yujito. Naruto praised her. I never had any doubt. Your mother was a good teacher, I can see how Hashirama fell for her good looks. Shame that her granddaughter inherited any of that. Hey, I resent that. They turned around to see Tsunade standing there. I'll have you know that I was one of the best seducers of the village. Yet the only ones to fall for your charms were Jiraiya and Hans. Naruto reminded her. Age hasn't been good to you. Your beauty may be fading, but your skills have not. Besides beauty is only skin deep. It's what is inside, the soul that is the real beauty. My beauty hasn't faded you little turd, I'm still at the height of my prime. I treat my body like it's a temple. Yeah except it's worn out and condemned. Naruto laughed. 
What's your problem with me, Naruto? Didn't my grandparents ever tell you to treat a beautiful woman with respect? Sanadi shouted in his face. Show me a beautiful woman and I'll treat her like a goddess. Naruto snickered as he loved making her mad. Plus you already know why I have a problem with you. That was the past Naruto, there's nothing else we could have done. Sanadi groaned. What do you want from me? What do I want? Naruto said, turning around glaring at her. You were my grandmother for crying out loud. If Kishina and Minato had to leave me here. You could have remained and looked after me. You were a mother yourself, yet you went along with Kishina's idea to abandon me. So answer me this. How could you, who was once a mother herself, agree to the abandonment of one's own child? Naruto turns to leave with Yujito and company following behind. Leaving Tsunade behind to rethink the life choices she made after Naruto was born. Menma asked if his brother was okay, knowing how painful the subject was for him. Naruto assured him that he was fine, his stomach rumbled, showing that he was hungry. Scene change, Ishina was walking through the village streets as people were gazing at her and talking about her. She could hear all of the hurtful things that they were saying about her. Wench, witch, can you believe she tried to claim someone else's child? Demon whore, village deserter, criminal, four hooded women dressed in black robes, wearing animal skull masks, lead her towards the end of the village, to what looks like a large gate. It was made of mahogany wood and gold. Both doors had the engraving of golden hinds, half woman, half deer holding bows. They slowly opened to reveal the temple's magnificent architecture. Kishina was led halfway up the steps before she turned around. Only for one of the women to turn her around and push her forward making her fall forward on the steps. She was then pulled back up and a hood was pulled over her head to hide her face. When she was led inside. She was brought before the altar in the center of the temple. A large golden throne was behind the altar as Kaguya herself was sitting upon it. Her gaze burned deep into Kashina. Strip her naked Kaguya commanded. Kashina was forced to the ground as the priestesses began to tear off her clothes. The woman sobbed quietly as her clothes were being ripped from her body. She began to feel dirty and helpless against them. She cried more as she was forced to stand up and her head was pulled back. Kashina, you are brought here for your punishment, for failure to protect Naruto. Hashirama was already demoted for our failure. Yes, Hashirama did, but I didn't give mine. Nito said, coming out from the shadows. I overheard your conversation with Minato outside of the office. You wanted to remove Naruto from your life. After all the time you were planning to take him from me. Even one of the priestesses growled, slapping Kishina, earning a yelp from her. Enough Mito commanded the priestess. Now Kishina, you once again blame Naruto for your problems. Please, I love my son, but I can't get on with my life, with everything the Shinigami did to us. Kishina tried to explain herself. So once again Naruto is to blame. What about Menma? Did you think about what this might do to him? They are brothers. Kaguya asked. Menma will still have his relationship with his brother. But I can't do this anymore. I woke up and I realized this is unhealthy for me. Kishina groaned. Mito thought for a minute before smirking, knowing the perfect punishment for Kishina. She then commanded the priestesses to bring Kishina to her. At her command she was brought before Mito and kneeled down in front of her. Mito cupped Kishina's chin in her hand. Since you want to remove Naruto from your life, then I'll be more than happy to oblige. I shall use a seal created by the Yamanakas with a little bit of Uzumaki magic to enforce it. I will remove all traces of Naruto from your memory. Kishina gasped as she struggled. When she said to remove Naruto from her life, she didn't mean it like that. Wait, Mito please, that's not what I meant, please. She cried desperately. Mito shook her head before gripping Kishina's head as she applied the seal to her. Kishina grunted as she felt the seal burning into her head and slowly making its way into her brain. The priestesses kept her still as the seal finally managed to do her work. The Namaka's matriarch soon collapsed as Kaguya told them to send her back to Minato, along with a note about Kishina's punishment. The priestesses nodded as the head priestess took off her mask. You brought this upon yourself Kishina, to think we were once like sisters. Makoto scoffed. Take her away. The other three priestesses nodded and by her command, dragged Kishina's naked body through the village towards the Namaka's compound. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy it. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the other's videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.